Yo, what's going on? Oh, our camera's already frozen. <laughs> this is already going good. No, we're fine. We're fine. It's good. I fixed it. Yo, what's going on, guys? Hello, hello. Uh, welcome back to Swish's Tournament. This is... Uh, we, we don't really name things well here, so this is just Swish's Tournament 2, I guess, is what it's called. But welcome back in. Uh, we're a little bit late to stream, so we're kind of gonna we're kind of kind of rush into the first match here. I was planning on maybe like coming in and like kind of giving you guys a quick overview of like the scoring and everything. We have all these screens that show like how the scoring works and all the brackets and everything, but we're a little bit late to the first match. I'm not gonna name names as to why. I won't name names. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, same, 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 same. Um, I think we should be ready to go. I think we're in the lobby right now with 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 the survivors. Uh, our first match, we're just gonna jump right into it. Our first match is Jinx versus Atrocity. So this very very first game we're going into, this is the number one seed versus the number sixteen seed. Jinx is the number one seed. You guys might remember them from the last tournament. They got second place. There's a little bit of roster changes and. Uh, it's still close to the same team though, and the first game is actually going to be a hag game, which is really interesting. That's going to be a really, really interesting setup because hag is a uh, a killer that I I've always kind of wanted to see in comp. So, yeah. Also, I feel like I dude, I'm just like rushing this intro and I'm forgetting so many things. But jo join with me is is Ralph and Justin. By the way, Justin's also going to be joining us. He is a a, a, a comp player himself or maybe I guess you can maybe say ex comp player. I don't know I guess I, I guess I, I don't know. I don't know what you would call yourself Justin But he has a lot of comp experience. So he's gonna be here to like help us, you know analyze things and discuss things and Guide us through things that we might be confused about as well as just kind of like help us commentate and Ralph is joining me in the commentation, too So, uh, it looks like we're already loading in I think So I'm just gonna hop on the screen. Let's hop on the screen, dude well, Let's do it so how, how how do you feel about this? How, how do you feel about a hag game? You, I know you just I know you just rolled out of bed, Ralph. But how do you feel about the possibility of us? <laughs> you currently don't feel much, but uh, I'm I'm interested. I guess like I'm sure there's the you know I don't know uh, like uh, like hag is cool and all. Hag's not one of my favorites. I've never really been that interested in hag personally. Uh, yeah, I've never really been interested in you know watching some good old scroll wheel hags do what they got to do and just doing stuff in general. <laughs> but uh, I, I know there's like thought put into it. Like she's not just you know just some simple-minded killer for sure. Uh, so I'm interested. I'm, I'm I'm interested anytime like I get to watch somebody that that I know is going to be exceptionally good at uh, what they do, do what they do. So yeah, I'm still, I'm still down. Apparently, apparently, from what I'm told, apparently this is gonna be a long fucking game. <laughs> That's um, what I'm told. Yeah. I'm told it's gonna be a long one, assuming the hag plays correctly. So yeah. Those of you who were here for the last tournament and you guys saw Twins play, it's kind of a similar flow of match game style as that, where the survivors really should be traveling in pairs and every time they get hit, they need to go reset because if you're running into, you know, a hag's web of traps and she gets you down, she's obviously going to control that area with the hook pretty easily. So we might be in for a long one, depending on how this one goes. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm really curious to see how they play around this because, like, Okay, I I've never seen Hag in comp, but like from what I've seen of Hag gameplay, it feels like the general best way to go about it is to like very tactically like mess with her traps, right? And I'm really curious to see how the survivors will go about this because uh, I don't know. It's it's very I, I want to see how they do it in like an organized way because again, like I'm used to going against Hags w with like, you know, your random pub teams that have no idea what the hell they're doing, but... I mean, so far, not too bad. It looks like he's just kind of holding down one side of the map. His Corrupt Intervention actually gave him a terrible, terrible set of blocked per, uh, block gens. It blocked two on one side and then one on, like, the other. So he doesn't really have that, like, Azerov's three three gen setup that you ideally want with Corrupt, which kind of sucks. But I'm, it's like it's interesting right now that he's just chasing this. Like, what's, what's actually happening right now? He's just kind of chasing the survivor. Yeah, he's kind of, I don't know, this is a risky play for sure. You yeah. don't want to be chase, chasing too much as Hag, because obviously she's a slower killer compared to the majority of killers, and, you know, she, you see her trapping in the middle of the chase, but they're going to obviously have people come in to say, disarm these as quickly as possible, like you see right here. 
Yeah, so I, it, it looks like the general idea is that they have another survivor kind of near the chase at all times, and, every, and anytime the hag sets down a trap, they run in, disrupt it, and then kind of like open the loot back up for their teammates. That actually feels, yeah, like how, like what the hell did she do here? Like what the hell did she do in this situation when you have another survivor just following you around and like breaking the traps as you set them? Like you're basically just a 4.4 killer with no power then, and <laughs> what are you supposed yeah. to do? I'm really it's like how, yeah, it's like how you always have someone traveling to kick Victor if he ever misses a pounce or something like that, where you'd like, I mean, she's just walking around as a powerless killer, basically. Really, Dude. she should be focusing on controlling like one third of the map, especially given the layout of Azeroth's. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is gross, honestly. This is actually like such a, such a good way to play against Hag. I don't really like, she, she already gave up a couple of gens over here too. I, I didn't really see the gen split on the other side, but... I, like, like this whole side of the map, there's there's no potential for a, for a three gen over here at all anymore. So, I feel like being over here feels like a waste of time to me. I don't really understand like what she, like what it is that she's. I don't I don't I don't know what it is that she's trying to accomplish here. She she only has three traps down right now. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it's not it's not looking great. There's already two gens done. Um, both of her hex totems look like they're destroyed, correct? So, yeah. yeah, I mean, you guys can't see the build, but she had Ruin Undying, which are both gone now. And all she has now is Corrupt Intervention, with, with which wore off, and then I believe that's Deadlock is the only perk that's yep. still alive and active. So it, we, well, this is literally just a Deadlock hag with three traps down and two gens left. She does finally get it down, though. See, this, this is where I'm interested in what yeah. happens. This yep. is where I'm very curious. This is where things could snowball because look where she's going right now. Yep, yep, yep. This feels like a. I think all the gens are on the other side of the map, though, are they not? See, like, this feels like a good situation for Hag, but this also feels like the survivors could probably just do the gens and leave. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, like, what's stopping them from just doing the gens and fucking leaving right now? Because there's really no, like. There's no reason for them to come over here. This is literally just three health states. It's just one death. Like, I think if all three survivors get out with and with there only being three hook states and a, and a kill, that's not really that bad of a game. Um, they they probably understand. Actually, yeah, the survivors should understand that there's no there's there's no no it as well if they're if they're paying attention to scouting, because they've already seen four perks. They've already seen corrupt deadlock. They've seen it all, and they broke two totems. So, yeah, I don't I don't really see a world where this ends up being good i guess maybe if they go for a save and it messes up yeah i have... wouldn't i wouldn't even expect them to go for a save though basement hag is way too risky unless you know you kind of are swarming the hook before she sets up all of her traps so I, you already see the last gen get done there I, yeah. i'm assuming it's split gates yeah it is yeah so they're literally just gonna stand on the other side and leave and it'll be a 1k yeah unfortunate huh they're already on it. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I don't know. Like, like Tofu pointed out, I don't know. Just interesting decision to like, go cross map and chase basically without a power, being a slow killer. I mean, yeah, that was so strange. You really want to control an area of the map, and her corrupt was split, but like this is Azeroth's, and the gens are split in a way where, when you're placing your traps, like you can control the area of that, that you know part of the map pretty easily. So yeah, not even. Sure would entice them to do that yeah even if like one or two of the gens on your side are blocked you can just trap up the other one and it's basically like it's it's still gonna be rough for them to go there it's very odd that she decided to like go to the other side. i don't know that was such a weird decision like literally yeah. abandoned all the gens on the one side ran around as a hag when they clearly had like the other survivor there to like break the traps i mean that was a you, you, you guys, you guys were, you guys were, were talking this up before before the story started. And you guys were like, "Man, get ready! This could be like a forty-five minute game to start out." That was like a, <laughs> that was like a three-minute fucking slam, True. dude. I mean, to be fair, I feel like, I feel like that hag misplayed quite a bit. I, I feel like that definitely was not the I correct wonder, way. Why I, I, did they just think they were actually gonna like be able to down that person quickly or something? Yeah, like, I, I don't understand. Like, yeah, they, just... they must have. Like they must have just thought that there was a realistic chance of like being able to get the down quickly and then just being able to like you know snowball off of that. Yeah. And like maybe and like maybe to them they thought it was worth the risk too because you you, you have to also keep in mind that this is like. This is the first game, which is the number one True. seed versus the number 16 seed. And obviously, like, the seeding in, in, in DVD isn't, like, 100% perfect, right? Like, it's not mm -hmm. ever, not always going to be, like, a blowout where the highest seed wins. But generally speaking, the, the number one team, Jinx, right now is, like, good fucking team. And they, they, they might know that, and they might know that they needed, like, a good result in order to win this, like, rather than just an okay result. So it, it might be, like, that might be a part of the decision, too, right? To, like, kind of yeah. go for something riskier and try to make a big play happen as opposed to just taking the safe play. But...
True. I mean, it didn't work out, so what are you going to do? No. So you forgot to finger Discord, just so you know. Oh, oh, well, you know what? One of my mods will surely do it, right? Surely. <laughs> Someone listening to this five minutes in the future will surely do it, right? Smile? Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Well, hey, that was game one. We'll, uh, we'll start to set up for game two. Hey, this is a good time. Now that we're not, you know, you know, you know I'm not going to say it. Look, I'm not going to say it. I won't say it. But now that we're all here and we're awake, you know, okay, and we're showered and blow dried, you know what yeah, I mean? Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we can take true. a look. We have a, <laughs> we have a lot of uh, different screens and stuff set up. Oh wait, this is actually going to be weird because you guys won't be able to see my screen share. So you guys are just going to like take my word for it. But we have a bunch of different overlays and stuff now. Uh, from the last tournament, we got a lot of feedback as far as like the information that you guys had available from you during uh, 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 during the tournament and. Um, we kind of set everything up, and by we, I mean mostly Swish, but I'm going to take some credit for it, too. Um, and say that we set, up, we, we, uh, set a bunch of stuff up. So if you guys are interested in seeing, like, the bracket, for instance, we have this image that shows the bracket. This is going to show all the games. Uh, today we'll be seeing the top five games of the bracket, I believe, right? I believe we're doing five matches, so it'll be the top five of the, of the, of the winner's bracket. This is a double elimination tournament. So when you lose a match, you will be dropping into the loser's bracket down below and then having another chance. Um, so this will obviously be filled out as the match goes and, you know, as the tournament goes, it'll be updated and we'll be able to like, you know, refer back to it whenever. Um, we also have the schedule, which is a nice, uh, which is nice. We're currently doing Jinx versus Atrocity. This is the entire schedule for today. After Jinx and Atrocity, we have Trauma versus Frontier, Freedom versus Monarchy, Cookies versus Master, and Odyssey versus, uh, Deity, which actually, I don't look at back at the bracket. That's not exactly the top five matches, is it? <laughs> it's five no, matches. We, yeah. It, it's five matches, but we had to move some matchups around because of scheduling. Some of these teams are from EU or from other parts of the world where it's super late over there already. Yeah, so yeah. It would be better for them to play on another day. Yeah, it makes sense. If someone's from, like, Russia, we don't want them staying up until, like, 4 a.m. to play their match or something if they don't have to. That, 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 that definitely makes sense. We also have a list of the teams here and their players. Um, so if you guys are interested in who's playing on any team, if there's any, if there's any names you might recognize, maybe if you ran into some of these guys in your pub games and they shit all over you and you're like, what the fuck? And then and now, now you can see them potentially get shit on by other comp players and maybe you can feel a little better about yourself, right? So there's that as well. There's a whole list of, of, of teams. Um, we'll be coming back to this for sure as, as, as the tournament goes on, especially as people get knocked out and, you know, some teams pop off and everything. Um, also, 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 I should probably give you some, some general information on how the actual tournament works. So, uh, bam, here we go. We have the general information. This is 16 teams, double elimination. The prize pool is ever changing. Every donation. <laughs> I love the way you type that. It's ever changing. Shut up. <laughs> every okay, but on the real, every, every donation that you guys give during the days that this tournament are live is going to go into the prize pool. Right now, we currently have $1,500 raised, and any donation that comes in during the tournament matches, so if the, the tournament is going to be played every Friday for the next six weeks. It's going to be today. It's going to be the next five weeks. Every Friday will be uh, days of the tournament until the sixth week should be the final day that we that we have to play it. We should know the winner by then. So if you guys want if you guys want to donate anything the, to, to the stream, you use the donate button below, just like you would normally donate to my stream. But any donations that come in during the days of the tournament will go straight to the prize pool. So if you guys want to support, feel free. Obviously, it's not required. You could just you could watch for free. It is no issue whatsoever. But if you want to if you want to contribute, feel free. Um, this is a best of one format, so each team will play one survivor and one killer game, and we'll basically add up the points from each game, and then whoever ends up with the most points after the two games wins. Um, there's numerous irk, uh, irk. There's, there's numerous perk and item bans for survivor and killer. Uh, it depends on the killer. It depends on like the exact situation, right? Like certain killers have things have more things banned than others. Uh, usually, like the higher tier killers will have a lot more things banned just to make things. Or sorry. The lower tier killers will have more things banned to like make things a little bit more interesting you know it, it's basically just like general balancing to make the games actually more interesting and fair as opposed to just being you know anything goes um and also as far as killer selection go the the teams actually pick their own killers and you know what i'm actually just going to break away from this this whole screen if you want to see how the scoring system works there's a whole thing on the side you get points for hook stages uh, hook states for deaths you get points for doing gens essentially the killers get points for hooks and hook stages and kills and survivors get points for gens as well as survivors leaving um it's if you want to like you know look at it more you can but i want to i, I kind of want to get into the whole, the whole killer section because the killer selection yeah. is actually really really interesting for this tournament um yeah. There's three pools of killers, and if I'm not mistaken, this is basically just like, kind of like tiers of killers, right? Like pool one looks like S tier killers, 
Pool 2 looks like, I don't know, slightly lower than S-tier killers. And Pool 3 is like a little bit uh, a little bit lower than that. So the, basically the way it works is that you can pick a killer from any of these pools, but you can only pick like but okay essentially when you when when you pick a killer that killer is then gone and you can't pick them again for the rest of the tournament so for instance uh atrocity picked hag for this first game so hag is now used and they cannot use hag for the rest of this tournament up until the finals at least so if they move on from here hag will be gone and they'll have to choose from somebody else but also 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 you can only pick two killers from one pool during an entire like during the entire tournament so for instance if you pick like Nurse first round and then Blight second round. You don't have access to Twins or Spirit anymore. Like you used everything from pool one. You can't you you can't use more than two from from one pool. So it's kind of interesting. It kind of leads to like some like tactical strategic choices among the among the teams as far as like when they want to use each killer. Uh, for instance, this for for this first match, it's kind of interesting that they they picked Hag and Plague. Jinx picked Plague. So we're actually going into a Plague game now, which I would say are two of like the lowest tier killers as far as like being able to pick like they're probably among the weakest so it's very interesting that they decided to pick them first and also keep in mind that these guys don't know what the other team is picking until after they pick so like it's not like they knew that each other were playing low tier killers like they for all they knew the other team could have been playing a high tier killer so it's kind of it's kind of interesting that they they both went with like a a, a kind of weaker killer but yeah, that's how it all works. We'll probably be coming back to this as as the tournament goes on. I feel like I might have done a terrible job explaining, but I, I, I no, you <laughs> I did, actually okay. did very, very well. Okay, that was yeah. cool. That was a good you job of explaining well. it. Yeah, good, good, good. Uh, I tried. There's definitely it, a lot, so it's 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 a bit to get through, but it's kind of mind-boggling that anybody picked Hag or or Plague uh, in in that pool, considering you know there's just an objectively better killer just sitting there waiting to be brought out. And you get to throw hatchets. Uh, I don't understand it. But <laughs> I don't understand it, but maybe maybe they'll show me the way. I'm hey, not sure. Hey, we, we do have... I'm we, not sure. A little bit of spoiler alerts. We do have three Hunters games lined up today. So oh. we oh. Yeah, you, you don't worry. That's what got me up, people. That's what got me up. Yeah, you'll, you'll have your Hunters time. Don't worry, dude. God bless America. We'll get there. I thought Zach, I thought Zach got you up. Okay, well, <laughs> he did, but... <laughs> fuck. Oh, man. Shit. <laughs> so yeah this 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 uh, next one's gonna be a plague i'm really curious to see how this one goes i feel like the wind condition is not going to be very much though right i mean the the last killer only got one yeah, hook, stages, yeah, one hook, yeah yeah so i feel like i i mean like i i feel like the wind condition is going to be a little bit like it's gonna be like, what like four health states and a kill is that what it is four health states and a kill it's it sucks now because this person knows they get they like they don't have to take a risk they weren't the first game in the tournament they they get to play super duper fucking safe i like i'm expecting them to just literally like see a three gen and hold it i, I don't know i don't know they play on the same map i'm bro, i'm i'm just happy to be here uh, yeah actually what, what what map does play play on that's a good question is it Azeroth? yeah she, yeah she's on resting place as well the killers yeah. are gonna have different maps that are a little bit more in their you know general favor it's not gonna like be plague on some ridiculous map where she's not going to be able to like catch anyone until the the game's over although that might happen anyways if they end up not having a you know a great game but um yeah every killer is going to be on different maps accordingly to what kind of tier they're in and also you know what kind of plays into their advantage so like hag is a good setup killer so azeroth's being the way it's laid out she can set up a web on one side while the survivors spawn on the other side same thing with plague kind of she Pukes all over the gens and whatnot, and kind of sets up a little bit beforehand, and uh, she'll be on Azeroth for this match. Yeah, I mean, it seems like a pretty solid map for her. I, I will say though that like, even though even though we're over here talking about how the plague just has to play safe and you know doesn't need that big of a result, I still don't think plague is a very strong killer. Like my personal opinion, I don't think she's that good. So like, you never know. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's interesting. So for those of you who don't know and don't follow DBD in general that much, Plague recently got a buff in the last, I think it was the last mid chapter update, like a couple months ago. She is definitely a lot better than she used to be. She got a lot of quality of life buffs, a lot of add on buffs, and she's definitely a lot better than she used to be. The problem is, is that she's still like a typical like standard m1 killer she's just good at keeping people injured because of her puke um that being said you know with the proper balancing and i've seen her play it a few times in recent tournaments she's actually performed pretty well in 
a lot of the you know experienced players I actually think she's a pretty solid killer overall so i'm curious to see how this goes other thing i'd point out is and you guys might remember the name from the last tournament nightlight is the killer he is probably as og as they as they come in terms of comp players and he knows what he's doing so if you want to see high level killer gameplay in general this is the guy to watch right now yeah yeah i was i was actually about to say that too uh nightlight was actually a part of the team that won the last tournament that we did so uh, he like definitely popped off last time, and he we, he's very he's a very well known good killer player. I, I don't even like follow comp very much before these tournaments, and even I knew who he was. But I he also is just an old school DVD player, so I mean that helps his, that helps his case a bit in that regard too. But uh, I, I definitely am curious, right? Because uh, like I do think Plague is kind of a weaker killer, but I do think he's a very good killer player. So I think if there is a chance for Plague to pop off, I mean this will probably be you know I think we have a pretty good chance of seeing it now anyway. I think he's gonna get a better. He definitely is gonna get a better corrupt spawn than uh, than uh, Atrocity yeah, did. That's for sure. He spawned he like really, literally really deep did. in one of the corners. He also has uh, his fountain here, which is actually kind uh, of interesting. That's kind see, of. It's already. He's already set up to to potentially do even even you know just to do well in general. Yeah, I, I, I'm actually, yo, actually both of his fountains are kind of down here. That's actually kind of a big thing. I'd be, I'd be curious to know, like, like Justin, too, if you have any thoughts on that. I think having both of your fountains spawn in your, like, starting 3-gen actually seems really good, does it not? Because they have to push into that eventually. Then I mean, you also have your fountains there in case they, like, start to get too injured and you can, like, start to snowball with it. That feels like a really good start. A really good, like, map setup, I feel like. Oh, man, this is a really good start, too. This is also. Get, yeah, or, 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 play gets to leave. She 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 she, she gets to infect those gens, and if, if whoever the hell goes down there, she she gets she kind of knows she's gonna be aware of who she who she infects down here. So. Oh, she could try to injure him before the pallet. Doesn't quite get it though. But uh, honestly, every single person she pukes on is basically just a damage day, right? Like that's essentially get like getting a hit. Even getting them sick at all is essentially like getting a hit. And she's gonna go with one of her fountains right away. That's interesting. See, another thing I was curious about is like whether they were gonna be shy about cleansing or not and i, I thought i, I kind of figured a big part of it would be how she goes about using her fountains oh no Jeez, already won yeah that to be fair that window vault's hard to see you can't really see the red stain around the corner of that bus so it's kind of just like a 50 50 prediction on the survivor side and he happened to get wrong this is not a good start dude considering considering how like easy quote unquote easy the wind condition is for nightlight right now uh that is not a great start not a single gen is done. I would say that one that's in the middle is probably barely even... It's probably worked on, but it might, like... It might barely be worked on. Uh, this is definitely not ideal. He's got his red puke. He did see somebody on that gen, but he's going to leave him alone. He has another pull of corruption right beside this hook, too. So, he can literally just chill here. Like, he can just chill here. 100%. Yeah, there's really no... There's... Like, what the hell are you going to do about this? He still has his, his, his corrupt puke, so if they try to get the unhook right now, he's basically like a... Like a like kind of like a mini Leatherface in the way that he can camp it and just do like massive AOE damage. And yeah, then also and that, that purple add on. Sorry to interrupt you. That purple add on that he has right there increases the duration of his red puke for twenty seconds. Yeah, it's so, twenty seconds, isn't it? That's yeah. a long ass time. Yeah, yeah it's a, a, a very long time. A hook state is sixty seconds. So if he grabs that other pool right now, it'll last the entire second stage if he wants to grab it. It'll 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 last until that guy's dead if he grabs it. I'm curious to see if he will or if he's just gonna play it close. I think he's gonna play it close and wait for struggle. No, he's grabbing it. See, this guy's dead. This guy's dead now. Like, the, 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 this is literally an. Like, I, I think it's 80 seconds, right? I'm pretty sure yeah, by default I it's 60. It's 80 seconds. Yeah. Yep. He's actually gonna walk away and let him get unhooked, which is, I guess, I guess fair because he's on death hook now and he knows that. So now, we, now he can just do whatever he wants. He can chase him down. He can go after the others. But honestly, I thought he would play that hook even closer. I, I really did. Like maybe he's like playing a little bit more lax because of how well the match is going, but. I, w I wouldn't have been surprised if you played that hook even closer and just really denied the unhook. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. What the hell is happening here? I feel like both of these guys were expecting them to do something that they didn't do. That was like a, such a weird little mind game I just saw there. I don't know what that was. She should be going down now. Oh, Plague's a great killer. Plague's a great killer, by the way. The puke not regging. You love to see it. There you go. Jeez. I didn't think that one was going to work either. I was like, huh? Yeah, you know? <laughs> Man, what? I swear, watching Plague just reminds me why I hate playing Plague. Although, you know, now that we're looking at it, they're getting some gens done. I mean, that's the third sure. hook. I think... I think the win condition would either be like four hooks and a death or maybe 
five hook states if I'm understanding. I, it, I might be yeah, wrong about it should that. be four hooks in a death or three unique hooks on different survivors because they're all worth different points if that makes sense. So, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, each of them for each hook stage has a different amount of points kind of attached to them. So think of it as if they do die in hook, that's that many less points that the survivors are getting as well. Yeah, he's just he's just gonna keep an eye on this hook here, I think. Um I mean, what do they do here? I'm curious to see how the gens are set up. I mean, they, they kind of have three gens on the other side of the mat, but still, this is such a this is such a hairy situation, right? Like, what do you do? do you, like, you can't let this guy die. You have to save this guy. If he if he full dies, then it's over, right? Like, this guy needs yeah. to be saved. So, this is a bit of a weird situation. He's just standing here with puke. If they try to unhook, he'll puke all over them, and then they'll probably get injured from it, and then he'll down them right afterwards. So mm. it's like a, it's it's like a really easy way to force a one for one. He's gonna force him into struggle at least, and then walk away. I think that's what he does. He does have a corrupt pull down here still. I believe the survivor. Let me check in with the survivors and see exactly what they're. Someone's got the unhook, and then the other two are on gens. Also, also both the other gens look like they're close to being done though. Although Deadlock came in and blocked it, dude. Deadlock is such a nutty perk, man. That is such a nutty perk. So the gen that was almost done now, like that gen is like 99% right there. It's like maybe like 95. So a little bit risky. Mm. Oh, the firecracker. I Ooh. barely even heard that, honestly. I, I didn't hear it at all. I literally had zero idea. Oh, <laughs> He's giving him the nodders. Nodders, nodders. Yeah, this is... Uh, was, that, was that the guy that he hooked in me? No, it wasn't. I, th I, th I thought that was the guy on Death Hook. But either way, I think I think him hooking him wins the game, I believe. It should. Yeah. should yeah. yeah. So at this point, he's just trying to, he's trying to bait. The, he, oh, got, he gets the bait. The yeah. The Claudette, I think the Claudette had decisive strike and was just trying to bait yeah. like a stun, but it just wasn't coming through. I mean, I think the game's over at this point. I believe that's the win for uh, for Jinx, no matter what happens here. That's unfortunate. It sucks that the, the, the hack player thought they had to play that way. I understand it 100%, but it, it just sucks. It sucks it didn't work out. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But honestly, I mean, pretty pretty solid game here, too. I'm curious to see if he tries to, like, really, like, go hard with finishing it or if he just kind of, like, laxes out. But he, he gets the kill on, on Claudette. He does have no Ed. And there it is. So Ooh. that's going to make this rough, too, as well. Also, no way out has three stacks. I don't think it's activated, dude. I don't think they've touched the gate, no. so... That's gonna be another like 48 seconds on the gate, so yeah. And I'm pretty sure both gates are on this side of the map, so he's gonna just be able to kind of bounce between the two. Oh yeah, they right. are. And he's gonna yeah. be able to bounce right between the two, so yeah, kind of tough situation for the survivors. Yep, yep, yep. They have this pal here, but honestly, once this pal is gone, it's kind of a dead zone. He can even afford to literally just like, yeah, he can afford to just play this pal too if he wants. Like he could just like bloodlust it. He could just go for like one slip up, gets a down like this. Yeah, like he can do whatever he wants here. He ha he has all the time in the world. He doesn't really need to rush it at all. So. And they they still haven't used uh, uh no way out either. I'm just not getting rid of uh no ed. Yep, yep. Mm. But like really nothing they do here is gonna. I mean, mm. this seems like it's gonna be a 4K pretty much no matter what. Interesting. Because again, no way out's on activated. I think the, I think the only way they get out here is maybe if this guy lets go and then they get hatched. But again, at this point, it doesn't really matter. There's no like, just to clarify, there's no uh, like it doesn't matter how much you lose by it, right? Like like the actual points in the game don't matter as far as I'm, as far as I'm aware. I I don't think it does. So like at this point, they're like they're kind of just playing for the sake of practice, I, I'd imagine, and just you know sportsmanship. Yeah. But it really doesn't matter how this turns out, right? Like if the if the Meg does get hatched, it doesn't really change much. But I'm still curious to know if she goes for it. Well. The dude did let go, so now it just comes down to the RNG gods, I guess. Yo, I just want to say that, that I mean, that was a little bit accurate. Like, they flicked and hit that mech directly in the face with that puke. I was <laughs> right? Dude. Yeah, I, I could imagine what they could have done with a, with a hatchet. I can't possibly imagine. Dude, like something, oh, that's right, there is no RNG gods. I forgot they, 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 they burnt an offering. I, I think it's <laughs> yeah. a part of the rules, so yeah. But dude, I wanted to say earlier, when it, whenever he first spawned up and he was puking on Jens, he shot like this like little mortar. It was like a little tiny puke mortar, <laughs> and it like landed perfectly on the Gen. It was I was gonna I was gonna yeah. call it out, but I was too busy talking about other shit. It was really cool. It was neat that, to see. That's what he just did to the Meg. Like he literally like 
<laughs> flicked and just was right on her, and she took it all. I was impressed. <laughs> I was impressed. Okay, let's not say stuff like that around the DVD community, okay? okay? Let's, not, <laughs> let's watch our wording, not, man, all right? Let's watch our fucking wording. Not like this. We're playing the game, friends. We're playing the game. Don't worry. We're playing oh, the video game. Man. Oh, bored. That was a good game, though. That was a very solid match. I mean, True. I, I was talking about how Plague, I think, isn't exactly the strongest killer, but again, I think Nightlight is just an insane killer player, and... I mean, he played this really smart. He played it really well. He got a really... He also, I do gotta say, he got very lucky with his map as well. Like, his yeah. map setup was, yeah. like, was, like, perfect. Like, he spawned on the side. The, 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 the corrupt block every gen on the other side. He also had both of his pools of corruption, like, right there in his, like, four gen. So, like, the second they tried to push in at all or if they got hooked in there, then he just immediately had two pools of corruption ready to go. With this purple add-on that he had that helped it out as well, so... Just overall, like, honestly, like a like a like a pretty crazy setup for him, and I mean he executed perfectly as 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 we'd expect him to. So, true, he 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 do be uh, providing some some safety and security to his team as a nightlight would do. And I respect that. <laughs> I respect that. <laughs> all right, all right, man. We're gonna we're gonna have more puns on names and dumb plays on words. That's not even a pun. Here. That's just that's just me being observant. True. Clearly, that's what he does. Yeah, Clearly. That's, true. That's a good point. You, uh, you know, honestly, maybe that's what his maybe that's what his name means. I, we don't we don't know why he chose that's that name. That's what I assume. It, nothing else makes sense. True. That's that's a very good point. Um, so that's game one. That's game one down the books. We have uh, Jinx versus Atrocity is over. Jinx takes the win off Atrocity. Uh, I the, these screens are gonna be live updated, but also Swish is updating. It's all Swish doing it all, so he's gonna be like frantically working behind the scenes. So I'm gonna be switching to these scenes, but if they're not immediately updated, you know, don't get too upsetty, spaghetti. But look at that, this one's already updated. Bam. Next up is Trauma versus Frontier. So Swish is on it. He's on that shit. Look at him go. So Jinx versus Atrocity is done. Up next we have uh, Trauma versus Frontier, and I believe do we have a. Uh, I'm afraid to alt-tab because I don't want to freeze our cameras. Do we do, do, do we know what... Wait, actually, I can maybe go to the killer section and maybe it'll be there. I, I, yeah, I, I have it oh, up if you we want know, me to we talk do. about it, yeah. The overlays. Oh, dude, Swish is on top of this shit. What a god. Yeah. So, yeah, so as far as the killer selection goes, we have Trauma picked Billy, which that's exciting for me. Yeah. And I think for most people, Billy is a really exciting killer to watch. And uh, Frontier picked Demogorgon. That's an interesting one. Demogorgon, yeah. huh? Yeah. The, uh, go ahead, on. Rafa. No, I, I mean, I was just, I was just gonna say. So, I mean, I have a little bit of insight just knowing these teams as as closely as I do. Um, just for the record, Drama is a new entry or new entrant into this tournament. They weren't in the last one. Uh, if you guys don't follow the competitive scene or you haven't been around it at all, they they have probably been one of the top three most successful teams over the past year and a half, two years. And they're they're from Russia. They're all legit players have been playing for a very long time um when my team was competing we pretty much went against them in the finals of every single tournament that we played in uh so you're gonna see good survivor gameplay and they also have phenomenal killers um that being said i think they have someone named zaka who usually plays for a different team um he's a billy main and i'm pretty sure he's gonna be playing billy for them so expect a fun game out of him yeah, that's exciting. I love seeing good Billy games, man. I love, love, love seeing good Billy games. So we, Did we see a Demogorgon game in the last tournament? Am I, am I stupid? Did that happen? I don't think we did. I'm pretty okay. sure we did not, no. If, yeah, I, if I remember correctly. I think we did. I either. think we were expecting to, and everyone just ended up picking other killers that yeah. we didn't expect to do so well with, and they ended up doing well. So I think it was the first demo we're going to see in, in these two tournaments. Interesting. Yeah, that's, I'm really curious to see how it goes. I, I really want to see... Okay, a big thing that I want to see out of out of demo, because I... Okay, in my opinion, which, again, keep in mind, I'm not a comp player. <laughs> I'm just a fucking shitbag who has, like, 9,000 hours in this game. In my opinion, what really separates, like, good demo players from, like, really good demo players is how they use their portals. Because I feel like True. that's the part that's, like complicated and hard right i feel like using your shred is easy right like like I, I feel like zoning people out of like chases like you know like like uh, getting hits zoning away from windows like breaking pallets with it and like all everything that happens in a chase with demos is, is like is like relatively simple but how you go about using your portals like where you place them like your strategy behind them like whether you want survivors to break them for the sake of slowing them down or whether you want to like hide them and maybe use them as like you know potential mobility i feel like it's a big part of like what makes a good demo into a great demo right and i'm really curious yeah. to see what they do with that as far as like the portal play goes yeah 
I would say there's kind of like two different play styles to demo. There's like, like you said, the chase demo where you kind of just brute forces through pallets with a shred till you finally get someone down. And then there's like the zoning kind of uh, map control demo where he uses his portals to kind of push survivors into different areas. Um, he does have, I believe he has all of his add-ons allowed to him. And some of those higher tiered add-ons, like I know one of the eerie ones reveals the auras of survivors every time he travels through the, yeah. whatever the, 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 the portals. So, I mean, I'm curious, the, the standard is to bring like barbs, glasses and black heart, which is like the basically br brutal strength and save the best for last kind of mimic type add-ons. Um, but you know, sometimes people will get a little bit, uh, creative and, and use different ones where they'll make more use out of their portals. Yeah, I'm curious too, because I feel like I feel like Barb's glasses is the add-on I see the most. That one is just so insane, dude. Like you just break yeah. like breaking pallets that much faster, just you just eat right through them. So I mean the the, the entire like I, I know a meme I hear a lot is like comp dropping as far as as far as pallets goes. You know, you just drop every pallet every chance you get or whatever. And if someone does try to play like super safe and like throw every pallet and try to like extend a chase for a long amount of time by playing super safe, I mean you can just shred right through them with Barb's glasses, man. I mean it's obviously it's not super fast, but it's significantly faster than you would without it. So I, I feel like to, to me, I, my, my, my prediction, again, from somebody that doesn't really have a lot of experience, but I, my, my, my prediction would either be uh, like what you said, Barb's Glasses and Blackheart, or if they if they do mix it up, I think, they, I think they'll probably keep Barb's Glasses and then probably run something like, like uh, yeah, like Lepro Slightchen or whatever the, how the fuck you say that add-on's name? Yeah I, 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 yeah, I don't know the name of it either. Yeah, but, yeah but, it, definitely, I mean, it's something to keep an eye out on. I guess while we have time, <laughs> we have more time before setting up this match than the, the last one, but Demogorgon's map is going to be Groaning Storehouse, which is like kind of a very spread out mm. map and not really great for a lot of standard M1 killers. And by M1, I just mean they kind of just walk around until they find someone and hit them twice, rather than like a, as opposed to like a mobility killer. But Demogorgon actually has some of that mobility with his portals, so he can kind of manage it a little bit easier. And curious to see how he... How he goes about this match in terms of play style yeah, yeah. That, map that's, like that. that's really interesting because it's a pretty big map and like obviously like the, the maps are kind of selected to they're, they're kind of like tailored to the killer to kind of give you them like a like like a strong map to, to like like for their like power and i find it interesting because i feel like big maps are usually like bad for killer but i feel like a lot of people i also forget that big maps can be rough for survivors too because it's also a lot of travel time for survivors as well so if the, if the demo can really take advantage of his of his mobility and like kind of like get around the fact that the map is big it, then it would then it's just a downside for survivor without really being as much of a downside for killer and i think it could benefit him a lot so again i think that's where the portal play comes in a lot and i'm really really curious to see how it goes yep no yeah, i think you guys said it best i want to see i want to see some like extremely five head portal placements um i don't think like obviously i i'm, I'm just assuming that a lot of it's just going to be based on uh on on gem placement uh, we might see some just like five head just hard reads as to as a like p placing portals around just because you know somebody's going to be there eventually and you know it's going to get you something just just because you're a demo player who knows i'm i'm, I'm not a man of the doofel gorgon however i you know I've, I've i've watched them enough and and sure but uh yeah i don't know uh, i want to see i want to see something interesting because i think that's what a lot of people don't do with them most people like especially in your average dvd game most people you know you just get to run around and m2 because it's pretty good uh, yeah, and, and and not not too complicated to do. Yeah, it's but, uh, it, that, that's the thing is it's easy, right? Like it's not yeah, it doesn't it take is. a lot of like brain power, you know. It's just like yeah, I I feel like that's where a lot of like the like okay something I've noticed from like the last tournament I think as well as just like being like observant is I think a big difference between your average just like good killer player that you see in like your public games and these killer players is like the. I hate using the, I feel like I use these words all the time and people are probably annoyed by me saying them, but it's like the difference between like your micro and your macro game, right? Like, I feel like so many people are good with like the micro interactions, right? Like, like with demo, like you're like, it's not hard to like shred people and zone people and get hits and get downs and, you know, play chase as well. But what is hard is like keeping track of information, using like your, using the whole map to your advantage, like keeping an eye on your objectives and knowing when to go back to your objectives, knowing when to like, like, you know, like camp a hook to struggle state, um, getting information, using that information. That's why I think like that ultra rare add on, uh, Lepros, whatever the hell you call it, might be really good. Cause that's something I've also noticed from these tournaments is that these killer players are so 
fucking good with the information that they yeah. have. Like that's something I noticed, especially from the twins matches we saw in the last one, is like, dude, like if they if they get scouting information, if they know where the survivors are, especially at any point in the match, if they know where like all four survivors are, they know exactly what to do. They know exactly how to take advantage. They know exactly how to punish it. It's like it's like information to these guys is like literally so fucking valuable. So True. that's like a big thing as well, which I, I think is another reason why we might see that ultra rare. I'm hoping we do, because that is such a big deal. And that's what I'm curious to see about, again, because I think, again, demo is easy. It's a, it's a pretty simple killer when you think about it in the micro sense, but in the macro sense, I think there's a lot to it that could, that, like, there's a lot of potential there. And I'm curious to see how much, how much they actually do. But again, yeah. I also want to say, keep in mind that this is the first round of the tournament. Like any tournament, uh, the first the, the, the first round is always like, like the, the way the matches go with the seeding is there's always going to be like the highest seeds going against the lowest seeds and then like the middle seeds all play against each other. This is another match where it's this is this is the number two seed going against the number 15 seed, I believe. So according to seeding, right, like this should be a tough match because this is the number 15 seed killer going against the number two seed survivors. So again, it might be it might be rough, but I, I will see. I mean, maybe they have something to sort. Again, demo is not really a killer I expected to see picked. So Maybe they have a good plan. I don't, I don't I know. I believe. Yeah. Like I was saying, this Survivor team, they're legit. They have, they're, all these guys are very, very good players and they've been around for a while. Um, I guess like one thing I can kind of try to fit in here before we get going is expectations for like what to see for this killer. Again, the, the bouncing in this type of tournament and environment is tailored to each killer specifically. So, you know, you're going to have specific perks and add-ons and items banned if you're wondering why the survivors aren't taking 4ds4 unbreakable all that good stuff it's because they can't and it's only limited uh to one per each survivor with the exception of two bar of time otherwise you just t tunnel out the bar of time guy and it's gg um but that that being said um you know it's going to be interesting to see how he can do on a map like you were saying like groaning storehouse and against a good survivor team like this i mean expect like a, a pretty good result for a demogorgon is honestly getting like maybe a couple stages until end game and then we see like the common you know her combo of no way out no ed or something like that or i don't know deadlock is allowed this this tournament so i expect that to kind of be substituted in every now and then for some builds like we saw the last match um you know just because it delays so much time for getting one gen done and you know expect maybe like the five six hook stages if they're playing well, it's not going to be, you know, easy 4K unless their survivors make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Again, he's not he's not like a super high tier killer. And again, these yeah. are all obviously very, very good players. So it's I, 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 I feel like that's pretty much what I would expect as well. Um, it does feel like Endgame has potential to be dangerous because, again, especially if he's like running Barb's glasses, he might be just shredding through pallets in like the early mid game. And maybe at the end, it's going to be kind of hairy. But again, I would also expect the survivors to know how to handle that, right? I don't think the survivors are going to be idiots and run in there and all die to no ed. So I don't know. I mean, it, it, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I think so, honestly, so I was this, going to say this, this team is is is, is the, the 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 Russian sweat squad, yeah. Yeah, the, they're they're le they're legit. Yeah, they, they're yeah. probably they're they're probably up there along with maybe two other teams over the past year or so to have won the most tournaments out of everyone. Interesting. I've never experienced a Russian sweat squad friends. They're, yeah, they're I hope they're good. It's not an offensive term, but I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> they're good, and this isn't even like their main roster. They have oh, some people. Shit. I mean, they're, they're the people who are playing for them are all veterans. They've they've been doing this forever. Yeah, I, I've heard a lot of uh, good things about Trauma going into this tournament, so I'm definitely excited to see, man. I think as this tournament like goes on and we get towards like the later rounds, I think we're going to get some crazy matches, and I'm really excited mm. for it. I'm assuming that's what people are saving their S-tier killers for, too, because, again, like, almost every killer that's been selected today, I don't think we have a single like killer from Pool 1 all day today. I think everything is from Pool yeah. 2 and Pool 3, so it definitely seems like people are saving their like higher-tier killers for later on in the tournament. Which kind of does make sense, right? Because that's when the matches yeah. should be more competitive and more difficult. So, all right, well, here we go. Yeah, hey, hey, yeah, he's got it. Yeah, Barb's glasses and Lepros Lachen or however, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> that was it. That's the one. <laughs> that's the one for sure. Or Immediately gets a hit. In, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I mean that—that's a rough setup. I also—I also, I also want to say like. 
obviously we we do our best to get people decent ping but do we do we know like where like where is this killer from compared to the survivors like they might be playing on decently high ping as well which is another thing to consider with a lot of this it, it's i'm sure they have experience playing on high ping and tourneys but it's still never never easy to do you know That's yeah nice I, window. I think this killer is from north america i'm not sure and obviously the majority of the survivors are from russia so ping is definitely a factor in this um, I might be wrong, but yeah, like I said, when you're going cross region, it's always something to yeah, look see, out for. Like, and, and, and honestly, with that in mind, play like even little plays like that, like timing that pallet perfectly correct right there is so fucking hard on high ping, man. If anyone in here has ever played on like 150 ping, that is goddamn terrifying to try to do. So the fact that they pulled that off right there is it's such a little thing, but it's so impressive. Like that is so good. <laughs> that might have been a, a big thing as well, but he ends up getting the hit there. They, they, it does seem like they're trying to play relatively safe and just like throw most pallets. I mean, that was a little bit risky, but not too much. Yeah, a little going for a little bit of a band of, of an ambitious swing, but I mean, he is getting a lot of pallets down. He's getting a lot of the uh, the pallets broken. The, the first gen just came through too, so he's not in a terrible spot. Um, he's only set one portal so far, which is again something I wanted to talk about. He set it like in the middle near that gen. Again, it's, it's 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 hard to do though because like you know taking the time to set portals is also a time that you're not pressuring the survivors, so it's tough to know exactly when to do it. He has this guy in a decently decently okay spot. I don't I can't remember what maze tile was tied to this, but I think it might have been T walls. Yeah, I think so too. So this isn't a horrible spot to be in if you can get a good a good mind game on this dude. Yeah, it's kind of oh. unfortunate and unfortunate somebody's here to protect him as well. Because yeah, he, like, he clearly had the mind to set up portal in the beginning, but he, then he immediately started chasing too. Yep, yep, yep. And also this is a little this little setup uh, where that where that pal was in that window was it's kind of fortunate as well. Yeah, pretty strong setup for sure. He, he's he's lucky that that long wall jungle gym there right right right, 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 right there doesn't have the window too, but. Yeah. They're making really good use out of these pallets, man. Like, really good fucking use. Also, that Nia taking that hit for that guy to get him out of that bad zone was really, really oh, smart, too. Oh, patience. Dude, this is such good pallet play. Ooh. Oh, man, he's a little bit aggressive. I don't oh. even think... He might not even needed to do that. He might have had enough distance could, to even yeah. just get the hit. He could have just hit one. Look, how, look at the discipline, bro. Yeah. Oh, my God. And then, and then the Dwight comes in to take the hit to, to, to guarantee your escape. She can now get away during the animation of him doing a scream. This is just disgustingly good survivor play. Holy shit, man. That's at they're, least they're injured though. So it's like, you know, they can't do much more protection than Mahdi Bachman and stuff. Yeah, but I mean, he like, eventually you need a hook, right? Like the, the longer yeah. you go without a hook, the more gens slowly get knocked out, right? They slowly get, get closer to being finished with the entire game and you still don't have any points on the board, no hook states. So she this palace is still up. here too. Yeah, oh, like. No. It's gone now, but they got so much value out of that pallet, man. There's, there's no pallet at Shaq. There's no pallet to this uh, loop to the right. I can't blame him for trying to play it. That pallet's not it's that safe. Okay, he gets it down. The pallet's not that safe, so I can't blame him for playing it. But at the same time, man, Barb's glasses, like, it, 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 he might look back and kind of regret that for not just kicking it right away because he could have done it quickly with Barb's glasses. And they got so much value out of it. Although, I mean, look, like, you know, look at what's going on now. They got someone in the basement. They're still... Well, two gens left. Portal. Yeah. He's going to set up another right. portal. He's going to... This should give him information. Or maybe not. Did he, he just saw somebody to his left, you know? Or did yeah. I saw? Yeah. I saw something. Yeah. And I think there was someone off to the right, too, that I saw for like a split second. Yeah. Um, curious to see how they're going to go about this. There's a Nancy here kind of hovering. She's the only one that's full health right now. The other two are both injured. So that makes this a little bit sketchy. Um, I'm gonna do a quick check in and just see what they're doing. The Nancy's there, the Nia's on a gen, and then the Ace is on a separate gen. So they're both on separate gens right now. And the Nancy was kind of just hovering. He completely walks away, which he can get away with because again, he's, he's demo. He's gonna set up a portal, portal right back to the basement. Was the Nancy one of the ones with borrowed time? I believe so. I mean, he seems to believe so. He's going to get Nancy, but dude, like, I mean, free basement save, you know, like, I, it's, it's such a tough situation. Cause like, do you, do you walk away and like defend the gens and allow that basement save to come in like that, you know, or do you just camp the basement and let them finish the two gens? See, he, he decided to like pressure one of the gens and it's a bit of a risk, but also I guess it, it kind of paid off, right? Like he ended up getting yeah. Nancy down too. He hooks her beside the gen that's being worked on as well. So now he can kind of protect it at the same time. 
So that might force them to do another gen that maybe isn't isn't quite as worked on. Deadlock's having him a little bit of time as well. Yep. Everybody's injured. He gets to kick this one. That gen across the map is probably like barely touched. So not a terrible spot. Although they just unhooked near that one gen. So now he's kind of back at square one again. And they are they are injured and they don't really have many like they don't have many pallets or anything left. Yeah. It's interesting that they haven't taken the time to like reset and heal. It kind of seems like they kind of just want to slam out the gens while injured and just get it over with. But it's it's kind of high risk, but it's working out so far. I mean, True. we'll see. And it, I, I think it's probably worth it. And that, you know, doesn't give him the chance to really have much of a chance to uh, uh, really like snowball or go around and pick up. Oh, no. The it's adrenaline. No. Oh, no, dude. Not that, like this. I was about to say he's, he's in such a good spot now, too, because he got that guy down. And he's going to go back down, but that's a lot of bot time for sure. That's a lot, a lot of bot time. Jeez. Um, so there is no no way out, so they don't have to worry about that. They're already working on a gate. Uh, oh, 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 God. In the gamer uh, hole, he is. Uh, uh, it's fine, right? Mm, it's not fine. Mm, it's not fine. Things are not fine. Uh... That's, uh -oh. I think it's a spectator bug, and uh -oh. you have to wait till he travels again. Uh -oh. It's kind of like the old nurse bug, where she's constantly <laughs> looking down, fatigued. So, yeah. Well, I guess, I guess we're, I guess we're gonna spectate stretch red survivor staring at the ground for a bit then. Oh what look, he's that? got the portal above him. Okay. <laughs> he's, he's wearing it like a hat. <laughs> I've never seen that before. What the fuck, dude? Sorry, we have to block this out. You can't see the gamer hole. We apologize. It's just not safe for children. Uh, or, or innocent eyes. It's like a weird, like, cone head. What's going on there, dude? <laughs> it reminds me of, like, Looney Tunes when it pushed down, like, a black hole and jumped through it. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, they're all gonna go out. So that's... He's gonna get five hook stage total and a kill, which yeah. is... Kind of, like, expected, though. <laughs> yeah, that's... The... Not a bad result, honestly, against a good survivor team. And they had... I'm not gonna lie, that was a pretty stacked map. They had a lot of pallets kind of in the middle. This map can yeah. be dead sometimes. But yeah. that was a uh, pretty pretty survivor sided RNG in the middle there. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely feel like he played it pretty solid for sure. Like I he didn't make any like huge glaring mistakes that I that I that I noticed. It seemed like everything he did was pretty good. Again, it it is difficult, right? Like it's 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 not exactly the strongest killer. They're on they, their map was good. It's also like a really good survivor team. But it felt like this the decisions he made made sense. It didn't feel like he did anything that I was like insanely confused by. He he did pretty good overall, honestly, so now it yeah. kind of just boils down to how they can do against Trauma's Billy. One thing I want, kind of want to just point out real quick, and I mentioned this before the match, but like I said, there's perk restrictions against killers, and there's an overall general balancing where certain perks like Objective Obsession are banned versus all killers, but there's also specific restrictions versus uh, each killer. So like Demogorgon, they have a lot of healing perks and stuff like that. So if you saw there, one survivor is actually running Distortion, and you're like, why the heck are they running Distortion? That perk, like no one ever uses that. It's because they probably had an idea that he's going to be using that add-on where it sh shows the auras of each survivor and it's a direct counter to that. So you'll see a lot of cre creativity with the survivor builds just because they have to be with the restrictions and limitations. Yeah, which, by the way, I'm a huge fan of. I love yeah. that because I love seeing... It makes seeing, for awesome gameplay. Yeah, I love seeing... Like, perks like Distortion is something you'd never imagine in, like, being, like, a perk that you'd see in competitive play, right? Like, when you think of, like, strong survivor perks, no one's like, oh, yeah, dude, Distortion. That's top-tier perk. Like, no, you know, so it's cool seeing a perk that, like... You know, might maybe is a little uh, is like a little bit more niche, still actually getting some value and like getting used is really really cool. And honestly, being like not even just getting some value, like actually being very valuable, like you like you can say. I mean, honestly, like like hiding inf again. I said this earlier, but information to these killer players is huge. So being able to hide information like that is a really 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 big deal. So true, I agree. That's like one of the most enjoyable things about DBD when you're when you're new in general is actually being able to like explore perks and and. Especially when you don't have anything at all, you're you're forced to use stuff like that. Uh, yeah. And having that in this situation or, or setting an environment is really really enjoyable. Yep, I agree. So, next up we got Billy coming from Trauma. So I'm really curious to see how this one's gonna go. I mean, you guys probably know that I'm a big fan of Billy. I literally did nothing but play Billy for like a year and a half straight back in like 2017. I fucking love this killer. Although these days, you know, maybe not so much anymore. Like I, my, my love for Billy has kind of faded a little bit, but honestly, he's still one of the most exciting killers to watch, regardless of how, how he is to play or whatever. Like he, like as far as watching Billy, he's definitely one of the most exciting ones. There's a lot of cool shit you can do with him. Um, 
And do we do we know the map? What what map are they are they playing with? Billy? Yeah, so uh, I think we had some billion matches in the last tournament, but uh, he, he's on his like what's considered to be his best map, which is Shelter Woods. And sh so Shelter Woods, if uh, for those of you who play, you probably are already familiar with this, but it kind of has like these two extremes of RNG of the tile layouts, where you get like jungle gym, long wall jungle gym, and that's like the only variations of tiles you get mixed with filler pallets, obviously, or you can get like all TL walls and pallet gyms, like the short wall pallet gyms, um, where there's one short side and one long side and a pallet in between them. Depending on the RNG, it can be like very favorable for the killers or the survivors, um, depending which, but this is considered to be Billy's best map because it's, uh, believe it or not, a lot of people don't know this. This is one of the biggest maps in the game, kind of like surprisingly big. Um, but he obviously has the mobility and can traverse the map very, very well. You know, assume they're going to be running like speed add-ons, doom engravings, or whatever it may be. Um, and he can zone really well with uh, his chainsaw on the filler pallets on the edges of the map. So, you know, it, I'm curious to see kind of what the layout is. And again, um, pretty standard perks for the survivors banned against him. Like, there's, you're not going to see any deliverance. There's no dead hard. A lot of these perks that are super, super strong for survivors against Billy, who, you know, in public matches, he's a, he can be a strong killer because a lot of survivors just kind of panic against uh, Insta down chainsaw. But in comp, when the survivors know how to how to deal with it, he's he's kind of just like an average killer. Yeah, for sure. He uh, he's one of those killers where, like, if you understand his tricks, his tricks are a lot less valuable yeah. right like Absolutely. if you, if you yeah. understand how to like curve if you understand like like you know how like how a billy is setting up for a curve or like what he's gonna do it's pretty it's pretty easy to like avoid it so a lot of like the super fancy stuff that you see out of like you know like really good billy streamers and stuff that kind of stuff usually doesn't work very well in comp you know what i mean like you can't get yeah. away with that a lot of the time against real real good disciplined survivor players so you might not necessarily see some of that right like i remember the billy games that we saw before there, there was a lot of matches where there was nothing flashy right there was nothing flashy whatsoever but it was just really smart good gameplay yeah. and that's kind of what i expect that we might see this time and i'm here for it honestly i'm here for it i'm, I'm down Same. yeah but again uh, billy depending on how early he can get like the the key parts of these a lot of these matches specifically for the weaker killers is the first chase and end game if you have a bad first chase it's just going to like snowball way in the survivor's favor unless they make a huge critical mistake but if you have a if he has a good first chase and he can keep someone on the hook and obviously has a chainsaw, it makes it almost impossible to save unless you have two people going and you're like trading a hook. He can take advantage of that really well. But assuming the survivors are playing well, it's going to be around that like middle kind of six stages, one k, two k. A lot of the pressure he's going to get is from the end game. Expect like a no way out, no ed, just because he can chainsaw, catch up to someone, hit them with his hammer you know get the no it effect and then be able to like confirm maybe a fresh hook or a couple extra stages in end game yeah i i fully expect the the, the most important part of this to be like the early game because again like billy yeah. billy has potential because of his one shot down to maybe get off to like a really crazy start it just it, it boils down to like the survivors and if they make a if they make like a mistake right and all it takes is one like one like one slight fuck up and you know like getting chains on in the early game and that that might snowball like you said like way out of control because billy is definitely like i mean any killer that has a one shot down in a hook scenario is fucking terrifying so uh, i think i think the early game is going to be really really important here and i think it's going to really say a lot as far as how this match goes and they and honestly frontier needs really to be really really good like they need to be very 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 good here yeah. because uh they, they got what five hook states and a kill so it's not it's not gonna take too much to beat that right like if, if he gets out to like an early start i feel like he it's gonna be really easy for him to beat that result you know he doesn't need that much of a result to win so yeah in case you guys are wondering the score the score the updated score of this match is 17 to 13 and the win condition for the killer will be six stages 1k which is obviously will outdo the previous killer's result yep 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 so again i it, it's, it's gonna come down to i think if they can avoid uh, taking it down for like the first, you know, like good, good portion of the early game, like maybe like knock out a few gens before even somebody gets down, right? Like if they can get to like the mid to like start, like start to get to the late game before downs start coming in. But I think they have a pretty good realistic chance of, uh, 
you know being able to do this but i think that's i think that's what's gonna have to happen i think they have to have that really really strong early game yeah i don't know man we'll see i'm also Maybe curious either. to see uh what add-ons billy runs i feel True. like because low pro chains is allowed right so i feel like yes I imagine we'd see low pro chains, but yeah, pretty pretty standard pick nowadays for Billy, especially in the pre-drop pallet meta that we even see so, you know, so typically in a lot of public matches now. Survivor's playing safe. Low pro chains gives him the utility to kind of like Barb's glasses, but even more effective. Just eat through pallets, and if he can even zone a survivor and down them immediately because he can get that extra distance or actually get a health state on a survivor if he manages to saw through the pallet and then hit them yeah yeah so i don't know i i'm curious uh what 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 other add-ons do you usually see like as far as billy's go like i like are, are they allowed engravings I, what do people yeah, even they're, engravings? They're, yeah billy is allowed all of his uh all of his add-ons but okay. the Ooh. typical ones you you'll see is low pro chains and doom engravings the green rarity add-on yeah yeah um, some people have gotten creative, and I, I personally am not a fan of this, but some people have gotten creative and actually take the risk of running a uh, tuned carburetor, which oh, actually makes you... The 4.4 uh, one? Yeah, 4.4 movement speed, uh, so you're actually slower than you normally are, but it, it, the trade-off is that it gives you a faster charge time, or yeah, faster charge time, so it, it's almost like old Instasaw, if you, if you kind of think of it that way. You just you're you're slower, so the distance is kind of balanced mm. between the two. It's a little bit more risky, but if you think about it, on a map like Shelter Woods where there's so many open areas, like it can be the difference between making it to a window or not making it to a window. Yeah. You know, because of that fast charge speed. I also feel like it's something that like might catch drivers off, right? Like you might not yes. expect this the chainsaw yes. to charge that fast. And you're like, whoa, what the fuck? Like that was a fast charge, and then the next thing you know, you're <laughs> down. You know. So being going to catch someone off guard like that is probably a big deal. Again, especially considering these guys have practiced so long against probably not that right. Like not many people run that. Yeah. So there's so much muscle memory involved in like knowing like okay, that's exactly how long it takes for a chainsaw to charge. So they kind of like it's like ingrained in their brains exactly how long they have before the before the chainsaw rush starts so to have that cut down by like i don't even know what it is like 20 percent or something for that add-on it's it's a big deal right it's a big it's a big mind fuckery to, to your to your muscle memory so i mean yeah that that could be cool again that i agree that's a huge risk being 4.4 is a big downside yeah. to that add-on so makes a big difference when you're running around a short loop and you're trying to go for a curve if you if you're that much slower it's that much distance that the survivor has on you yeah trying to actually like set up the curve or really set up any kind of a play is just so much harder when you're slower yeah it's tough especially like especially if the survivors are able to like identify it which i imagine these guys probably would like i think they're good enough to be able to identify like you know what this billy seems kind of slow you know so yeah i'm excited just consuming like good billy players or well not literally consuming them but, but watching them is really really enjoyable oh it's, yeah it's, i don't i don't think i don't think being like a really really good uh, billy is easy at all like at all uh it, it, there's so much just timing and distance and stuff uh to, to know on both sides and when both sides know it it's it's it seems extremely hard uh yeah. to, to actually be able to like make really good plays and get really good downs it, it's it seems like especially like double engravings or whatever that just seems almost impossible a lot of the times against really really good people yeah yeah you uh, gotta work extra, really yeah, the, hard for it yeah, yeah that it's, extra it's like it's a whole dance bro yeah it's, it's that insane. extra time charging your saw is a huge difference versus survivors who know how to loop a billy yep and he's got low pro engravings just like we said so that's pretty expected and if i don't know if you guys remember but this is exactly who i expected to be playing billy this guy is a long time comp, that. comp billy man he would have gotten that. Right, imagine. And there's low pro chains. Ooh. There's the low pro chains already getting a hit for free on the on the on the pile camping. See, this is kind of rough. He can zone this window here, so he can't really vault it. Ooh. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, perfectly played, huh? Yeah, that's. Th this is exactly what we said they needed to not happen to is have a down early, and that was such a fucking fast down, dude. Pretty, yeah. That was Pretty like a lightning start, fast. Yeah, yeah that like, is, that's, that's what I mean. This is that's why this is why Shelter Woods is so good for Billy. Like the distance in between the tiles and filler pallets is so much more than like say a Wreckers Yard, right? Where it's a smaller map, everything's kind of connected, and they can just like easily kind of connect a, a filler pallet to another tile. Like, the distance you have to run in between each of these makes it so much more 
convenient for him to catch up to you. And just there, you, you know, he takes his time, patiently zones a survivor, and then gets him down. Yep, yep, yep. That was it's so early in the game that this is happening. He he just gets to relax. He still has corrupt. Like he uh, like he's not. Yeah, he's... he doesn't really have much to worry about currently. Yeah, there's even even one of the gens that are unblocked is nearby, and he's able to pressure it like this, right? Like he can walk by, pressure it, chase him off, which buys him like precious precious seconds, right? Like every every like time he chases him off, that's like ten more seconds of that gen, which is a big deal. So it's just adding even more objective time while he's also kind of like still keeping an eye on the hook and forcing struggle state. It's so scary for him to go to the uh, to go for the unhook too, because at any point he could chainsaw over and get a one shot down on the person that actually got the unhook. So like. And he Getting the save is so risky. Like it doesn't even seem like anyone's going for it right now. He's he's almost struggled, so he's gonna get real close to the hook and wait for it to be confirmed now. Yeah, and basically he knows where everybody is. Like yeah. he, he he downed that person. He saw the person trying to come save. Then he had the other yeah. person out of the loop. Then somebody was uh, did the gen. Like he 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 has all the information in the world right now. And on top of that, he's running deadlock, which is a very <laughs> very big stalling perk. You know, when the survivor's on the hook and a gen's blocked for 60 seconds, that's the survivor who was doing that gen. They're basically put into a situation where they have to run to another gen or just wait it out, and that just wastes so much time while this guy's on the hook. I mean, it just got unblocked after a minute. Yeah, yeah. I thought deadlock was 30 seconds. Is it a minute? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. 30 seconds. I missed. Oh yeah, yeah was... <laughs> which is still a huge. It's still, though. It's yeah. like half half a hook stay, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that's like that's like almost half a gen, right? Like if you wait yeah. out 30 seconds, that like almost adds a whole another half a gen to your gen. So. Yep. It looks like he's just gonna secure this kill now. Like no one's really been trying to pressure this 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 hook at all. So he's I think he just figures, hey, might as well just sit here, secure it 100. percent They literally can't unhook without going down for it. So I think they're just gonna let it happen now. Which this is rough. That's a bad yep. start. There's still four gens left. I mean, I imagine there's probably some that are almost done, but that is not the start you want to see as Frontier at all here. So he just needs three more hook states, I believe, right? Because the last one was five. Yep. Oh, oh no, no, dude! No! Oh. oh, that's not what you want to see. That's yeah. That's that's gonna probably be a tilter, honestly. That's rough. That gen now gets blocked from deadlock, which doesn't really accomplish much because he had a he had a hook guy there anyway. So that was actually pretty unfortunate deadlock. But this is such a bad situation now. Still, still two gens left, and he knows he knows where they all are. He knows that the that, that the third guy was on that far gen. He knows that the that the uh, ace is here, so he's totally free to leave the hook. There's no fear of the non hook coming in at all. He doesn't really not have to like keep an eye on it whatsoever. He can actually just play chases now. Goes for a curve and completely fucks it up, but hey, it happens. You know, what are you going to do? He's going to try to keep an eye out. He's looking for the ace to potentially sneak over to the hook, but he's not seeing anything yet. He has all the room in the world to fuck up all he wants right now. Yep, yep. Uh. He, he can come back and kick the gen. Now he can kind of like patrol a gen that's like mostly worked on while it's regressing, as well as a hook survivor, which is like two objectives right in the corner. Also, that corner is like not a dead zone but there's only like one pallet in that kind of area i think at the moment so like once that pallet's gone there's not really much else there so it's also a dangerous zone in general like how the fuck do the survivors get out of this i don't think they do i don't think they get out of this yeah he's still keeping an eye on this gen as well he's trying to look for the meg to see, she, to see if she's not unhooking i haven't seen her yet okay i think i just saw her now i don't know if he's seen her but yeah i've seen i saw her just now she's going for the unhook but even this right she can't really do it without without going down like if she does it, she she eats a health state. Even here, he's trying to bait her into like over committing. <laughs> he's just, he's he's baiting. Bait. I imagine it's probably gonna eventually get to a point where he'll get her into a position where he can break the pallet and still defend the hook. Yeah. Like right there, she's walking away. Is the ace here? Is that why she's walking away, or is she just giving up? Probably I think, giving up. Like I think he's yeah. trying to decide. Yeah. So yeah. There's, there's no reason they, they i mean she she might as well just go try and get a gen to try and get somebody out they can't do anything dude they can't do anything now this this whole area is a dead zone if they try to if they try to unhook like e they're 100 percent going down for sure Jeez. they're letting him die uh i think that's it right i'm pretty sure that's yeah it's already yeah, yeah it's already over yeah that's that's cg at that point yep so at this point, we'll just see what the Billy can do as far as fragging, dude. We'll see see if he can go curving, you know, get some good plays. <laughs> get some frags. Yeah, dude, go fragging. Oh, <laughs> goes for a curve, but doesn't quite get it. A lot of these rock tiles are decently curvable. Like, they're not, like, perfect straight lines, but they're, like, enough that you can curve around and get some pretty nice hits. But he just gets rid of the pallet. Um, again, I mean, while he's chasing this guy, there's only one survivor doing gen, so it's not like they're going to fly by super quickly. 
This area back here is a dead zone too. He's not really running anywhere safe. So he's probably done. He's probably done so here. Assuming the Billy doesn't fuck up, he's probably done so here. He might try to use that locker. He might not even have time though. Yeah, he doesn't have time. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, just look, look at the distance in between all these tiles and pallets. Like, it, it takes a while for the survivors to get anywhere from one filler pallet even to the next jungle gym or whatever it may be. And there's Billy, who knows what they're doing, will just be patient. You saw him there, he's patient with the saw and just zone until the survivor starts panicking, and then he can either saw them or catch up to them and and hit them. Yep. Very easily able to predict where the Meg is going to. Tries to catch her up in the window ball, but she she faked it, which was smart. But still, I mean, doesn't really matter at this point, right? He could chase her around, he could take all day. Like, what, really, what's she gonna do? I think their, their best bet, it, again, it, if the points matter, their best bet would might be just to have the guy on the hook, like, die and then have her try to get hatch maybe would be their best bet but even that probably wouldn't happen so it's kind of just over at this point <laughs> hey, all right all right all right i, I respect it i respect it. it was a good curve man that's uh <laughs> well there you go there you go i mean we we, we talked about it before the game as, as far as like how much of the start can matter right like whether like like, like getting a, a down in the early game might snowball into having like a crazy performance or if they can like really lock it down early game and I mean, yeah, <laughs> that fucking down came yeah. in so fast, dude. Like we loaded up and it was like 20 seconds and there was a down. So true. Hey. The, the, the good, I mean, I don't know if they were like standing in front of the pallet to test like to, as to whether or not he had low pro to begin with. I don't, I like, I don't know why she stood there just put that in the game. Yeah. I'm not really certain. Yeah, you, you, they should have expected that. And the, the correct play there would have just have been free drop that pallet and just start running. Because if he, even if he manages to get a, a, a one shot on you through the the pallet um you know and take a health state off with low pro chains it's just it's too risky to play risky versus a killer like this it, it, it's just it, that early game you just saw there it's like the worst thing that could possibly happen when you're playing versus a billy yeah yeah she also had that long wall jungle gym off to the side too so e even if she ate a low pro hit she could have made it to yeah. that window and then that's such yeah. a stronger tile right like you could actually buy a lot of time at that tile as opposed to just pre-dropping the pallet so yeah it was just it was a rough spot. I mean, I'm surprised you didn't even like at least try to like, like if you see, even if you wanted to play kind of risky, you'd think like maybe looping the small side even, which I know is probably yeah. even riskier, but at least like that has potential to be better, right? Like I feel like just eating the low pro, I mean, maybe she just wasn't expecting low pro chains, but I don't know how you couldn't, right? Like, no, uh, I'm sure they were expecting it. I mean, that's one of, the, uh, honestly, it's a good point. Like the uh, one thing that survivors constantly think about is kind of, playing off of the killer's build and not, i don't just mean perks i mean add-ons as well like y there's some situations and i've done this before where you actually have to like think mid chase while you're being chased by a, a very good killer who knows what they're doing you have to think mid chase and make that split decision like okay do i hit or do i get hit by this low pro chains to actually get that speed boost and make it to the next tile so there's like kind of that mini thought process going on while you're actually being chased and you know like you see there he's kind of just stood in front of the pallet and got zoned after that and that i mean that right there could have been the difference between maybe them getting escapes and what what we just saw yeah it's crazy you're telling me that people are thinking mid chase oh yeah i've done yeah that's i've done nuts. that plenty before <laughs> no, that's yeah. insane yeah it's not i mean it's not always just whole w simulator or whatever <laughs> but like you know you got to make those decisions and Sometimes it's better to actually like lose a health state and get that speed boost so you can make it to that long wall jungle gym. I mean, one thing I'd point out is, and, and this is actually something that's different from what we used to see on Billy so commonly, is that he was running no bamboozle. You make it to a long wall jungle gym and he doesn't have that bamboozle to block off the window. You can run that for a little bit and waste some, some more time. So all these little decisions and all these little factors kind of add up in terms of buying time for your team to get gens done. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, because he didn't have a bamboozle there. So that that, yeah. that that is definitely a big deal, right? Like, they didn't even really get a chance to scout that because he just started snowballing before they even yeah. got an opportunity to play a window. True. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Honestly, just crazy good performance from Trauma. Unfortunately, Frontier didn't quite keep up. But, you know, it happens. It's kind of, again, like, like the according to the bracket, again, this was, like, the number two seed against number 15. So it's kind of an expected result. You know what I mean? Um, so Trauma's going to be moving on, and Frontier's going to be going to the loser's bracket. And uh, what do we have next? What is our what is our next match? Ah. Freedom versus Monarchy. Nice, nice, nice. I believe, I believe Freedom is a Russian team as well, right? So. Oh shit. yes, they are. They are. Uh, they're a very solid Russian team. And to Ralph's happiness, it's actually going to be our first Huntress 
the so Russian is about Huntress. to lore, lore yeah. accurate. I'm about it. Let's go. go. Huntress first plague. And then uh, again, for the for those of you guys who are watching, probably wondering why the killers or why the teams can pick different killers. It's different from the last time we did it, but it is a common way of how tournaments kind of work nowadays where each killer is picked before the matchup and the teams don't know the other killer that's being played until they're actually selected. So they kind of have to like lock it in and then it's revealed to them. But basically you have to balance the, you know, the overall flow of the tournament in terms of, hey, should we use, should we use our strong killers earlier or save them for the later rounds? And, you know, it's kind of a decision that you have to make depending on what type of team you're going against. Yeah, I, I do find that to be really interesting. And that's another it's another reason why I find it interesting how many pool three killers we have today. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Cause again, if you if you look at these three pools, you can probably tell that like all the insane killers are in pool one. Pool two is like fairly strong. I mean, like there, there's some like semi weaker ones in there, right? Like there's like doctor and stuff. And pool three, like pool two and pool three are kind of like a, a good mix, but pool one is clearly where like all of the all the real big the, yep. the real big dogs sit. And no one yeah. no one picked pool one all for, for all the matches this week. So it does make sense. Like obviously, like the, those are when when you see those killers, especially like a nurse, it's you almost think of it as like a guaranteed like doing well for 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 that killer. So see that's obviously if you, you, you want to guarantee it whenever you know winning matters the most for sure. See that's kind of why I expected it though on on round one, especially with some of these like because again if we're just going off seeding right, like if we're saying like you know seed True, one versus yeah. seed sixteen, you would think maybe you would want to take like a high tier killer to have a chance against them, but mm. I, then again at the same time you can maybe use the logic of like well, you know maybe we don't have a chance to beat them anyway, so we might yeah. as well just but like see but here's my mentality right if you if you're going into a tournament saying hey we don't have a chance to beat the top team no matter what killer we play then why are you even playing right exactly. like like you're like if you're if you're gonna win the tournament you're gonna have to beat them eventually anyway. Anyway, so like in my opinion, I think you should just fucking go all out. If you know you're going against, if you're going against one of the best teams in the tourney, you know, pick an S tier killer. Like try, try your damnedest to get past them. And if you can't, then you know what are you gonna do? But True. I mean, maybe, maybe instead they're playing for placements. Maybe they think that they can maybe get to like third place or you know, like something like that. If they, you know, and like if, if they're if they're confident that even with an S tier killer they can't beat the best team, they're like, well, maybe we can squeeze in like a third place and get some prize money yeah. or something. You know, maybe. like that, that, that. I think I guess that can make sense, but it's still yeah. like. Yeah, I, don't know. I mean, it's it's the overall risk reward of the whole killer selection process. And again, you guys are like, well, why would a nurse ever go up against like a wraith or something like that, right? But again, the the, the balancing is tailored to each killer. So theoretically, each killer should have a at least decently fair chance at getting a at least a decent result in each of these matches. But the other thing might be is, and I think I mentioned this yesterday, like kind of in the pre tourney meeting. Um, I don't think you were there, Ralph, but it's something to okay. think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, something to think about though is uh you know a lot of these better teams right they're, they're usually playing in the later rounds of these tournaments consistently and they're they're often going up against nurses spirits blights well, the a tier killers whatever you want to call them the high tier killers so they might naturally just be more accustomed to going against those killers and have more practice against them so it's not always the best to like pick the strongest killer against the good teams who have gone against those killers hundreds and hundreds of times I feel like the expectation from uh, the, the 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 other teams as well is that the 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 teams that they already know are good, like the higher seated teams probably aren't going to pull out like their big guns either. Yeah. So See like that they, they they know they have more of a chance like to to pick one of the the, the worst killers as well to try and guarantee wins later, uh, because obviously like they're they're, they're not going to be going against not like it's nurse like first game. See, that's uh, that's exactly why I think it would be a good idea to do it, though, man. I don't know. Like, I, 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 mean, obviously, I can see your, like, logic. I, yeah, I agree with it. Like, you try to get, just get them out of there. Get, fuck them. Yeah, like, if you can get an upset. Like, like, like for instance, if you're like, okay, like, Nightlight might pick, like, Plague for this match because they feel, like, confident and, they, and they're going to go with, like, a low-tier killer. So let's just fucking shove a nurse in there and just see if we can have our nurse, be, like, do better than his Plague, right? Yeah. Right. And, yeah. like, I, I mean, I, I, again, like, I, 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 under, I, I understand the other side of the argument, too. It's just... I feel like, because again, I, 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 like, why not try, right? Like, why not try? Like, if you're, if you're, if you're competing in a tournament, I feel like, again, like, I, I guess my mentality when it comes to being competitive and playing in any kind of like a competitive setting or like a tournament, like, like, like my mentality is always like, just don't be afraid of any team. Like, don't be intimidated. Yeah. Like, play to win, basically, right? Like, if if someone is known as the best, guess what? If you're gonna win the tournament, you have to beat them at some point if you're gonna want to win, right? So like, you might as well do what you can to beat them when you get the opportunity, you know? Like, I, I don't know. I guess that's my mentality. I towards it but i can definitely see like you know the different arguments and all that 
Um, I want to remind you guys, I'm going to say this a few times throughout the tournament. Uh, and, you know, I'm sorry if it gets annoying. But again, uh, if you guys donate any money during this tournament, it goes to the prize pool. Uh, these tournaments have been a really, really fucking fun time. The players have been coming through and, and, and playing. A lot of these guys are like Russian players that are staying up until like 4 a.m. to play these tournaments and shit, which is, you know, crazy. And it's been a really, really good time. It's been very entertaining. And if you guys want to support anything that gets donated to the stream during the days of the tournament. So we're doing this every Friday for six weeks. It'll be today. It'll be next Friday and next Friday and next Friday for six weeks. If you guys donate any money during the tournaments, it all goes straight to the prize pool. So keep that in mind. If you guys want to support obviously it's again it's not necessary you don't need to do it but if it's, it's just an option that i want to throw out there if you if you guys feel the need to um i'm also going to be switching around to these different scenes just while we're talking in between games so you guys can get some more information on how things on how, on how things work um uh but yeah i just want to get that out there but we're almost we're almost into the game we're almost there so do we know uh which which killer is actually starting out here uh i believe that Freedom will be killing first. And ah, the Huntress. Yeah. Ah. Should, are they killing first or surviving? Uh, is Huntress on the same let map? Let me take a look at the teams here. Do, 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 do. It looks... Is she on Azeroth's? Uh, uh, actually, that's Huntress, a good question, yeah. Hun Huntress will be on Wrecker's Yard. And the other oh, killer yeah, 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 is yeah, yeah. Plague, which we already saw before, which was on Azeroth's no, resting place. Freedom is actually playing Survivor first. Okay, so they're playing... Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they're the higher seed. So they'll be playing Survivor first. So it'll be Plague, and then it'll be Huntress after that. Yep, yep, yep. Hey, sounds good to me, man. Sounds good to me. Also, something... <laughs> something I want to... I just want to say this out loud so I don't forget. Uh, I'm saying this to Swish, who I think is probably listening in the background. This this overlay we have that shows like the rosters of the teams, it'd be really cool if we can get like the seed number for the team beside their name. That'd be sweet. That way we can maybe get a feel for like who the quote unquote like best teams are just based on like looking at the at the at the list of names. It's just something I want to say out loud. Not not a big deal. Just wanted to not. Would it, would it be later. nice? Would it? Okay. It would be nice. It would be great. Imagine how cool that would be. That would be sweet. <laughs> if yeah, only man. there was some hero that can do that for us, but you know. I know you I, I know you're probably busy, so like obviously I'm not saying do it now, but you know. Maybe for the future days that we stream or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, back to Plague, huh? I, I, I feel like we've already talked about Plague a bit. We've already seen her played. Yeah. Um, so this is... The higher the higher seed team is playing Survivor first, right? Yeah, that'll always be like that throughout the yeah. tournament. Okay, yeah. so it's always going to be higher seed playing Survivor. That's interesting. Yeah. Is playing Survivor first an advantage or a disadvantage, do you think? I, it's funny. We we're actually talking about this before the uh, the stream went live, and it, it, it kind of depends on the team. But for me personally, I always say it's better to take the pressure off of your killer because they're out there, kind of on an island on their own. And if they know exactly what they need to get, they can kind of play more comfortably. Then yeah. again, you could just get destroyed as survivor, and it kind of puts all the pressure on your killer. But in my opinion, you have, as, assuming your team is prepared and you're going to play well, it's better to kind of set the tone early and then let your killer kind of chill out and relax and know exactly what they need to do. Agreed. I think from a, from, from a spectator point of view, I think it's better this way because, again, I think if the if the higher seed killer just runs in and just annihilates them, then it's like, well, what's the point of even playing the other side, right? Like, we already know yeah. the result. Um, so I think from a spectator point of view, this is definitely the best way to do it. But, yeah, from, from like a quote-unquote advantage point of view, I think you might be right. I think playing Survivor first might be nice, right? You can kind of, like, set the tone and then... Because, again, like, if you're playing killer first, you don't... There's no, like... D desired result right it's not like oh if i just get this i win no matter what right like you're just you're just out there and it's like hey man play yeah. your best and get a good result but who knows if your result's going to be good enough just try to do whatever you can you know I so. th yeah I, I think like going into the game i ask killer knowing exactly what you need sounds a lot more comfortable yeah uh so if it was me personally like like that just allows you to be more more uh more precise and you have much more of a direction rather than just hoping and praying you get whatever the hell you get Yep, yep. Uh, so, so I agree. Uh, good corrupt intervention split. Also, uh, one of the fountains is also this is like similar to the setup we had earlier for uh Jinx, where like the 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 setup was all, all four gens were kind of on one side. And I think both fountains are there too. Honestly, it looks very similar. As far as like yeah. gens and fountain goes, it looks very similar to the setup that uh Jinx had earlier in their match that we were talking about being so good. So curious to see the, how well he uses it. The doors are at least split though, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's one door down here, one door up there. Yeah, yeah, which is which is true. That that, that might end up mattering a lot in the in, in the late game. Sure. It looks like he's uh pretty confident 
Well, you know, I guess he, I guess rightfully so, he's confident. He puked on all the gens, so he knows that nobody can be working on him, or uh, otherwise they'd be sick. So he's taking he's taking that time to basically run around and see if he can find people waiting out corrupt intervention, hiding around the outskirts of the map. Unfortunately, didn't find anybody, so not really a lot happening right now. It's very unfortunate. This is a big, like, time sink. Obviously, if he found somebody right there, that would have been a really, really good start. But back to patrolling gens he goes. Corrupt has about a little over 30 seconds left on it. This Maybe is probably the proper play from them as well. It's just chilling out and waiting because there's no reason to try and give them an early down and an early hook just to lead to somebody dying extremely early. So, yep, yep, for sure. Makes sense. Um, still not finding anybody though. <laughs> Checking lockers. I'm going to do a quick, a real quick behind a rock, behind a rock. A jungle gym and a jungle gym. Okay, they're all just chilling. They're all just chilling. They're big, big chilling. We can't see exactly where, because again, stretch res gamers looking at the ground. How dare they? <laughs> so we can't see exactly where, but I mean, they're all definitely chilling and hiding and trying to avoid them. And corrupt's gone now. So that little like four gen setup where he was just peeking on every gen and they, you know, like that they weren't able to work on it is now gone. Now they're kind of free to do whatever they want, which is probably the ideal way to start a survivor, right? Like that was a really good. It was a really good, like, you know, play for them to not get seen, you know, and even though he was, like, looking around in the area that they most likely were in, they did a really good job of not getting spotted. He, <laughs> that was a weird little, like, peekaboo movement he had there. He's like, wait, did I see something? Did I see something? I don't know. And then there was nothing there. So, this is rough. I mean, he's got he's to gotta find something soon, man. I mean, they're probably on gens now. Yeah, he heard this one. Okay, Zarina also just took Sickness to work on a gen. That's interesting. That's basically like him getting a health state, essentially. By her, by her tapping that. So that's an interesting move for her to do. He also finds the ace. I feel like they probably just decided like, okay, he's he's going to commit to a chase. So we just need to commit exactly. to getting gens done. Which is probably more worth it in the end. Especially but... if she's on one that's going to break up a three gen. Or help yeah. break up a, a possible three gen. So true, true. That's a very good point. If it's an important gen. And that's the one right there, right? That is a pretty... A pretty decent gen to get done. It's on one on the side. So if they can get that one done and also one done across the map, that'll be really big for the later game. And she just plays really safe, right? Like runs when he gets anywhere close. Um a real oh. slow, real slow a real slow strategic start from both sides here, honestly. Yeah, yeah, this is a common play style for a lot of plagues nowadays. Um, you know, it's kinda like you want to get everyone injured and then you see the yellow add-on that gives them an extra corrupt pool. So the you know, obviously with plague you gotta do the risk reward as a survivor oh. team of do we cleanse, Ooh. do we stay injured? And with her having that extra pool, oh. hopefully it kind of <laughs> spreads out around the map and you know, if they're all in, I don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> but Frustration, all, if, if that's if what's all, going on right now. Yeah, if they're all injured, you know, they, all it takes is one good corrupt pool and finding everyone kind of out of position to get them down. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He has, Dude, he has this, three people sick now, too. He's gonna, Jake has been giving them the juice. Yeah, the he's been... actual juice. He's been getting the dickens here, for sure. He should be able to make it to this pallet, too, and then be okay. He does get injured, though, Ooh. but... They're getting gens done, man. Like they're getting a lot done. I think I think almost all of them are across the map. So he might still have like a decent setup here. Maybe I can't tell where the third gen that's close by is, but he might have a decent setup here. Looks like he's decided to commit here. He does have this pool of corruption. I imagine he'll take. Yeah. He's actually taking it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, kind of has to. The he's got to be careful with this pallet though, because a lot of people don't know this. Um, oh. But getting stunned by a pallet knocks you out of your power. That's a very like weird thing that people don't know for some reason. Yeah. I honestly didn't know that. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of people that don't know I, that. I, I didn't. It's That's it's crazy, yeah. it's a very like simple part of her power, but a lot of people just don't like. It's it just feels like it's like not explained well enough or something. A lot of people don't don't understand it. So like when playing pallets like that, you have to be a bit careful. Like if he if he baits out, like if he runs past the pallet and then comes back and throws it as you go under it, you just lose your power. It's 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 risky for sure, but. Obviously, he played it well. He ended up getting the down anyway. He had some pretty good mind games. Although, they did get a lot of gens done. And he has a bit of a 3-gen here, but it's not the tightest. It's definitely not the tightest 3-gen. There's, like, like, one of the gens is kind of, like, further into the map. Like, kind of, like, in, like, the maze tile area. So, that one, that's one, that one in the distance is completely gone. He's not even going to worry about that at all. I mean, it's so right not terrible, so. though. Like, like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's not the tightest, but it's really not god-awful. Like, this is manageable, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the one thing that he has going for him is that right there is he's got a corrupt pool right in between the gens and the hook. And yep. if that Nia gets sick and they kind of get out of position, they're going to be forced to either cleanse and save the survivor or 
kind of risk going next to him while he's about i'm assuming he's gonna grab this pool as soon as that goes out yeah he, then, he does have the same yeah. add-on as before too where it adds yeah. 20 seconds so this is an 80 second corruption Jeez. which is yeah. enough for this entire hook state oh, yeah. oh they got him before though. struggle he's a healthy that survivor too so that was huge actually the fact that they got him before oh, struggle no. is such a big deal dude yeah. Oh, oh no. no! The sprint burst is juking the. No. Not the spray, spray. No, uh -oh. dude, not the plague around a small rock. No. Plague as big as Nemesis, a tiny rock, dude. Not like this. Not like this. Oh, it's, he has to be careful because if he gets stunning, it's not out of his power. Okay, oh, he ends up getting God. it down. He could have DS though. We don't know. Again, I believe this tournament's using the same rules as last time, where uh, only one perk allowed per survivor. Uh, except for borrowed time, right? Are we still following this exact same rules? That's yep, that's correct. Where borrowed time, there could be up to two of. He doesn't have decisive yep. strike, so he gets back on the hook. But dude, like he was so close to struggle, and they saved him at the last yeah. second. So that's so much save time there. He now has yeah. a whole another sixty seconds. He only had one second no way out, which they just activated. Oh man, that's rough. This, yeah, this is this is concerning. And only one stack of no way out, as we see here. So it's only going to last what fifteen seconds. Yeah, well, it's like 24, Which, I think. Yeah, yeah. something like 20 seconds or, or give or take. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's not too much value. It's already up. Dude, oh, these God. these rocks are like really hard to play as plague, honestly, because the peak travel yeah. time is so slow. True. Like you can honestly loop around them so well. And then her corrupt is gone now. All, she's just a M1 killer now. She's, she, she, yeah. she's, she's an M1 killer against competitive level survivors. This is not a great scenario. That guy's going to so get saved without a death. And he gets to make it somewhere else. That was such a, like, there was no real, like, safe side to even break that pallet there either. He, he, like, one side he had Shaq and whatever the hell was next to it, and the other side he had everything else. It's really, really, really unfortunate. Yeah, I imagine here what's going to happen is they'll probably cleanse across the map, get healthy, and then they'll come over and probably get in the way and take a hit for this guy to be able to get down to the end of the map. He just has to survive long enough. I think that was live, too, that just popped in. He just Jeez. has to survive long enough for his healthy teammates to get down here and then be able to take a hit for him because she has no corrupt... Uh, pulls anywhere near her, so she can't really do anything about it if they come yep. body block. Like, she's completely screwed. So, all he has to do is stay alive. He just has to buy time and buy time. Actually, they just left. Really? I thought they could have got no. him out. I thought they could have got him out, honestly. Maybe they just I mean, thought it wasn't worth the risk. But. Yeah, like, confirming three seems pretty safe, so I respect it, but I, I, I kind of agree with you. I feel like they probably could have gotten him, yeah. Yeah, like my guess, they... yeah, my guess is that they probably didn't account for brutal strength. Oh. And maybe that wasn't communicated, and they probably thought he may have had no oh, head instead. Oh, yeah, that's so. true. Yeah, that's that's a good point. You guys can't see the perks, but they don't have no head, but no head is a very commonly run perk, so, like, they probably did expect it. Yeah, he is running brutal strength, which is a very interesting perk choice. And maybe they didn't like realize he had it. They probably were. Yeah, that's actually probably what it was. They probably expected Noah and didn't want to risk it. Because honestly, if they did have Noah, then that would have been a terrible play. So that's true. true. We, we we only we only knew that play was possible because we knew the new we knew that Noah wasn't in play. So that's that's fair. Oh hey, I mean honestly, five hook states and a kill. Yeah, not terrible. I mean, but it's not no. bad that what like that getting off the hook before they went struggle. That was that was such a crucial turning point of the match, and it's something that I when I'm playing killer and people ask me you know for advice like the one thing that I always say when you're playing killer is you always have to force you have to first of all you have to understand the situation that is like in front of you with the survivors and like with the information that you have you need to understand the situation the second thing is that you need to always force the survivors into feeling like they need to do something so there you, the the least the last thing you want to have happen is wait that entire time until they're just about to go struggle and then they get unhooked because then yeah. there's still only one hook stage right and they have two more hooks before they're dead you always want to force the survivors to feel pressured into going for that hook save. And then, you know, do they save with one person? Do they save with two people? Do they make, do you make it an unhook safe where, you know, if they get grabbed, that, that is just completely snowballs out of, out of line for them. You, that was a big mistake. And honestly, it probably would have, would have resulted in like a 2K with seven, eight stages, whatever it may have been, if they confirmed that, uh, that first hook on the yeah. ace there. Or that, the Jake, sorry. That seemed like such a slip up to me, man. I mean, yeah. honestly, like kudos to the survivors for taking advantage too. Like we got to give them credit as well. Like they took full advantage of the opportunity they had to, to do that. But yeah, like letting that unhook come in right before struggle. Like, dude, he yeah. was like, he was literally like three seconds away from going to struggle state. Like that was so close. So the fact that they like let that come in at the very last second was not ideal for sure. That was yeah. certainly not ideal.
Um, yeah, bummer. I mean, at the end of the day, though, it's still not a horrible result, right? Like, no, not bad. Yeah, I mean, like five hundred saints and a kill yeah. is definitely, you know, there's there's definitely worse results with that that we've seen. Um, they are going up against again Huntress though from from Freedom, so True. we'll see how this goes. Uh, is Huntress being played played on uh, Wrecker's Yard again, like, like like last time, or is it a different map now? She is, yes, she is. Mm. Wrecker's Yard, and uh, I think this is the first killer today that's actually going to have perks banned oh. uh, uh, because of Wrecker's Yard. She's not allowed to run the combination of Agitation plus Iron Grass, but mm. she can run one or the other mm, and that's just okay. to avoid you know i mean wrecker's yard being a center basement and huntress being so strong at defending the basement you know uh, agi iron grass just makes it basically a free basement hook there's no real counterplay to that unless they die super far edge map true yeah, and that, yeah. The, i don't even think that's a, that big of a deal because she, she doesn't even need to yeah. like actually just hold basement she can like if she notices a three gen literally just hooking a survivor in a three gen and holding it is pretty is is pretty pretty it's it's simple and easy and effective as well so i'm kind of like concerned for that that plague because i think huntress has a much better chance of doing well to be honest uh it's it, like the only thing you're worried about or not even necessarily even worried about you just want to get one down uh one down and then being able to patrol a hook with a hatchet out or just moving around in general and, and making them actually like concerned about showing themselves or going for anything because even trying to like save or, or, or you know do a one for one with hunters uh, against the hunters is pretty scary especially if they have oak haft and then if we're dealing with any sort of delay then that can uh, that can cuck it entirely because with oak haft uh um, if they don't like literally time it perfectly after after taking a hatchet at the hook then she gets to stop them from 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 saving period and just grabs them right off yeah uh so with any sort of delay that's a problem that's concerning and uh, I think it's pretty easy for her to just hold the hook and and not let them get them, period. Yeah, I'm I'm curious to know too if we'll see some uh, some interesting stuff. Like I I I'm, again I'm I'm going off of like the discussions we've had with past tournaments and what Justin yeah. has told us before. But I know a lot of player on Hunters does revolve around basement because of how insanely strong she is in basement. Yeah. And I'm wondering if you'll like. Do, do you think there's a chance we'll see stuff like breakout, like in builds for survivors and stuff? Yes, yeah, mm. we could. I mean, it's it's possible. I mean, it's it, it's not even just basement. I mean, she's not always played on Wreckers Art. It's definitely kind of her most popular map nowadays. But it's just her zoning potential. Once she gets to like agitation is honestly such a used perk on her, just because she zones someone to like a dead zone anywhere where she can basically make in make an unhook like at, at for the for the very you know least a hook trade where they're they get an unhook and she immediately downs someone and then hooks them in a dead zone and they have to keep doing that her zoning potential between being a range killer and also being able to with what you would expect to be oak haft which i know ralph loves to run the slower cooldown it makes it impossible to make it a one-man save you if yeah. you you can easily two tap someone before they have, have time to uh unhook the survivor yeah for sure yeah i <laughs> i'm wondering uh you think anybody took up the church of shiny pin since we last did a tournament probably or? not bro there, there's nobody's <laughs> a believer nobody's a believer i don't know like i i just don't understand it i i i don't i never will i i don't think like i think you can especially play without it on uh on this map too i i do think like using basement is the smartest thing the the, the one thing like, that i hate about azeroth maps and i'm not even sure if i entirely agree with like making wreckers yard the map for her uh, on, it might actually balance it out because I do think she's extremely strong on, on in other realms where you don't have to deal with such a, a, a like tinier tinier window for getting hits at you know through through windows and stuff due to like the collision and just the nature of the uh, the tiles because that is something that works against her on this map and, and works for her on other maps especially like McMillan maps where the windows are a bit a bit wider so you can go for 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 the good old Ralph tech and just literally being able to like put yourself into perfect perfect guessing games with them where they can't see you uh they're on the other side of something and you're either waiting there uh, they, they don't know if you're going to come around or if you're waiting at the window or shit like that but you can't really do that as well on this map uh so basement's probably going to be the the proper thing to do and then shiny pin would still have value just because you're you're able to literally hold the hatchet and walk around and not be so slow and and if you're actually you know accurate and can hit your hatchets then that's 
they can't just freely run around. They have to be, you know, concerned. They can't just be taking free damage states against a Huntress that can hit you from damn near anywhere, essentially. Uh, obviously, it's a bit harder to do against people that are actually aware and, and know what the hell is going on, but there's a lot of situations or just where where you can actually realistically get like long range and uh hatchets and gen snaps just to do to the the nature of the, the the tiles that the gens are at and the information that the survivors are going to have regardless of stretch res uh i don't know <laughs> i'm I'm, yeah. I'm 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 interested to see what 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 happens i hope somebody took up the the you know uh, read the good book and and figured out what was actually good with shiny <laughs> thing because i do think it's extremely valuable i don't i don't think you need uh Vushka. I, maybe it's a little bit more valuable on this map because you can't get a lot of the like the 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 window hits and stuff like that or window mine games just because those windows the yeah. collision on them is really really tight like you just can't do it auto uh, haven windows fucking suck it, yeah dude. that's why i don't know if i agree with it however i like after scrimming uh like the uh, doing uh, doing those mind games like they're kind of foolproof like i just want to say they really really are like it's it's a mind game bro it's a they can't see you you're hiding your stain they don't know what you're going to do and it's it's about making like really good reads and Maybe maybe it just balances her out a little bit more. To be honest, I'm I'm not sure. But I'm telling you, see. dude, we need we need Ralph to break into the comm scene and sh and show oh. him, man. Be like, yo, put oh. me on fucking Shelter Woods or well, maybe not Shelter Woods, maybe like uh, Cool Tower or something. I'm surprised you don't see more Cool Tower in these. Like, do any killers play on on that map or like? Uh, yeah, I think some. I think I know Oni does. Uh, mm. I think there's a couple others. Uh. I'm forgetting, not, I have to go through the list, but um, okay, it just depends on the tournament. I think sometimes it switches between the killers, but yeah, um, Huntress has been played on Cold Tower before. They're both smaller maps, you know, Cold Tower usually is a little bit more, I would think, kind of in favor for Huntress, other I than like the is, main building. Yeah. I, I think I think Cold Tower is probably a little bit too much in her favor, to be honest. After, yeah. after doing those scrims, it's way too easy to just, yeah. put, like, as soon as you down somebody, you, you you know where your like where a three gen is you hook them inside the three gen and that's it and so it's like they can't really come and save unless you give them the opportunity and with huntress bro especially on that map like the, a good portion of the middle uh is really really open and even even depending on like the the tile spawns you get on the sides like you might get a get like like a like a hill and uh, you know in between two loops or just something open or, or a gen in the middle with a couple rocks around it like it's really easy for her to control, especially when you have something as valuable as shiny pin that allows you to move <laughs> around faster to, to to guard your hook and guard guard gens even more. It's crazy. It's mind boggling. Man, someday however, someday we'll see shiny pin. Dude. However, someday. there there is value, especially especially if you're just trying to be safer. Um there there there's obviously like a lot of value in just being able to wind up a bit earlier and get earlier hits and get a faster down just to try and start it off, but I don't think I don't think being concerned about whether or not you're going to get it down as Huntress should be your concern. If that's not already in your in your flow chart and you know you're wanting to get it down, then it might be back to the drawing board. But you're all do fast because I don't know what the hell you're yeah. doing. You're Huntress, bro. You're gonna get it down. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Some and, and just while we're taking some time to get uh, all set up before this match loads in, uh, a couple of like intricate type of balancing things that I want to mention. Uh, she's not allowed to have extra hatchets, no infantry belt, no leather loop, so she's a little bit more restricted in terms of that. No iridescent he head either, God which bless. some tournaments allow, but not this one. Um, can make for some pretty stale spectator yep. gameplay, so not always the best in terms of that, but um, those are her only band add-ons. And then one thing I want to point out is uh, the survivor perks are actually, there's a little bit more specifically banned uh, against Huntress. Um, obviously, you know, there's the standard, you know, botany knowledge, uh, desperate measures. A lot of the healing perks are banned versus her because she's a slower killer. Uh, but perks like wake up, self care, hope, um, which you might not think survivors yeah. would run. Wake but up. Those are like, yeah, she she's a slow killer and she struggles to get, you know, across the map because she's a slower killer, right? So. Yeah. You know those perks that can make the difference between end game and you know being uh, in favor for her or the survivors it's a little bit more balanced because she has an opportunity to do something in end game if she plays well yeah that makes sense i mean it is interesting because i know that wake up does see some play in comp and i always thought it was interesting but like the fact that it like get, gets banned was uh, was like surprising but that does make sense yeah. right like exit exigate play is probably hard when she's so slow so it does make sense to kind of like ease that up a little bit on her you know 
True, but RNG could be in her favor because yep. they're I mean, like it could be in her favor to where she just gets to look at both doors holding the hatchet and fuck around and find out. <laughs> true, yeah, true, true, true. Oh, what is your, so what? Whoa, 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 what is it? What is this other add on? I think that's is that oh, flight that's, speed? That, yeah, that's is flight that speed. velocity. Yeah, that's velocity. So. Oh, yeah, that's hundred percent. That's, that's that's the this twenty percent. I is actually the opposite of shiny pin. I've actually been yeah. using this exact add-on combination. Someone made me run this the other day, and it actually feels so good, dude. You wind up your hatches so fast, and then it flies so fucking fast. True, like, but it, it, it's like you're. I don't. I don't like. What are you? What are you saving by using that though? You're going to get a down your huntress. Like I feel like this is like these are things you'd use to try and like Whoa. confirm it down more quickly, but you don't. I don't think you need that whatsoever. Like stuff like OCAP literally allows you to protect the like hooks and stuff a lot easier and a lot See, better. See, I, I like, think I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, like that. That also, by the way, that was an incredibly fast down. <laughs> yeah, that was Jesus very fast. Christ, he she, just she shit on gone. that guy. Like just completely. Yeah. And that's basement too. And like yeah, the right first, down to the basement. Like the first ten seconds of the match. I wanted to like comment more on this, but like holy Christ, dude. Um. I, I will say, like, for instance, I think getting that second hit there, I think getting those, like, mid-range hits, that velocity add-on is so nice, right? Because, yeah. like, because normally those, like, mid-range hits, it's kind of, like, somewhat prediction, you know what I mean? Whereas I feel like when you, with that with that 20% more velocity, it's a lot less prediction. You're, you're, a lot, you're a lot, like, closer to, like, you know, I don't want to say hit scan, but you're, like, closer to, like, quote-unquote, yeah, I mean, you know? But even regardless, like, oh, here we go. Okay. Our, our, no, immediately left it. Didn't yeah. Even save the route. Like, nothing makes sense. You know, you have basement and you're... It might as well like not risk it. This is your down. Yeah, this is. I, I don't. I don't see a world where they're gonna leave this fucking basement, dude. Like this down came uh -huh. in so quick. She could easily secure like a kill, if not like you know a one for one or something big. Like if anyone even does one for one, they immediately get hooked in basement too. This is such an insane early game. Like there's, there's uh -huh. no fucking way. I guess. Like okay, see, so they're doing like they're doing the thing that you're going to do with Hunter S. You're holding a hatchet and literally just looking around, and and as long as you can actually hit them, then you, if they if they peek out, do whatever, move, uh, you then they get punished for it, and it's great. But I that's why I still don't understand like velocity, especially velocity actually like takes away some of your options because you don't have as much control, and sometimes you literally want to throw something, throw a hatchet with with the least amount amount of velocity possible so it can actually hit. Uh, over objects and, and and so on and so forth especially yeah, i guess like you don't have to play that way i do think it is just a part of playing her but, like for instance that uh, hatchet she almost went for right there i know what you mean yeah like she was, she was yeah. gonna go for that lob hatchet and it didn't yeah, like she yeah you I, can't I, because you're charging fast and now your velocity is already like already starting you know higher than normal uh period like i like you can play in a, a really really safe way where you're not going for like a little bit more interesting hatchets however that's kind of like there's a lot of value in going for them as well and actually like making them afraid of that too. Uh, that's yeah. part of that's part of her zoning. That's 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 part of part of her in general. So I'm I'm not really sure, but this is regardless, it's working out. They got a really, Bro, really, I mean really I'm gonna be honest. I, I don't wanna say really it, dude. I don't wanna say it, but this match, this game feels over, dude. Like he doesn't need that much. Yeah. Like he doesn't need that much at it's all. He already secured a kill. He has deadlock, so like even yeah. even while he was sitting here and like protecting this kill, Jens were getting blocked and it's like he's he has like little he's like literally slowing them down just by standing there because of this deadlock. And really, really yeah, rough. now now all he needs like he has like three gens with three survivors left to just get like a couple more hook states basically. Like he doesn't really need much more at all to secure this win. So yeah, if he secures another kill, it'll be a win for him. Yeah, Jeez. yeah. So like that is. See, I get this is this goes back to like like you know killer picks and stuff like that. Like I could uh, like I feel like hunters is rather capable in this tournament. Uh, like I, 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 if I was, if I was one of them, I would have actually taken a, taken a, a line from Tofu's book and went ahead and picked Nurse or somebody to against one of these like really, really good teams and save somebody like Huntress for for the end. Easy. Yeah, I mean, it's still, extremely reasonable. still, you know, I don't want to get ranting again, but still confused why no one did that, man. Still, still think they could have. Uh, yeah, I, I, Hunter's I'm, being I'm on your team now. Really patient here, kind of zoned him into a dead yeah, zone. This should. entire side is just a horribly, horribly dead zone. Not Sur the M1 Triss. Surprised oh, that she M1 there. I mean, I guess it's like playing well, safe. Now she doesn't even have OCAF. Yeah, yeah, but even without OCAF, it's still a decent recovery. Save, yeah, true. Right? I agree. Like, yeah, no, she she still would have been. It would have been her favor. Yeah. But, I mean, it's kind of just safe in general, I guess. But even regardless, yeah, she probably should have just went for the hatch and, and and did it. But I mean, this guy's gonna go basement, basement probably. Right? No, actually, he's not gonna base on him. He probably could have, but he decides not to.
So let's get the hook quick and then I guess get back into pressure in the map. I think if you would have basement in there, it probably would have just been GG because like how the fuck do you save against basement with two people against the Huntress? True. Uh, yeah. Yeah, probably she could be trying to bait out, uh, you know, them ma trying to make plays and stuff like that to, to try and get more kills rather than them just playing extremely, extremely safe. But I mean, regardless, she could have still used basement and actually probably afforded to be able to uh, patrol a little bit just because of the lead that they uh, that she has currently. So this is definitely That's, not uh, a this is definitely not a bad situation either though. She can literally no. just sit here with a hatchet. She can see that one gen. She has a oh. three gen, yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, brother. That, that velocity and that charge, we sure did you have something, didn't it? Oh, this is actually kind of low key giving them a chance here, but again, they, they're going to need to play fucking out of their mind to pull this back, but kind of giving them a chance? This should be a down. Yeah, she starts charging, knowing she could get their hits over this. Mm. Well, that velocity and charge speed, that's crazy. That's absolutely insane how much <laughs> how much that did for you right there. That's, that's absolutely insane. Oh, he, no. Here bro, it comes. With shiny pin, with shiny pin, okay, he literally could have started charging <laughs> earlier up that hill, made it up there at the same rate. I can't. I can't. Yeah. Oh, son, hey, mm, never mind. <laughs> Gets a free down on the Nancy. Gets a free down on the Nancy with the M1. Those add-ons for the hatchets coming in handy. Okay, I'm really surprised that Nancy ran to that Z-Wall instead of stay like did, she had a, a pallet at that jungle gym. Yeah, I think she could have gotten some value out of that, but in general, smart play of her to run this way away from the gens because yeah. they are going to be able to work on two separate gens on the opposite side of the map. The problem is that deadlock is, again, going to get so much value blocking that gen, which I would assume is probably at least halfway done and probably pretty close to being done, maybe. Yeah, I feel but like... I feel like if she would have like used that pout a little bit, even if yeah. she just like looped it once and then pre threw it, oh, and then ran to that corner and like and let herself go down, that might have been the difference maker between them getting this last gen done. But the fact that she didn't really utilize the pallet and just instead ran to the corner and got down, like yeah, they got that one gen done, and maybe if deadlock didn't exist, maybe they could have got both. But it's now they're kind of in this, now. yeah, they're in this rough scenario now where the gen's not done. She's about to get another down now. See, yeah, they would have got it done. Like literally, just just using that pallet probably would have been enough that they would have got both done. And now they're kind of in this tough scenario where I, I think it's GG actually, right? It's got to be close. Yeah, I think I, this will confirm I, it here. Yeah, I think that yeah. makes it GG. I mean, yeah. there there is no like, no real end game perks to speak of here to actually like make a difference. But I don't no. think it's gonna matter anyway because I I think either that's GG and if it's not, the second that guy goes to struggle, it's gonna be GG. So yeah, it's it's definitely over now. So yeah, it's there you go. I mean, that was just an insane start though. Like. I, I was like, we were literally like talking about add-ons and shit, and then like literally before we could even finish our fucking thoughts, there was, a, there was someone in basement. Like it was so fucking fast. So at this point, we're just playing it out, seeing 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 what we can happen. He's gonna go down and probably get thrown up on hook. He, she might even just slug and yeah, try try to finish off this match, which probably makes sense. I don't know if she's the one with DS or not. There's always gonna be probably one survivor with DS gets the down. Um, she's not. It was Ace that had DS. So yep, that's it. That's going to be the 4K. Very, Jeez. very well played. See, yeah, yeah, this goes back to what I said earlier. I I could have easily seen somebody like using, you know, somebody in that, that first pool against one of these really good teams and saving somebody like Huntress for, for last. I think with this map uh, and just how you can play her, I think it's, 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 I honestly think she, she's, she's just as good as uh, the other ones as far as like being able to make your make your game feel safer be more comfortable with what you what you can do in your game yeah uh, i still think that a lot of this came from the survivors misplaying though no 100 percent, 100 percent. i like absolutely that quick down in the beginning bro like that claudette was just like out in the open and then the nancy not even like using the pallets or advantage like these yeah. tiles are really really good against huntress she can't get a lot of those windows hits like going for mind games after after they throw it down and stuff like you can't do that as comfortably uh, on any other map uh, or, or uh, you know, on this map as you as you can versus any other map because because of the the, the collision on the tiles and, and how thick it is. Uh, so so yeah, she. I don't know, I mean, I can't really even bitch too much or complain too much or talk shit that much because she she did fine. Obviously, she played really really safe. She didn't do anything crazy. There wasn't really much crazy stuff for her to do, uh, given given just how the 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 kills just landed in front of her face. Yeah, I mean, I again, I I think the second that basement hook came in, like twenty seconds yeah. of the match, I think it was basically GG. Like I didn't I didn't want to like be that guy to be like ah game's <laughs> over, no point uh, anymore. But I mean, uh, I I could feel it basically as soon as I came in. I was like, there's very little chance of anything coming back here. So hey, I mean, well played overall from Freedom. That was uh very very good. So they're gonna be moving on, and Monarchy will be heading into the losers bracket to uh, try to fight their way back. Not bad. Not bad. I like it. I like it.
True. And good news, Ralph. We have two more Hunters games still coming Thank up today. Thank God. Two Please, more. somebody save me from this this nightmare of add-ons. <laughs> someone please. Someone will run Shiny Pin. Don't worry. Oh, so, someone her. will do it. I play believe. the game, friend. Get rid of your M1 <laughs> button. Throw the hatchets. Outplay them. Oh, man. Lord God. Yep. So there's uh, that's going to be freedom moving on. And uh, what do we what do we have next in the schedule? Looks like the next up is going to be Cookies versus Master is going to be the next match. I'll do that updated the second I switch to it. That was so nice. Um, so this will be the, uh, so this should be interesting. Cookies was uh, one of the teams that actually participated in the last tournament, so you guys might recognize him. Um, we had some really really good games from them. They they actually had a pretty far push. Uh, I remember I remember Jazzy. I think Jazzy was their killer that played really really well in that tournament. And it was really really fun to watch. So yep. I'm excited to see what kind of stuff we can see. Master is a new team coming in that I'm I'm so unfamiliar with, but you know I'm still excited to see exactly what you know we're gonna see out of them. Uh, as far as killer selections, we have uh, Cookies picked Oni, which is nice. Oni versus Billy. Master picked yeah. Billy. So that's gonna be. So, so, so some people compare Billy and Oni often because, like, you know, like they, they kind of have like similar powers, whether they're like mobility and one shot downs. So that's going to be kind of interesting, right? We're like, we're going to two vaguely similar killers go, uh, uh, going against each other. You also said that Oni's played on Cool Tower, Cool right? Tower. Yep, that's correct. Yeah, that's so that's interesting. And Billy was played on, uh, oh shit, we just saw a Billy game. What was he played on? Shelter, again? Shelter Woods. Shelter Woods. Yeah. You're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, huh, that's kind of interesting. Um, what's, which team is the, is the higher seed here? Is it, is it cookies? It is cookies, I believe. So cookies will be surviving first. Master will be playing. Yeah. Uh, okay. they, they pick Billy, right? Yeah. Billy first. Okay. So yeah, I, 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 I suppose our Billy game will be coming in first. Cool, man. I mean, I feel like we kind of already know what to expect with Billy. We've already seen a game with them earlier. We, we kind of saw what people do. I feel like I would be pretty surprised if they did anything else. It feels like pretty much the best thing to do with Billy is slap on like low pro chains, maybe slap on, uh, you know, like doom engravings and, you know, go ham. Yeah. So I'm really curious to see if they just do that again. I imagine they will. I don't see them doing anything else, really. I'm um, interested to see how these Oni games go, especially in comparison to like the ones we saw in the first tournament where these Onis were just getting yep. free hits, getting their power, and just the cuckening would begin every single time. Yeah. I want to see these people actually not give free hits and make the Oni work for it. And, and get more into a, of an intense like pressured situation rather than just getting his power getting free downs and being able to do whatever the hell he wants to do yep agreed also shout out to swish who added the seeds to the teams in the screen like i said just like a half an hour ago it's already in See, there dude look at swish bro this is what happens when you wake up on time you're prepared <laughs> you do your job you you, you know you like, yeah that's, you're, imagine you're, being you're, organized your hair that's is crazy. already blow drying before you know okay listen <laughs> before your schedule like time. clearly i'm just late in <laughs> life brothers i got my motherfucking christmas tree still up <laughs> what do you all want from me wait I'm do you just, actually the, this is the land before time, friends. Oh, the, man. What do you mean, do you actually? I got the <laughs> Amish magic fireplace still up. Are you serious? I mean, Santa is not leaving my room. To be fair, I, I'm probably if you're, if you're even getting a Christmas tree at all, and I'm not doing that. That's too much work for me, dude. Fuck that. <laughs> I, I have to. It makes me happy. It, 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 like, my room is Christmas, like my heart and my soul so yeah true you, you you're one of those weirdos that like loves christmas music I weirdos remember. yeah i'm sorry yeah, listen, dude it's I've, weird i've heard your horror story I, it, it's extremely unfortunate you didn't get to experience the magic of christmas yeah as much as a lot of us did that sucks that that hurts my soul it actually truly hurts my soul <laughs> imagine I, imagine having any reason to not feel good about christmas i don't even care about the holidays the time of the year the music the lights i can't See, I is feel it, like is... I feel like even if I did have good Christmas experiences, I'd probably still hate Christmas music. I don't know. <laughs> what the mean. Like you go into the okay. stores and shit, and like you're just like you're just vibing, and you're like minding your own business, and it just and, constantly. And Tofu, Tofu's running the uh, the velocity add-ons of hate IRL. <laughs> That's crazy. His hate just comes really fast at you. Christmas, fuck you. Happiness, to hell with you. Jolly cheer, I can't with you. I absolutely cannot. I, I don't know, man. I'd be willing to bet if we if we took a poll in chat. I bet most people would hate Christmas music. I'm I'm just gonna say it. I, I don't. Uh, well, I, I don't. I don't expect anybody that, uh, uh, to associate with this tournament to pick anything good because these fuckers can't even pick the proper add-ons, bro. <laughs> I have no faith in anybody whatsoever. So, yep. You know what? Fair. Honestly, fair enough. All right, we're getting into the uh, we're getting into game. We're trying to get everyone in here. Uh, bu 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 I think we should be good. We're just getting the teams in, so we are, so we are gonna have the uh, the 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 Billy game first. Um, man, 
How do you how, uh, how do you think this is gonna go? I don't know anything about this team, Master. I don't know anything about him. Like obviously we saw Cookies yeah. last time. I'm a bit familiar with Jazzy and 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 you know like their killer gameplay, but. Yeah, they are. I, I, I recognize a couple. I'm not too familiar, but I recognize a couple of their players' names. Uh, I believe they're a European team. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to go. I'm not too familiar with them, but I know they've played in uh, tournaments before. So, you know, they do have some experience. I would expect this one. I, I believe this is the six versus eleven seed, so we're having you know the kind of the seeding get a little bit closer. Yeah. So theoretically, should make for some more competitive or closer matches. Um, but yeah, I'm curious, uh, curious to see if these guys will be able to kind of keep the, the early game pressure away from the Billy and be able to kind of loop him and force him to get a lot of his pressure in end game. Yeah, I mean, dude, we don't want to see the fucking start that we had earlier because that was, yeah. dude, that game earlier with, 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 with the killer from trauma was ridiculous, dude. Like they, it just like immediately getting it down, man. I feel like any game where that happens with like the immediate down, it's just that that just never ends ends well. I mean, that's how that last Hunters game went too. So hopefully these guys can you know be a little bit safer, play a little bit safer, like maybe you know make a little bit less positional mistakes, and we can see someone actually like hardcore punish and get the good early game that they need. But I don't know. I don't know. Is that, is that who we're seeing versus Billy? Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. Okay. 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 I just make sure. Yep. Versus Billy. So. Interesting. Still interesting that again, I still, I, I, I think these, you know, actually, I'll, I'll say, I'll say for these guys, it kind of makes more sense to me that they picked the killers that they picked. I was gonna, I was gonna talk about how still no one's picking high tier killers, but I think that actually makes sense in this one. Like the, these guys are both kind of like, kind of like Justin said, they're both in like the middle of the pack as far as seating goes. It is mm -hmm. six versus eleven seating, so like hypothetically, like if we're, if we're gonna say seating in terms of like how close matches are, this should be one of the closer matches compared to the others. Um, which kind of makes sense that they'd probably want to play someone like around the middle of the pack. But honestly, then again, maybe yeah. that would be the games that you would want to pick somebody good because that might be the difference makers, right? Like these might be the games that they need to win. So we will see. True. Also, hold on. I actually want to take a look at the bracket real quick. Like, did they, if these guys win, do they play any of the people that we just saw? It looks uh, like... No, no yeah, we'll have no. to wait yeah, until it's... next week to find out who everyone's playing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I think the very last match of the day today will maybe determine... Oh, yeah, that's... The... Yep, yep. Yeah, yep, because right. because we're going to see Deity versus uh, versus Odyssey, right? Which will then... Whoever wins that will, will, will go up against Trauma in the next round. So we'll, we'll at least be able to figure that out. But yeah, this is more like establishing the first... Uh, the, the first team in, in each of the uh, in each of the bracket next time too. We'll also get one of the loser games brackets as well. I'm re I'm really curious to see because a lot of these teams have been really exciting to watch. So I, to me, I don't know. May maybe I'm just a, maybe I'm just a terminator this way, but I I get really excited like seeing teams pop the fuck off and then being like, oh, that team that popped the fuck off earlier is going against this other team that popped the fuck off. Like yeah. I can't fucking wait for that shit. You know what I mean? Like that that gets me excited as like a as like a turbo nerd video game enjoyer, dude. That shit gets me so excited. So. I really, I, I, hopefully in the, in the, in the DED versus Odyssey game, hopefully someone really pops the fuck off. That way I can get super excited for seeing them play against Trauma because Trauma looked really good. They looked really, really good in their matches. So we will see. Almost ready. Everybody's here, you know, just checking their stuff, making a lift, checking it twice. <laughs> <laughs> no more Christmas references, man, please. Oh. <laughs> Uh, where I well, and now we're just not ready at all. Yeah, the, the whole lobby died. I don't know what the hell just happened. That was weird. Well, we will see. All right, well, you know, while we have this downtime, I might as well pull up the uh, the screens to give us more information about what's going on so you guys can maybe understand the scoring and everything True. that's going on. Um, yeah, here's 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 the whole screen. We get uh, three points for first hook state, two points for every second hook state, and two points for a death. So it's more valuable to hook somebody for the first time as opposed to like hooking them for like the second or third time which is a very I don't, I don't think we had that last time did we i think that's like a newer way to score than last time i'm pretty sure our, in our first tournament we didn't have it that is newer. i really like that though. yeah it promotes it promote it, it kind of like it kind of promotes not just camping and it, it does it rewards you for actually like going around getting everybody rather than just get one confirming it all the time like obviously it's still a good thing to do just because you're confirming uh points but i like it about it yeah yeah it's not it's it, obviously like i i think getting someone out of the game is still going to be super valuable but it at least gives like at least some of an incentive to not do that you know what i mean or at least gives some of an incentive to to reward you if you if you do like split pressure you know what i mean which is which is yeah. really, really nice 
Um, for Survivor, you also get two points per gen completed. And then uh, you also get points for escape, depending on how many hook states you had left. So, like, for instance, if you're on death hook and you escape, you get one point. If you've never been hooked and you escape, you get three points. So that's probably going to come into play a few times. Again, these games we've had so far have been, like, very massive seeding differentials. So, like, the games have been kind of blowouts. But uh, as we get into, like, the closer games, you guys will probably, like, that, that, that rule in particular, that scoring thing in particular will probably become really important where like if a killer can secure a kill he'll probably want to go after somebody who hasn't been hooked as opposed to somebody who has been hooked because you know obviously it's more points and like you know they they get less points if someone escapes that that, that that's on death hook so that's kind of how the scoring works it, it, it gets live updated as the match goes on um i'm gonna say this again i'm, I'm gonna keep saying this and being annoying if you guys want to donate to the prize pool you guys can donate to the stream uh, using any of the donate buttons below or using exclamation point donate in chat any donations that come in during the tournament's lifetime will get added to the prize pool there's currently fifteen hundred dollars raised at the moment for the prize pool and anything that you guys want to chip in will also get added because you know obviously these players are you know all coming through again i said this before so, uh, but like some of these guys are from russia and stuff and they're staying up until ungodly hours of the night to play and you know they're putting on a good show for us so feel free to you know or feel free not to you know i'm not you, you can also watch for free and there's nothing wrong with that but the options there and uh yeah i don't know what's happening by the way with like the lobby because i've just been kind of chilling <laughs> no one's yeah, invited me to another they, game yeah i think someone probably just crashed or the entire master restarted their game okay well okay okay that works they're all they're all just coming back that works for me uh, Ralph, you're muted, by the way. I see your mouth moving, but I'm not hey, hearing you. You know, it happens. It happens. <laughs> it happens. Hey, what's yeah. going on? Welcome back. Welcome back. Are there, uh, you know, I actually, I actually have a question that I, I, I actually don't know the answer to, and I feel like I should. Um, how, how are the ban system as far as items go? Like, are, are, are items banned against, like, are there some globally banned items? Are they, are they all banned all the time? Are some killers, like, do some killers have certain items? I think I saw someone had a flashlight earlier in one of the matches. Yeah, um, so it kind of, it kind of follows the same general balancing kind of pattern where less items are allowed versus the weaker killers and more items are allowed versus stronger killers. So, uh. For, for the majority of weaker killers, they're allowed a firecracker and an uncommon flashlight with uncommon add-ons up to that. Um, so that's what you're going to see in the majority of matches where the killers aren't like nurse, etc. Um, or, you know, I'm pretty sure I'd be shocked. I'm looking through the rules now just to confirm. But if there's all if there's ever a, uh, a, a killer where items like literally just make them so much weaker, like hag. You don't want a flashlight versus yeah. her or something um that'll be banned versus them kind of depends on the killer but in general for the majority of killers you're gonna see one uncommon flashlight and one firecracker yeah yeah that, okay that, that definitely makes sense i imagine things like uh are, are, is there any items that's globally banned like are med kits globally banned or are they allowed against no they, they're yeah they're allowed versus the stronger killers so you'll okay. see that versus like you know nurse blight spirit our, our artist is allowed a med kit I, we, I was just while we have some time, I was actually saying this and I'm not going to give the teams too much, uh, too much info now so that they, they can't prepare for it in case we see an artist, but flashlight can be particularly good versus artist if, you know, they've been paying attention. So it's interesting that it's allowed versus her. I personally think it's kind of like hag where her power is diminished a little bit. Yeah. If the survivors can use it. So, um, We'll see, you know, hopefully we get an artist match and we can see that kind of counterplay. I really want to see her. I Same. really want to see, see, see her play in, in, in this setting. I think that'd be super interesting. Uh, again, yeah. there's 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 there, there's another tournament that people have been referring back to a lot. That tournament that I think Wispy held, where there was like any, where, where there yeah. was like everything allowed. And I know I went back and I like watched that that tournament just to like see everything. And I know Nightlight, who was the killer for Jinx. I mean, it was a killer for Jinx. Played artist in that tournament, so. Yeah. To me, that that tells me that Nightlight is confident in like artist play take, as far as uh, yeah, interesting. He takes yeah. a lot of pride in his artist. I'll say that. I'm pretty sure his Discord status has been the artist for like weeks now. Ooh. That's exciting. <laughs> that makes <laughs> me excited. Pop off. I, yeah, I, it sounds like we might be seeing that. Yeah, I want to. I want to see that before the tournament ends. Really badly. Like really, really badly. So that's really cool. Hopefully, hopefully that comes through. But I also agree that flashlights like. For instance, like I feel like if they if survivors play the same way they do against like twins and hag, you yeah. know, which I imagine they would, uh, that feels like how would you really do anything against that, right? Like well, you, yeah. I mean, 
I, I don't know. It's, it, you kind of have to pick, right? It's like, do you want to see the interesting survivor counterplay where they're using these items to make plays, or do you want to see a little bit more killer, you know, favoritism or balance where their power isn't being directly countered by one person designated, to, you know, to go reset or like, you know, heal someone or use a flashlight to counter their power? Yeah. I think, I think, I, I think I'd be, I'd be okay with like allowing flashlights against her, to be honest. Uh, I just feel she, like she's at least not like hag where it's such a commitment to play something like that down. So it makes it even more like it hurts your time even more. Like she gets to play some pretty freely, uh, can place more than one, like right after another, if she needs to. And then also just where you're so free with like placing them because you're, you're able to do it as you move around without being punished that much. Yeah. Uh, adds into the thought of where you're placing it. And then even if they are like, even if it's not the person you're chasing, even if they are like coming around, you know, purposely getting rid of your stuff, it's at least somebody else is not on a gen as well. And it's not like you have to place all three and just get bodied immediately, but. Yep. We're in game. We're, we're in game now. So I, I have more to say about ours too, but I'm going to save it because yeah, I, I yeah, wanna, yeah. I'm going to focus on the Billy gameplay now. Man, I could probably talk about artists fucking forever though. Honestly, I'm, I really hope that we end up seeing her. Dude, a super Ooh. fast find. The add-ons that we expected as well. Oh, uh, uh you nice know, collision. Some pallets are stronger than others, friends. Some pallets are stronger than others. <laughs> pallets made a fucking steal right there, dude. He got the weird hitbox where he got too close. She gets the window no, vault. One. Uh, bamboozles in, so that pallet's not blocked. We talked about this earlier. That makes these tiles significantly less strong. I imagine I she saw you. that moonwalk. He wasn't very she subtle about to, it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Ooh, we can maybe go for a curve here. The firecracker comes in. Walker play was really good. He's gonna block the pallet though. Yep. She can use the locker again. She's dead here. She's dead. And this is... That is why you throw pallets against Billy earlier than later, right yeah. there. Yeah, I that showed the value of bamboozle as well. Yep. I I, st I honestly still think that was a pretty pretty big fuck up from her part. I think she could have got away with that still. She should have like known that he was gonna block that pallet. I think it's. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to say it's an obvious play, but all, but then again, like in the heat of the moment, sometimes it's hard to like make split second decisions like that, right? Like I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that I'm a perfect player either, but. Like, I feel Especially like it should be, yeah, it should be a pretty obvious play for a killer to make is to immediately body block that pallet. So she, I think she could have ran around the other side and maybe like gotten around. She could have even looped, like ran past him and looped like the short side around the pallet and gotten back to it if she wanted to. But I, I, I could honestly kind of see why where she might have questioned it because he, he, he actually committed with that moonwalk too. But I thought it was pretty obvious that she saw it. So I feel like maybe she was like, okay, well, I don't know why I did that. So what's going to be, but uh, you know, it's just, you know, yeah. thinking in general. Yeah, that's true. Well, Again, I though, mean, just I mean, so much early pressure, like a down on and a hook on five gens is just such a good start for Billy. And yeah, that's they're going to find out, I assume, within a few seconds here. I would hope that a gen's going to pop soon. Okay, so they know now that they're not running deadlock, which is in a little bit of their favor, but still, like this is look at what he's doing. He can just secure yeah. at least struggle on this killer or on this hook survivor, excuse me, and, and then knows he, later that on death hook. And he gets all this information because he's in the middle of the map. And he gets to just look around, see scratch marks, see them moving, see, yep. see what guns are on it. It's like such such good information. Damn, he would have committed to that shit. Oh lord. Yep. He secures. He secures a struggle. There's only really one gen done right now, so he can now move around and get more. He's gonna go for a curve here. Oh, That's oh. a shame because even if he would have got that curve, he probably would have. Uh. uh how, how do we? See. How do we proceed Let's, with this? We're gonna have to see what. Uh, what staff decides here? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think they're just gonna, gonna. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're not sure if they're gonna keep playing now, it, but they'll they'll look at it and see what if it was an unintentional crash or what, in case we need to restart or something. Hmm. Well, I mean, for now, I guess we'll just keep going and playing. I mean, they're they're at T walls, which honestly, T walls is not a terrible spot against Billy. Believe it or not, like you can you, a lot of times force them ones, which is not too bad. Um, yes. Not throwing the pallet, kind of risky. If he got that curve correctly, he could have maybe got a hit, but didn't quite get it right, so he ends up being safe. It would have been uh, very, very close. I don't know if he would have gotten it, but it would have been close as hell. Honestly, a huge shame the DC came in because I feel like this was a really nice reset. Like, honestly, like, from yeah. the survivor point of view, this was a really, really good reset. They got the guy off the hook. They healed him. Uh, the, 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 Dave get a, uh, the Dave did a really good job of not getting chainsawed and buying time. I mean, the, the Billy literally had to leave Chase because he was, you know, basically doing so well. Oh, uh, it looks like we are resetting yep. now. It's like the opted for a restart with a minus two point penalty for the uh, survivors. And I believe it was a not, uh, no fault restart, but because, you know, that can sometimes be abused, you actually have to at least 
apply some sort of penalty because, you know, someone could just pull the plug and be like, oops, my net crashed if they got off to a bad start. Yeah, yeah. From what I from what I know of Jazzy, from what I've seen of them, they seem like a really wholesome person. I don't think yeah. they would abuse this kind of thing at all, but it, it does make sense, right? Like, if you did allow it to just do, like, no penalty at all, then people could be like, oops, my game crashed. Oopsie. Yeah. You know, like... You, you can't you definitely yeah it makes sense so i'm sure they'll happily do the, two, the uh, two point penalty honestly like at the end of the day it honestly isn't even that bad for them anyway because that was a really rough start for them as a survivor yeah. team so it, they might even do better with the two point penalty in the next game possibly depending on how it goes so it's really unfortunate but hey what are you gonna do we'll see if we can boot back up and i'm not too mad we could just get to see more God true bless. true exactly we, we, we had to see more games i ain't mad i ain't mad about it at all but now we gotta wait. We gotta wait. We gotta go back to waiting. We gotta chill. Hey, you know what we can do now? We can continue our artist discussion, huh? <laughs> True. We can keep talking about artists. Okay, here's my thing. If you only allow one flashlight against artist, then that makes it kind of interesting, right? Because if the person that has a flashlight is harassing you and chase, you can just turn and chase them, and then yeah, nobody exactly. else can help them, right? Yeah. Because like, because like the thing about like, 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 like hag or even like twins is that you don't need an item to like harass the person. You could just like you you use your like presence, whereas. With artists, you kind of like you can maybe use your presence as artists. Like you could run into the bird and get inflicted, but then she could just immediately turn and get a health state off you because exactly. she's like she like she she she, she doesn't go into cooldown from that. Like you get you get swarmed and she can immediately set it like like you know more birds to hit you. So what what map is uh, artist played on? Rancid Abattoir. Ooh, oh, that's interesting. interesting. And I, honestly, I, so I uh, my my perspective is that I think the reason why. In my opinion, it's it's better to err on the side of safety or whatever less uh, less aggressive builds pot or potential against her is because she's so new and we just haven't seen her right. True. She's been played maybe like once or twice in a tournament ever, and we don't know truly how strong and creative survivors are gonna get. Like it makes sense versus nurse, right? We commonly see like a survivor harassing a nurse while she's trying to blink around the map. If you don't know, if, if you can burn a nurse out of her. Charge bl or her blink charging uh, if you shine a flashlight on her enough, and it makes for interesting counterplay. But she's also the best killer in the game, so yeah. we know that like it should be allowed to to do that, right? We don't know how artist is gonna compete against you know teams that are you would hope playing uh, hope be playing efficiently, and we don't know how it's gonna impact her as much. But that being said, you know it 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 should be a similar kind of survivor counterplay style where they have someone harassing her with the flashlight you know disrupting her birds or whatever it may yeah. be yeah mm. man I, I, it's funny because we don't even have an artist game lineup today but i'm just like i'm so intrigued like i'm so mesmerized by the True. idea of seeing an artist that like i that's like the main thing i'm like focusing on discussing right now even though we're not even seeing it today it's but man i, I, I just realized pin, pinhead's not even in the pool at all yeah he's no. not is he that's interesting actually. No. yeah a little different he's yeah he's not a little different i guess he kind of got swapped for for her, I, I think everyone else. I mean, Hag wasn't in the last one, of, as far as I recall. Um, I think, but I, th I thought Hag was in the last one, but just no one picked her. I thought it could. I'm not sure. I didn't think, I think she, maybe, she was. Maybe, yeah, maybe she just wasn't picked and we forgot about her. But I think everyone <laughs> else, other than artists being swapped for Pinhead, is the same. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, it all looks to be pretty much the same. I'm I'm actually. I hope more people pick Hag because I. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be really petty of me and i'm sorry but i feel like there's this common misconception that hag is like this god tier killer and i really just want to see like hag in comp settings and i want to see like her perform the way that i think she'll perform because i don't think she's a god tier killer i really don't i think she's pretty easily countered by like good teams and i mean i, I think we saw that earlier i mean i fucking jinx played phenomenal i mean obviously that was like some mismatch seating but still i i, I want to see more hag in comp play because there is like a lot of uh there's a lot of debate about like her like strength as far as like you know how powerful yeah. she is so i would love to see like multiple matches of like sample size to see exactly how she performs you know i agree because i want to i want to argue with people i want to i want to i want to point at people and say told you so if i happen to be right you know maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong but in the, in the chance that i'm right i want to point at people and tell them i told you so so you know maybe i'm like petty that. maybe i'm petty but i want to see it you know we'll see hopefully hopefully we'll see more Although honestly, with the with the killers in the pool, I imagine they might go with someone else. There's definitely a lot of yeah, good killers yeah. to choose from. I don't from. think we'll be seeing. I we're. I mean, maybe we. Maybe somebody's got like some secret hag nonsense, and we're gonna see her. You know, in the, in the later rounds. But... Ooh, he already saw two people right off spawn. Jeez. Really, really good start again. At least as far as scouting goes. 
three people he knows the location on. Now. Four people. He knows where everyone Four is right now. Knows everybody. Yeah, that's really, really good. I mean, what he can actually do with it. Interesting that he chased the person to the jungle gym. Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, he does have bamboozles, so I guess it does make it not as bad. Same survivor, too. Same survivor that the chase started with last time. So we'll see if uh, they get a chance to redeem themselves. The firecracker I comes love in. Firecrackers. I love I like allowing that. I absolutely love it. I think he thought that he was going to juke that curve in a way that he didn't. He's going to leave that tile, though. Chase him off the gen. See, this is already a little bit of a better start. These guys do have pretty good tiles. So these are, these, but both of these maze tiles are jungle gyms. Long wall jungle gyms, I think, too. Or was the other one a short wall? They're both, they're, yeah, I they're, think it's one long wall and one... Or no, two long no, walls. Yeah, two, two, two long walls, on the yeah. Other side, yeah. Yeah, so two long wall jungle gyms is a really, really good map setup. Probably one of the best you could ask for. Bamboozle Bamboo does help them a lot, but... Still a strong setup. They also have they also have Shaq here. They have lockers to work with. They have a lot to work with here. Ooh. She decides to just corner up. It's kind of a risky play. If you would have predicted it, you could have got it down, but it ended up working out. But it was God Palette to get a little bit more time. And this is good. This is a lot better of a start than they had before the reset here. Like buying time. He takes the M1 hit just to get guaranteed damage. And there's gonna be some gens knocked out soon. They still have a good bit of pals to work with. Oh, yeah, that was a hard thing to react to. I mean, I, I know, like it's just it he's gonna go for a low pro chain play here for sure. He can curve arounds. Ooh. Oh, the prediction though, and hiding Jeez. behind the locker was so good, really M1. good for Jazzy. But then, yeah, the M1 comes in. That was still a lot of like time saved. Though. That was very, very good on them, especially in comparison to that last round. And yeah, it was very good. Yep, agreed. I, I think I, I still think it could have, it could have went a little bit better. But the Billy did play that really, really well. He did, a, he did a really good job of like zoning while also setting up his chainsaws. Going like he basically forced that juke because of low pro chains, which then put them in a bad position where he can get the down. So, yeah, I mean, honestly, I think the survivor played that about as, as good as they could. But the Billy just also played it really well. Um, they got a gen done, and a lot more gens have progress. Again, no, no, no deadlock just like before. So all these gens that are worked on are still. He, he did actually, you know, he did hook them right in between the two gens that are worked on. So that's actually really fucking good. He can basically patrol these gens while patrolling her. And Oop. now there's like, uh, it's tough. Like all the, all the, all the, all the like important objectives are right in one spot right now. So yeah. they have to kind of split big, up and do other stuff now. Yeah. Big mistake by the gen there to kind of run where the gens are being progressed. Cause as you can see, this gen right next to the hook, that's not getting touched. It's way too risky. Yeah. Yeah. So like but, now, okay. There you go. They, yeah, they, they, they got the one close gen, though, which is nice. But yeah, that one gen behind them, all that progress on the gen is basically like void now because it, it's almost impossible to work on. It's just free regression that you can get while also keeping an eye on this hook. Um, killer's really, or Survivor's really close to struggle. He's gonna, okay, he doesn't struggle. And they get the low pro hit. Dude's just gonna eat it and run away, which is probably smart, right? Like he probably knows he can't, he can't avoid it, but he just wants to get some distance, which is smart. I wonder if they're, uh, one of them is actually going to come like try and save now. If they're just going to go ahead and commit to the gens. No, I imagine they'll probably come in for the for the unhook soon. He's going to looks like he's going to hard commit to this Lori. It seems like this has been the strategy that most killers go with: is forcing struggle and then committing to others yeah. for the most part. Um, he's going to bamboozle the T wall, which leaves just the L wall, which is the easier wall to play. And we'll see what he does here. Like it's just a 50-50 mind game essentially. Oh well, he held W and it didn't work. So unlucky. He's gonna try to. Well, oh, well, bloodlust. Uh, yeah, he, yeah he, he has this bloodlust. So there's there's another down. But the unhook did come in. So that was only two health states, uh, for what like three gens. And that gen that they that they unhooked by was probably worked on. So it's probably close. I'm gonna do a quick look. Yeah, it's about to get done. Um, the, and then the other gens like at 75. percent So they're close. They're very very close. Uh, we'll see if he can find the gen that David's on. I couldn't even tell which one it was. Oh, he did. That was actually a really, I don't know if that was luck or if that was game sense, but he found the exact gen that was being worked on. If you would have went to, if you would have went to the other gens, they, he would have got that done. So that was actually really good. Of him. I can but imagine now, it being game sense though. Where yeah. It was the furthest gen, especially after getting that performed game between those two gens, I had to. Yeah, yeah, true. It, it had to be one of these two down here, obviously. It was like a 50-50, yeah. but... But even now, like this is this is rough, right? If he chases this guy, this zoning is really good. This zoning is really scary. He's got to watch. He can curve around this. There's so many things he could do. Yeah, yeah excellent he... job at being patient there. That's what a lot of yep. killers need to focus on is being patient with your power, because 
Usually survivors will freak out like that if they see a scary chainsaw coming after them. I mean, do you have to though, right? As a survivor, it's like at any point he can make a move. At any point he can chainsaw after you. He can go for a curve. Like even right there, like he he like, 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 like the people who might not be as experienced, they, they might be like, why the fuck did that David just stand in the corner? But like he was trying to avoid the curve because he thought he was gonna curve around that corner. Because yep. if you don't stand in that corner, then he does curve around the corner. Then bam, you're down, right? So it's just it's kind of like a 50-50 coin flip where you have to guess correctly. And the more patient you are as killer, the more 50-50s that the survivors have to go through. Through, which gives you more opportunities to win the 50 50 so yeah i mean that's really really good patience that's super and super good and look who he's chasing now this is the one who went to struggle right the lori she was the first one hooked actually or no was it, it was jazzy it was jazzy that was, that was, was on that okay yeah. well so he's gonna so now he's gonna have to do the balancing act and they don't know it yet because i think she went down before the last gen popped but they will find out soon he yep. needs to go try to find the neo who hasn't been hooked to get the maximum amount of value out of you know the survivor that he hopes to kill at the end of the match yep. which yeah which he, found yeah, he just found her yeah like if you guys can see he, he he saw david and he was like nope and then he found nia so his no way oh, out already no. popped he has three sacks dude that keeps happening to this poor guy he has three sacks and no way out so it's 48 seconds added to the gens or to the gens to the, to, to the gates which is nice oh the live Ooh, kicks in live. that was actually a really good prediction but live kicked in and he didn't get the down i wouldn't be surprised if he just hard commits to this though he just has to get this down Jazzy coming in. And you can see hit. it's the survivor who's dead on hook, the least amount of points yeah. for the killer, right? To yeah. Come take, take the aggro. It, that, that hit also reveals no end, so yep. now they know how dire the situation is. There's no he's power gonna here. This, though. Yeah, he's yeah. going to get this. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, so. yeah, if, he, if he's able to confirm, he needs to just confirm this. It's not worth going for the Jane at this point because she's only worth one point. Yep, I agree. He should probably hook but, far away from. Well. There goes no Yeah, I mean, if he hooks next to the slug before she gets picked up, this could actually yeah. turn into a pretty pretty big result. Yeah, yeah, this could actually be huge, yeah. He's trying to find her. I think he heard her. I think I heard her behind the rock, so I think he knows that she's there. Um, no has gone now, but still, this is such a tough situation. Uh, Jazzy's going to have to recover and then also crawl away. I just want to get a quick look. Currently crawling away and trying to make it to a teammate who's nearby at a single pallet. So we gotta wait to see what happens there. So yeah, and not yeah. Like it's, not it's for right the survivors there. too. Like you, you're kind of in this weird position, right? Because the gates aren't open yet, and if you, this close one definitely isn't opened, that's a long way to go to get a fresh uh, survivor on the first first stuck out. So yeah, I think they're just gonna pick up the yeah. slug and run away. Yeah, I think I think they'll just leave. I think they'll just leave now. I'd imagine he saw two people running away. If he would have saw the third, he could have left. So yep. really, so really good of the survivors to make sure they don't reveal the third survivor. Um, as long as he doesn't know where the last survivor is, he can't comfortably leave this hook because he, you know, the unhook can come in at any point. Again, information so fucking important. But yeah, they're leaving. They're leaving now. So yeah, honestly, very good result though. Very very good result. That's uh, what eight hook states and a kill. So and I think result. and I think everybody was hooked at least once. So he got that first that first hook state points on on, on every survivor too. So yeah, that was really really good. That was a very solid match. Nice, well played. I mean, I, I'm honestly like, I, I don't, I don't know. If this is like, you know, supposed to be. Like, I'm, I'm not supposed to be biased, but I'm happy he had a good performance because, like, that <laughs> that like restart, like he had such a good start, and then the crash came yeah. in. Like, if he if he would have came back and then had like a really rough game, that would have felt really bad considering how bad the first the first like start was before the before the restart came in. Also, there was the negative two point penalty on cookies too that we got to keep in mind as well. So yep. technically it's kind of an even better result, right? We could almost exactly. yep. we, could, we could almost pretend that he got nine hook states essentially. So yeah, I mean, very solid game overall. We, uh, I, we're going to see a really, really good killer performance out of, uh, I'm assuming Jazzy to to match this on Oni. It seems, this seems scary for them as well because if they actually play properly against Oni, it's not gonna be, I don't think it's gonna be as easy, or I can't say as, as easy as, as it was for Billy, but it's definitely not, yeah. I think it's a, it's a lot easier to play uh, safe against Noni. Yeah, exactly. Uh, than it is ability, especially with Lopro. Yeah, if, if they if they play really disciplined in the in the in the early game and they really really play safe, then yeah, it's it's much easier than like that. Billy was doing a really good job of like using his low pro chains and zoning everything. And like again, I don't think the survivors made very like huge glaring mistakes like in chase, right? Like I guess maybe like Justin pointed out the fact that they ran to the gens maybe was a big thing, but even that's like more of a macro mistake rather than like an actual yeah. chase mistake. Yeah. Like as far as like like avoiding going down, they did pretty much everything they could correctly. It's just. Billy's zoning is so strong when you add low pro chains and the ability to curve very effectively. Like, 
uh, they, they played it pretty much perfectly. It's just hard to avoid going down when the, when the Billy really knows what they're doing. So, But again, like you said, Oni is not like that. Oni is no. not like that at all. Oni is a killer where if you know what you're doing and you play really safe, you can avoid giving him a hit for a long ass time, right? A long, long time. Um, it is on Cool Tower, which is... Uh, it, it depends on the layout, uh, the layout of Cool Tower. You get some situations where you'll get like a dead zone in the middle, in which case... Oni might be able to get some hits early, but sometimes you also get like a lot of tiles chained together. And if we get something like that, then it's going to be really fucking rough to get the start going. So we just kind of have to wait and see, I guess, how the map turns out. But yeah, this is this is going to be this this early game, like the first like maybe like minute or two of this killer game are going to be real intense. It's going to be really fucking important. Like I think that's going to make or break who wins this the, this set basically. Yeah. It, it's interesting seeing this map instead of the map that we saw uh, in the first tournament with only two. What, what was the only the F was it Ranted? Yeah, it's, it's extremely interesting. Yeah, uh, I think it. I think playing on Cold Tower for them allows them to play, uh, like makes it more reasonable for them to play safer because the map's much smaller and they don't have to. It's not there's not as much just you know openness in general. Uh, yeah, there's still a little bit. It is Cold Tower, uh, especially depending on the RNG of the tiles, but I, I think we're more likely to actually see them be able to play uh, a lot more safer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we'll see. There's there's definitely pros and cons to like the the map being changed, right? Like there's it's easier to get around without your without your mobility, obviously because it's smaller. But like you said, exactly. like the, the tiles are a lot denser and closer together, so it might be easier for the survivors to avoid dead zones. There's there's a lot of like pros and cons. Again, it just kind of boils down to how the match actually plays out. It, but uh, there's going to be a lot of RNG involved, obviously, as there always is. So we got to see how that plays as well. Um, Jazzy is the right. killer, and uh, they're in lobby now, so they're starting to set up. Yeah, very easily go either way though. I don't, yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think so. this map like determines that much for him because sure if he does well it's small and then he gets to run around with his power very very freely. But they also have the safety and security of the the middle building. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the score right now just to update everyone is twenty to fourteen in favor of Master, which was the team that is the, the team that played Billy and is now surviving. Um, I mean, the Oni's going to need a pretty good result here. And Oni's a pretty high risk, high reward killer where survivors are playing well. They can basically deny his power like all game until the last gen is popping. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're going to need basically like a 1K with pretty much everyone on death hook or like a 2K and a few hooks spread out on the other survivors that, are, that escape in order to win here. Yeah, they're going to need a really, really good result. Like, it's going to be tough. They, we're going to have to have one of those, like, totally pop-off games. Yeah. And again, that's, it's... Yeah, that's including the, the minus two-point penalty as well. So they had that working against them. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, this is interesting. We might actually see our first uh, upset as far, as far as seeds go, too, because Cookies is the is the higher-seeded team. So this is kind yeah. of interesting. We might actually have, like, our first upset of the, of, 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 of the tourney. Uh, maybe. I mean, we'll see. It, it, again, it all boils down again to, like, how the early game gets played as well, because... Again, like there have been some sloppy early games so far. I mean, this is like this is obviously the, the the very first day. It's like the early bracket. It's not always like the the super highest seeded teams, but I mean, Cookies is a pretty solid team, and Master seems to be a pretty solid team too. So, it, I think a lot of it's going to come down to really like how solid they play this early game, and if they let like if they if they even give him like one singular hit and start letting him suck orbs in the in the early game and like give him his power, it's gonna it's gonna get out of hand real quick, man. It's gonna get out of hand real real yeah. quick. And just a quick update, Swish made me, you know, look like an idiot again, but it's fine. Uh, it's actually 20 to 11. I think they just updated the score after they recalculated, so oh. even more so of a hole for the for the killer. Oof. Oof, man. Yeah, that's rough. That's rough. So after uh, a quick reminder, too, that after this game, we're going to have Odyssey versus Deity, which is going to be the last game of the day. Um, and then we're going to pick it up again next Friday. Uh, and I was going to cover some more, but, you know, we're getting a game. So we'll just, we'll, we'll come back. We'll come back. <laughs> I like it. Very, very little downtime. These guys are ready to go. You like to yeah. see it, dude. You love to sure. see it. Really quickly, while we're loading in, in terms of uh, what's allowed, no perk restrictions other than the general bouncing, no add-on restrictions for Oni. Uh, expect him to be running probably... Either Lion Fang or Akito's Crutch, which is duration or speed add-ons, purple rarity. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, you, you'll see one of those two combined with Splintered Hole, another purple add-on, which increases the amount of blood orbs dropped uh, from injured survivors. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 kind of what I expect. Um, 
you, you know what's interesting? Are, are are we gonna be playing this tournament through the balance patch that comes in? Because aren't, are. aren't they? Aren't <laughs> they? I think they're. Re, I think they're changing. Like I know they're. Yeah. I think they're changing like his ultra rare to like have bigger radius yes. and stuff. I wonder if that's gonna change up the meta. That's gonna be kind of interesting. Yeah, to we see are. how that's that goes. Something that we will have to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. So for now, it's not gonna matter, but that's gonna be really cool. Yeah, he does have Lion Fang, and I think that's the. I think that's a speed one, right? I believe that's yeah, the one. Yeah, Sakito's crutch. Yep. Yeah. So he, he, went, he opted for the the two combination of uh, speed and duration, which interesting i don't know like oni it Ooh. takes him so long to get his power at the early Ooh. game he's, he's gonna get hit here but Ooh, well, you, say that. you don't get hits because he's getting yeah. a hit did y'all oh, see the ballerina yeah. tiny dancer <laughs> movement he did at that damn palette dude Son. honestly that was yeah that was great why did she even try to loop it though that's such uh, a dangerous yeah. power to loop like like dude those those i don't know what you want to call them sea walls i call them single pallet pallet, pallet gyms yeah. is what they're referring to yeah yeah those are so dangerous dude like there's so little vision I can't believe that she actually tried to loop it. This is—I I don't know if she tried to loop it, but when the man started spinning, I don't think she knew what the hell he was going <laughs> well, to do. She, so she, therefore, she didn't either. <laughs> she should have never ran to that side to begin with. She should have just went straight to the pallet and thrown it. Yeah, true. And yeah. now, yeah, and I mean, now he has his power it's, and it's a free down too. Oh, There's no, no dead heart allowed for Sony, so Jeez. I'm not sure why she agreed with that. Yeah. Well, every single time, bro, these Onis are able to get what they want. It's not, I mean, it's, yeah. it's like it's yeah. crazy. I mean, it's I know he did insane. the he did the crazy ballerina spins and everything, but like <laughs> the survivor had plenty of chances there to get the pallet out and just run away. Yeah, like it's, it should have oh. never came to that to begin with, honestly. Yeah, oh, he's gonna break out this wall. Well, here here's where it gets intense. We'll see if we can start snowballing, right? Yeah, this is where the cuckening begins. Like how how much value can he get out of this out of this power is what's is what's gonna matter here, right? Like he's oh god, there's gonna be a lot of pallets to break. He goes for a Ooh. crazy flick and doesn't get it. They do pop a gen. They're gonna go for the unhook, but he's here. They don't. Not like this. Smarter of them to not, not break like the pallet. This. If he breaks the pallet, he probably maybe gets the unhook or maybe gets away. Ah. Oh, that's gonna be scary. They don't get the unhook though. It's okay. He's gonna break it. You know, he's actually getting low on power. He needs to get it down soon. Otherwise, they're gonna be in trouble. Nah. Oh, oh no, dude. Oh no. I mean, they still can't go save. They, he bodies him. This is risky. Oh, oh, oh no! My God. No, dude, no! He didn't get any value. But, yeah, but that survivor did go struggle, so at least yeah. he had that. And, and, and on top of that, if he sticks on that survivor after they, after they get unhooked, he'll continue to drop orbs yeah. too. So it's not like he can still get his power back regardless. It's not like they can deny his Son. power forever. <laughs> <laughs> but they keep trying to loop single pallets. What are they doing? Why do they keep oh. trying to loop these fucking seawalls, man? I'm losing my mind. Oh God my damn. God. I mean, maybe at this point they, they're like they're like they're like whatever. He'll get his power back anyway because you know the Meg's injured. So fuck it. But True. Lord, dude, I'm losing it. I'm losing my goddamn mind here. He's gonna, he's gonna stick on the Meg. She's gonna be dropping pallets. He's gonna get the grab. Does she have the size to strike? We'll find out in a second. Yes. Yep. So pretty unfortunate for the Oni that he got the one person with the size to strike. But also, he still gets more orbs. There's someone working on a gen there. See, even that, like, it's, it's like you don't even want to chase it. You just want to, you just want to get your orbs. Like, you just want to get your orbs. You know what I mean? I guess he will opt to chase it. Actually, there will be orbs around the map though, because uh, also Nancy's injured. Well, yeah, Nancy and Meg are both injured, so like they're both dropping orbs around the map. So he'll have orbs to get eventually, right? So he doesn't really, he doesn't really need to direly go after them right away. And there he goes. Oof. He finds the entire uh, little puddle that that Nancy left. He knows Meg's on death hook, so gonna try to probably get him out. See if we can get something going this time. Mmm, gonna throw a pallet. The survivors are doing a really good job, dude. They're doing such a good job of like buying time, not going down. If they do go down, at least using all their resources first. I mean, now they are for sure. Yeah, I mean, they should have never got here to begin with. I agree. Now they are. Yeah, um, yeah. It's kind of weird that they're doing it now and not early on, but yeah. But you know, I respect it. I probably would have gotten hit by the ballerina nonsense as well, to be honest. Yeah, Meg is dead completely now, so there's still three gens left, too, and there's blood orbs around, and Nancy's injured, and she's still bleeding. Um, I'm I'm honestly kind of surprised they didn't heal her to stop because if she would have if she would have been healed up There's a chance that they could have stopped him. They could have went back to square one here, but they didn't He has his power again They're gonna be running low on pallets, but the gens are also getting some decent progress 
uh, gonna report her after this game for that. <laughs> True. <laughs> my my dad is John Behavior, and you're done though, buddy. <laughs> oh, oh my mind games, son. Dude, th that's such a sick fucking. Because that's such a hard mind gameable palette, but that was such a good mind game yeah, right that there. That was a really hard read. Yeah. Yeah. Get some. Get some pop. That was fucking sick. He just kicked that gen with Pop Goes the Weasel right in between Deadlock. Deadlock went on it, and True. then it fa faded away. He got the kick, and then Deadlock immediately locked back on it again. It was Jeez. like the perfect little window to get the Pop Goes the Weasel value. That's fucking hilarious, dude. There was like a five-second window to get Pop, and he got it. That's sick. He gets his power again, too. That gen is, re is regressing. It's not going to regress while blocked. This is another thing that I don't know how many people know, but gens don't actually regress while they're blocked. So it, it'll be regressing once the block goes away. It's just not going to be regressing right now. Um, but he can still kind of defend it and keep an eye on it. He knows that there's a lot of progress on it. Uh, you know, we really need to like pop off here though. Like here, here soon. Like things need to happen because again, if they if they get that last gen and just get like a couple people out, it's gonna be. Oh, we heard him, Jeez. but he couldn't quite get him. Oh, he has a oh. block. He had a <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm glad he didn't like, oh. immediately leave that. Oh, she's down. Oh, Jeez. shit. Oh, shit. This could be really good. He could also get more pop value here, which is really, really good. He, he knows that there's no side to strike in play. He doesn't have to worry about that at all. I mean, I think she tapped the gen anyway, so I don't think it really matters. But no DS in play. He knows that. He gets more pop value here. There's fucking orbs everywhere. Like, literally everywhere. He's, like, literally drowning in fucking blood orbs. So he's, got, he's fine there. I, dude. Oh, oh man. Yeah, dude, I, yeah. Yeah. He's actually interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he's say, worried about Soulguard, I think maybe. I I'm pretty sure Soulguard is banned, if I'm not mistaken. So I'll it, double check, but I'm pretty sure it's banned. So I'm not sure why he did that. Yeah, maybe that is banned. I'm maybe, not sure why he didn't just hit him. Hmm, maybe they didn't know that or something. I don't know. Down. Yeah. This is this is over. This is it over, is, dude. There's not much to say. It's just wow. Like, yeah. you're just going to down this one, and then that's it. That's crazy. I can't believe that, honestly. I Is it a curse? Like, I don't understand. Dude, I, I don't understand how these people are, like, letting Oni get hits early, dude. Like, how are they How are they letting it happen, man? They, this could have been so easily been avoided by just throwing that, that single pallet, like, tile early on. And not letting... It, it, oh, man. It's, I don't it's know why they want to gamble with it. Yeah, like it's, it's not worth the gamble. It's it's all. it's really frustrating to see, but also like, I also want to say hats off to Jazzy because god damn these mind games like as a, just as a straight up M1 killer, the mind games yeah. are fucking phenomenal, dude. Like honestly, I agree. like like literally top notch. That that was some really cool. Like the the, the one at the pre thrown pallet tile was really sick. Like that one was super cool. So I mean, honestly deserved. Like like definitely deserved for cookies, but. I still just, it sucks because I feel like it was just such a, I, I want to, I, I'm going to say obvious. I think it was an obvious misplay. Like I, I in, in my opinion, I think that shouldn't be happening at this level of play, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I, I, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's any excuse for it. Like you shouldn't really be giving an Oni a hit that early on. It's just not, it's not really reasonable to do. True. But I, I guess it's just part of it. Part of the, uh, there's just a lot of overthinking it as well. Cause yeah. they, like obviously they know how the how the how they should play it in the and they they're they're aware that the Oni knows as well. So I guess it's just a lot of a lot of overthinking is what I would assume. And then plus, it's just the the, the spinning around mind game nonsense. <laughs> I can assure you that's gonna throw anybody dude. off guard because it works too. Like that's, yeah. that's literally you know that's 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 manipulation of a uh, 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 movement and just manipulating your red saint to. to make them think you're going to do one thing when you're actually doing another so it works it's just crazy it's crazy that they just would not the, the play it as safe as possible because it's literally a killer where if you give him a hit he is very much rewarded for that hit mm -hmm. outside of just getting an injured state he gets to start the cuckening and yep. he act and as we saw he started it he absolutely started it and he finished it yeah yeah yep. okay so a couple important things that we need to mention that there is going on behind the scenes so First of all, there is another, there is additional in uh, already to the DC minus two point penalty. There is another penalty because apparently the survivor team of cookies had duplicate perks uh, during their match. So it was another mm. minus two point penalty. So the score going into that game was 20 to 10 in favor of master. But even still with those penalties, <laughs> oh, that resulted in a cookies win. Uh, 4K at one gen was 28 to 8 for that particular match. So 
the final looks like it's going to be 38 to 28 in favor of cookies who was down minus four just from penalties can, just because can, of that only result can, can i ask what perk was ran double on, on i think it was cookies? detective's hunch Okay, so it wasn't like something hugely game-breaking. No. It's not like I, they well, had like... I mean, yeah, it would, probably would have given them a chance to like find Noed, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming that's or if they were running Ruin or something, maybe. Yeah, I, but, but I, I don't think it in had terms like a of what happened. Yeah, yeah, wasn't a wasn't a huge, you know, difference maker overall. Yeah, that's 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 uh -huh. that's really interesting. They <laughs> they ate like fucking four points and penalties and still just popped yeah. off and won. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude. Uh, uh, Honestly, like again, J Jazzy popped the fuck off last tournament, so it's really cool to see again this time around too. Like, I honestly thought they were done. I thought they were done after that Billy performance. I was like, dude, I don't. Like that Billy played so well, he got such a good result, and I was like, and the penalties, I was like, ugh. It was I, working against him with those pallets. He kept getting cocked. Yeah, yeah. But dude, honestly, that was a that was a really really good game. Again, I I I can't help but like I feel like I'm being hypercritical, but I can't help but just feel like it was more just the survivors mistaking though. Like again, Jazzy played phenomenal, but like I think more disciplined play there could have still got master the win. And unfortunately, I agree. unfortunately they didn't though. You know, they gave the only the hit early. He started snowballing, and that's what happens, man. I mean, that's how only plays. You give him a hit early, and that kind of shit's gonna happen. They could have had a lot easier game if they would have played it safer. But I still think they had some chances in the mid game too, uh, here and there as well. But you know, what are you gonna do? So Cookies moves on. They go on to the, uh, I guess those would officially be the quarterfinals, right? I believe. Yeah, they go on to the quarterfinals and Master gets knocked down to the uh, loser brackets. So nice. I mean, pretty, pretty good game to watch, though. I, I, had, a, I had a good yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. Yeah. It just sucks. It, I don't think you're being hypercritical either. It's just I don't I don't understand. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but but it's also a tournament. There's nerves. Um, this is like the first first matches of, of the tournament as well, so it's a, even more nerves. They're not as comfortable uh, as they as they will be going forward, most likely. So mm -hmm. I understand it too. Yeah, agreed, agreed. So uh, we're coming into our last match of the day, by the way. Which <sighs> surprising, dude. I, okay, here, here's the thing. We we were scheduled for like a five hour uh, day today, and. I think we're just slamming through this. Am I yeah, seeing this correctly? If I was any later, think... it would have been a five-hour day. <laughs> sure. Sure. I, think, I think we're coming up on three hours, and we only have one one set left, which is crazy, honestly. Like, we're actually flying through this much faster than I thought we would. Uh, so, I mean, kudos to the players for not having, like, major, for, for not having major delays. A lot of people have to remember that, like, this shit is not necessarily easy for the for, for, for the players. Like, there's a lot of restrictions to your perks and stuff, right? Like, you have to, like, again, like, even cookies, like, kind of slipped up, and they and they ran... Uh, a perk twice and got a penalty for it, right? It, I mean, it's not even like they were like trying to like get an advantage. Yeah. It was fucking detectives hunch, right? Like, they're, <laughs> it, like they was just it was just a slip up, and they just happened to like have two people with the same perk, and that's hard, right? Like to, to get four builds together, all making sure that no one has the same perks, and be, making sure that everyone has like a, a designed rule and like, and, like, and like strategizing and everything. It's not easy to do in like a quick like five minutes in between every game. So the sure. fact that these guys are getting the ball rolling and they already have like their ideas and strategies and they already have their builds ready to go beforehand is really really big and it's i mean kudos to them for actually like being like professional about it and you know being like quick because you know i i it's very appreciated i'll say that much it's very very appreciated from all of us true um it is. yeah it really is i don't it <laughs> i it sucks it sucks having like 10 20 minute downtimes between games you know true. what i mean that shit is I not agree. great especially you know it gives yeah. me time to to wake up and feel refreshed and yeah yep. it's wonderful so That's hey, oh and, Ralph! Look. Yeah, I was just about to say it, and ah. we get to end on a uh, yep. untruist mirror match, which was mutually agreed upon. These two friendly rivals, or they're not actual rivals. These guys are all friends with each other. I don't so know if it's a good thing to end on the uh, games like this because this uh, this year gets me hype. Like, this, is, this, is, <laughs> like, this is what this is my crack. Like so the, this is what I enjoy. So I don't know if because after this I'm just going to be alive and awake more than I already was. Uh, and hopefully we we see some interesting play, uh, and some interesting add-on choices. Uh, and, uh, I'm not even gonna get started. You know, Maybe some whatever. pins of the shiny variety, you no, know? No, just anything. Just some hatchets <laughs> flying, people falling over, no M1 in, just some nonsense. Um, <laughs> I I, re I respect the tournament setting and playing safe, uh, but I also know what she's capable of. And I want to see more people that actually really know what she's capable of. Not even saying anything bad about the hunter uh, player that we saw before. Clearly, they know somewhat what they're capable of because they did so well. But uh, I want to I want to see survivors that really know how to play against her as well. 
obviously it's DBD and then spawns and shit like that. Some things can just be extremely unfortunate. However, uh, I've been on, I've you know, been on the hand of playing playing hunters against the juicers, and when people actually know to play against her, bro, it's rough. It is absolutely rough. Uh, it's hard. Like she, majority of hunters is literally the you know just the mechanical skill of aiming. Uh, it's hard. It's not. It's not the easiest thing in the world. Uh, and you also just the depth of all the interesting shit you can do with uh with her hatchet and all the all the options that it gives you and how that works with with every single loop and tile and just the game in general. It's it's great. But uh, I don't know. I'm uh, I'm I'm curious. I, I like how this was this was agreed upon beforehand. Uh, they 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 wanted each other to play <laughs> play play their huntress. Uh. Just let me make sure I remind myself who who their killer players actually are uh, for these teams. I know Moody Joe is going to be right. playing for Odyssey, and I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure actually. I don't know if it's yeah. going to be Super Aaron Nova or someone else playing Huntress for DD. Yeah, for DD, it looks like there's definitely a couple options it could be, but yeah, I guess I guess see. we'll see. This is definitely an interesting game because I'm very familiar with all these players. These are all like. Yep. These are all like NA, like maybe yeah. even NA East players. Like they're definitely people that I've run into a lot over the years playing DVD and I've played with and against a lot, which makes it more interesting for me, I think, to like see players that I know competing. So definitely curious to see how this one goes, honestly. And no matter who wins, it's going to be really cool to see them uh, moving on. And these guys are going to be playing Trauma, right? Whoever wins, I believe, is what we said That's earlier. Correct. Yeah, That's so whoever, correct. Yeah. So whoever, yeah. They might, uh, they might use all their energy in this one and then they have to get ready to go play against one of the best teams next week. Or yeah. I think it's the week after, but yeah. Yeah, with how much you guys have been talking up trauma and also with how they performed, the trauma looks fucking... They look like a goddamn brick wall of a team. Like that... That looks fucking... I, I would not be one to go against them or, or, or going up against them, that's for sure. That's fucking... They look like an intimidating ass team, to be honest. But hey, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how this match goes. I mean, we got we got two hunters games, so oh, yeah, I think I this one will be fun. Of, yeah, but no, both these teams are intimidating, especially with hunters going against and playing ass. M Moody is a seasoned hunters player. She's played hunters for a hundred billion years, uh, and a, a lot of the people, like uh, all the all those survivors on 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 their team, they've played against hunters a lot. Uh, they like I, I, a lot of them I've seen in my stream. Like uh, like all these people I've played against, I know what they're capable of. I'm excited. This, yeah. This, 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 this is this, these these games could be really, really good. I, I don't like. Obviously, some things could just be unfortunate, and anything can lead to a stomp, especially with the RNG of DVD. But these people know how to work around the map. They know how to work around Huntress, and these matches should be pretty good, to be honest. Yep. 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 I'm just, dude. I'm turbo turning out, but I want to see who 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 does the loser face. So this is this is match. Uh, bu 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 five, six, right? This is match six. Loser yes. of six. Oh god, it's really small for me, but I think they go against. They go against <gasps> loser of five. <gasps> Frontier, I think, if I'm if yes. I'm seeing correctly. Yes, that's yes. correct. Yep. So yeah, so whoever I've, whoever yeah. loses this match is yeah, whoever loses this match goes up against Frontier in the losers bracket. So that's re that's really interesting. So winner goes against trauma, loser goes against Frontier. That's that's just, really really interesting to me. Just so you guys know. Uh, because of we're so ahead, DD's a little bit behind. They need like five minutes. Oh, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's totally cool. I mean, I I did mention it earlier. We're flying through this yeah, this yeah, day. We're, we're I don't want it ahead. to end. Sam, it's, it's, it's too early. What happened? Why are we so fast? <laughs> <laughs> right? I want to see more games, man. I'm, I, I'm surprised. I, I was used to the uh, like uh, the the first tournament where we had like games like for a hundred years all day. It was so uh, good. Yeah, we got six weeks. It's a marathon this time. Damn, imagine being efficient. What the hell? True. <laughs> I thought we were going to be sitting thing. here fucking, you know, just talking about nonsense for fucking 30 minutes in between every match, but we're actually like flying through. Which, hey, I mean, I'm I don't, honestly, I'm not complaining about. I also do think Maybe. that like today might have been a little bit faster because a lot of the games were kind of like blowouts, right? Like we didn't have any, oh, any yeah, like, true. we didn't have any like super like, super like close, like, you know, like hold down a strat for a long time, right? Like if you remember yeah. in the last tourney, like some of like the pinhead games were like super close. Uh, some of the twins games like took a while, you know. I, I think I think a lot of the games today were just very like blowouty. So, I think as the tournament progresses, I think in like in like in like the later weeks, we're gonna get some some longer days where the matches go on for True. quite a while longer. I think. But I mean, we'll see. I don't know. I I'm I'm, I'm already assuming nobody's gonna earn shiny pin in these games either. Uh, the the standard for most people really is actually Bushka Okaft. It's not. It's it, it works. It, it, there's a reason that people run it. Uh, 
yeah, like I said earlier, especially on on on, on Wrecker's Yard, I don't think uh, you, I don't think you necessarily get as much value uh, out of Shiny Pin, uh, and and running Babushka makes up for can help make make up for how how bad windows are and and and, and uh, just the the collision on the tiles in general because it's so thick. So we're probably not going to see Shiny Pin again. You know, it's okay. It's whatever. Uh, at least have a Christmas tree to be happy about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I still think the level of the, the level of Hunter's play and Survivor play against the Hunters I'm expecting is pretty high. That might be a bad thing. My expectations are extremely high because uh, I've talked to a lot of these players before this tournament in my stream and uh, they they know what's good. And they also are very aware that I'm about to be extremely critical and I'm not going to shut the hell up. <laughs> Yeah, I know that there's like I know there's a lot of cracked out hunters players that are like like hunters mains that play on like on like NA East, NA West. I I I wish I had someone from EU here to ask. Is it this? I wonder if it's the same. Like I feel like just in general, you run into a lot of like crazy cracked out hunters in NA, and I feel like NA. I don't want to do get into like the NA versus EU <laughs> argument thing or whatever, but I just feel like <laughs> these players definitely have a lot of experience against just like hunters mind yeah. games and stuff, right? Like they, I'm sure they they have a, like a lot of experience. I'm not saying EU players don't. I'm sure EU players do too, but. I mean, I know for a fact that these guys 100% do because even me just like fucking around in solo queue, the amount of like, you know, like the amount of like hundred streamers that play every single night exactly, as a job yeah. and fucking crack out, you know, I mean, like you're one of them, Ralph, right? Like there's a lot of yeah. them, too. Like there's a lot they, of like. I, I don't know if they have as many because obviously they have Jordy. Uh, hey, like everybody's aware of, uh, of who Jordy Rex is. He, he's like the EU Huntress, I, I'd want to say if I could be wrong, but I feel like he is the EU Huntress. Uh, but I don't know if they have as, you know, I don't know if they have as many as we do. It's we, also we, we, it's, we it's, really do have a lot. Yeah, we do have a lot, but it's honestly most likely just that we're more familiar with them because we. <laughs> I'm sure yeah, they yeah, have. Yeah. A, I'm sure they have just as much, if oh, not more, sure. that we're just not familiar with. Yeah, so sure. it's a pretty. It's, it's. I guess it's a pretty dumb thing for me to say, but I just. Nah. I, I think the point I'm trying to get at is that I know that they have a lot of hundreds experience for sure, like playing against. So I, I agree with you. Like I, I would, I would expect very little slip ups. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And I think it's all gonna come down to the. Uh, like 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 the whole strategy behind it, right? Like, is, is the hunters gonna get like a basement hook early? You know, like, are they gonna, you know? As a matter of fact, I would argue that these guys have experience against each other, even because these guys are you know, from they the do same 100%, region, right? Absolutely. Yeah, like, like that's like yeah. these. I like these people know how to play against hunters, man. They they really really do. Like, I'm my expectations are probably way too high, and I like it, it's it's, it's yeah, pretty but, gross. But, I, like, I don't like going in with expectations. That, that that way, you know, whatever does happen is just much more enjoyable. But I feel like it's extremely fucking realistic, just given uh, who these people are, and uh, we all, bro. I I I know them all specifically because I've played against basically all of them. Yeah. See, see, but like, like but, I know what's good. But but like that's my thing. And how much do you think this is gonna play into it? Because again, like Moody Joe is the killer right now. How many times do you guys think these survivors have gone against Moody Joe just in random public matches? Exactly. Like, like so, like they they probably. But, like, you can say the same thing about Moody Joe knowing how they play, too, though, right? Like, I feel like it adds, like, such another layer because they both Yo. know each other so well. So you can kind of, like, get yeah. into each other's head on how you guys are going to play. Exactly. Like, that, you might that, be, like, like, you'd be like, oh, like, I'm chasing GPU. Like, he usually does this thing. Like, he has, like, Yo. this weird quirk that he has when he when he, when he he gets chased. So let me, like, do this to counterplay it, you know? Like there's, 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 like, there's a lot of little things like that, right? Like, I know when I'm playing Killer and I'm chasing someone that I know very well, you know, there's a lot of things I know they do, right? right? Like, if I'm chasing fucking Math Man, I know that motherfucker does dumb plays that I look out for, you know? So there's a lot of, like, things like that that I think you can maybe do, and I think that, I wonder if that's gonna play a big role into this, is how well they know each other, you know? A billion yeah. percent, especially because it, like, how, like, uh, at higher level, like going, uh, playing as hunters against like higher level survivors, it's, a lot of it is like mind games. Yeah. Uh, and so when you get into that depth, as in they know what you're going to do, you know what they're going to do, and then all of that 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 entails, it gets pretty, it gets pretty nuts, and it just uh, there, it's just a lot of good like decision making and making extra hard reads, and it's really like there's you feel so pressured because you know how how like you know how well they they, they can possibly play, and you know that you, whenever you fail, especially as hunters, like. It just missing one hatch it feels so god awful it feels so god awful because, <laughs> because especially depending on the amount of effort like you actually put in and time you wasted to try and get a single hit because that's like you just need one down to get something started even if you don't hook basement you just need a single down at any point in the game basically and depending on the the rng of the spawns of the the exit gates like you just need that one down and then you get to start your stuff yeah. uh, but it's it's scary 
I like I I don't know. I don't I don't expect like a, a really quick easy first down uh, against against any of these survivors on any team whatsoever. I really really don't. If that happens, I would be extremely surprised. But it could happen. Uh, so, like just the way this game works, like it, it really really good. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm I, I want this game to start start the match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a couple of a uh, couple of interesting slash funny storylines from this matchup, and it's kind of the reason we kind of we wanted these two to make we wanted to make sure these two teams played against each other just because they're so familiar with each other, like we've kind of been saying. And I think a lot of the people in that who probably watch you guys have seen these survivors in your matches for a very long time. They've, they're all veterans, but. <laughs> Some of these guys are actually like former teammates and i don't know if you guys specifically remember but like ultra is now on odyssey and he yeah. killed for this team that's surviving is D now called deity but they were demise the team that actually won the tournament last time yeah so these guys are very familiar with each other and like you said they're, they're they've gone against each other plenty of times uh even one of the survivors for odyssey played in the tournament today for demise slash dd whatever i don't they change their name every like other week but uh <laughs> Yeah, these guys are, are very familiar with each other. It's going to be a friendly matchup, but obviously both teams, notable players on both sides and curious to see how this one goes. Yeah, same, same. I, I, I think that is interesting. It it, 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 it kind of, it's interesting to me how much like roster swapping there is in ComDB, yeah. right? Like it's, <laughs> it's, it's odd that like going into this tournament, not a single roster is the same as before. Not a single one. Like they're, like they're similar. There's definitely one, like again, like this team deity is very close to demise. Uh, Jinx is like pretty similar, right? They added Nightlight, which was who was on Demise last time. They added yeah. Nightlight to their team, who was like a very good player, so that bumped them up a lot. Um, and like they're and like a lot of like even like Cookies is like slightly different, right? Like it's there's there, there's a lot of like slight differences in in the yeah. teams, which is really really interesting, you know? Yeah, a lot of teams are on breaks right now, or um, you know, just moved on after being together for so long. So a lot of the players kind of just kind of freelancing and. You know joining one team for a specific tournament or another and obviously some changes happen along the way but you know these two are probably the most familiar with each other between any of the matchups that we're gonna see yeah yeah which makes it even more exciting for me i think so we're loading in now though we're finally we're finally getting there we're, you're gonna get you're gonna get your crack pipe ralph it's coming here it comes dude get the lighter ready you're gonna take a hit Oh, I think you're. I think you're muted again. <laughs> you guys saw you talking. It's fine. I was just talking about taking a hit. Ah. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, we, we were just centering the, the 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 drug metaphors. It's fine. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see. I, I just watching like Hunters is so active, man. Like as soon as the game starts, you're literally looking around, looking for a hit, looking to get something because you're because you're, you're capable. You immediately get to start zoning. Here we see the the, the, yep. the shiny pin standard in the video game today. I'm not too upset. Fine. Use Ocaft. At least you actually know partially what's good. At least, some velocity at least you're not running velocity yet. Yeah, I, can't. I can How tell you're so I've upset never about been that. More disappointed in my entire existence, right? <laughs> but here we are here, throwing down the pallet so quick. Now this ah! there's a there's a lot of interesting hits going for one. It's yeah. fine to go for those, even if you don't get them. Uh, because then it becomes a mind game of okay, I know that you want to go for it. They have to crouch to avoid it because of hitboxes. I do uh, think you gotta so, be careful how much you go for those though, because like having to stop for the reload is a big true, time waste. You do, but I mean, I, like, you gotta remember you only five, five hatchets. hatchets. Yeah, going for it's not a, not that big of a deal as long as you're not just you know on your last hatchet and then all of a sudden you have to go reload and end the chase period. But this is a good a good place to be. You can still get a hit even if they crouch here. It's just like I play around the front end of that truck. I I just feel like without if you don't get your down in your five hatches, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Justin said that, that uh, leather loop and infantry belt were both banned, right? Is that That's correct? Yeah, they are. That's correct. Yeah, so yeah. so the survivors know, like, right? Yeah, like they, he, they he's will exactly. literally they while they're in chase, they, it is common for survivors to count hatchets out loud so their yeah. teammates one know. Good hit. Oh. oh, see right now, okay. like right now, there's that one more it. hatchet. This is what I'm saying. This is risky. If she, if she doesn't risky. get this hatchet. Then they know that it's just a useless. Just a confirmed yeah, right there. Hit yep. Oh nope. no. See okay. right here now. I, but it's okay. No fear now. Like Utah has no fear. He's like, whatever. Like I don't need anything. And then this reload, he's gonna be fucking gone. He's gonna be Steve out of here, dude. Time, yeah. yeah, this is why this is why I think like like those hatches are like fun to go for, but I honestly like how smart is it to do it? You know what I mean? Like it's um, it's it's not terrible. Um it just like obviously if you miss then it's a little bit time wasted, but you do they, they there is value in making them like aware that you are going to go for them because like around that rock loop uh, especially 
if, if they know you're going to go for it, then they have to spend like they have to crouch to avoid getting hit, and that makes them slow down. Like that becomes part of the part of the the depth of the mind game. Is she gonna like actually like commit to try and go for it, or go ahead and walk around? And a lot of times, like just them wasting the time to crouch or, or slowing down that much mm -hmm. allows you to get that get that hit as you as you continue on around. That was a very good hit on the. That was uh, a very good hatch. Uh, this should be uh, a, this is, this yeah. Is a down. Yeah. Yep. That was a, so that was a pretty good start though. They did they did delay that for quite a while. True. Uh, I don't think she'll be able to get basement here either because she's kind of far away. And if they take even like a single hit, she'll probably wiggle. So she's yeah. gonna hook her beside. She's just find a hook right beside a gen that has a lot of progress though. So again, we talked about this earlier in the match, but this is really really good for the killer because you can kick that gen. You can basically watch it regress while also watching the guy on the hook go to struggle. So it's kind of like two important objectives that you're just kind of like staring yeah. directly at, which can be really strong. Although I don't think she did she even I don't think she even kicked it. She's just opting to leave it. And go for others, which is interesting. Wow. Ooh. Uh, I believe I in that situation, she should have been charging already. Don't uh, just to just to zone that out. I don't know about this decision making, by the way. Oh, I, I no. think I think we're witnessing a throw. I believe this we may be a, witnessing yeah, a throw. I this mean, is a really bad part of the map to be chased. Oh, it's definitely oh, well. questionable, yeah. but she got it down for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's not the worst, and now she just gets to you know do the same thing again, essentially. Uh, and it might be better, like, I can't tell the gen layout uh, to know where, where if they're, like, how good They're honestly very spread. Yeah, they're very spread out. They're very, yeah. very spread. They're, if, you, they're, if there's any kind of a three gen, it's over on that side, but even that's true. barely. But like, they're on the other side of the hill. Like, she's still, like, even if they're not close, it, it, depending on how much vision she has, she gets to have that hook, and, and, and she can still hit from a mile away or zone from a mile away because it is Huntress, so it's still not the worst thing in the world. It's something, like... She, she can't take advantage of, and, and she still gets to leave the hook and then uh, do stuff like this, which is look for look for something back back on the hook. So there's val there's still a lot of value in like getting hooks up here that you, you can protect from from a distance. Well, that was getting a, a hit. That was a good hatchet, yeah. I I wasn't sure what Squid was doing. He like couldn't decide what he was doing. He kind of just ended up eating it, but it was a good hatchet. They're coming over here. This feels like <laughs> this feels <laughs> this is gonna sound funny, but this feels like I'm just watching like a like a like a public match. There's like like I feel like there's not really a lot of like I feel like there's not a whole lot of like like uh, quote unquote like dirty play I guess or whatever. Like there's not a lot yeah. of like protecting like hooks and like forcing health states. Like right there, I think I think she's like looking out for decisive strike, which might be reasonable to do. But for the I'm most part, a lot of this though like. It really like just helps build more foundation for why I don't think uh, the wow. issue is that important because a lot of the time she like you should just be charging already and so the like the the charge speed that you get from Bushka really isn't even that significant. Uh, yeah, like I, a I lot don't... of the time you charge early to zone period. Yeah, I don't think there's been a single hit that like needed Babushka yet, right? No, I, I think I think every hit all. that came through could have been done without Babushka. I agree. I mean, that being said, I'm sure there could be situations where that happens, but well, 100%, like 100%, 100%, it allows you to get like earlier hits around around a lot of shit just because you charge so quickly. But regardless, like even we haven't even really seen that at all. Like you start charging so early in most situations that you you don't need it. You don't need to charge quicker, like fast. Period. Like, I don't I don't know. You get yeah. some more value out of being able to move around like. A lot quicker while charging because a lot of times it's what you're doing the zone period yep, yeah yep. that was a bit of a misplay there by the survivors though being grouped up like that you don't want to be yeah running on top of each other especially versus a range killer who as you can see just got both of them down pretty easily yeah yeah this is see like even here i'm super surprised that she's like why is she yeah the fact that, that she's was, picking uh, here is very strange instead of just like kind of keeping yeah. an eye on them with her range and the thing is, too, is like you see both of these survivors on hook. Like, it'd be one thing if one of them was a fresh hook, because, like, obviously you want to go after that guy and secure as many points as you can. But, like, I, she's not in the worst position being here. It's just one of these two is probably going to get saved, though. They just have to run to the other side of the hook. And I, I respect this decision here, but, bro, this is another situation where, where Shiny Pin would have been so valuable because she could have moved so, like, oh. so much more freely around that area with Shiny Pin because she was she would have been so quick, and she probably could have stopped that uh, stopped that save or at least, like, injured them before they got it. They'll probably just leave here. Yeah, I, I imagine probably. It's probably not worth risking someone that, like, yeah. is, like, a fresh hook because Squid's not going to be able to get healed up to, to make a play yeah. and the other people are fresh hooks, so it definitely yeah, isn't worth risking it. Yeah, Ocaf just way too risky to save against. Yeah, yeah. I, I Dude, I, I feel like this was a very, like... Like, how do I word this? Like, not like campy or whatever. Like, you know, how, like, it wasn't some, at all. Yeah. yeah, like you know how like a lot of casual players will like watch yeah. comp and they'll be like, oh my, all they do is camp and tunnel. Like, I feel like there was like none of that this game, but still like a pretty solid result, honestly. Like, still very yeah. very solid. Like, 
That was what five five hook states and a kill. Yeah, I five. Think? Yep, five stages and one one kill. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't too bad at all. So, um, I, I still like I I feel like they maybe could have got a better result. Like I still feel like, like I wonder how different it would have been if she would have like kicked that one gen near the hook and then chilled by it. But you know, at yeah. the end of the day, like it wasn't bad, right? Like she 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 did find Q top and got the down and like she did manage to get more out of it, but. Yeah, I mean, overall, pretty decent result, and we just got to basically see what uh, DD can do now on, on their side. True. I don't know. Well, uh, I'm... <sighs> I guess I'm just standing by Shiny Pin forever. Uh, I guess I'm just fully committing to that. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm so Dude, willing to change my mind. I'm so willing to change my mind. I'm so, 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 Dude, so willing. Dude, you're, but... you're not wrong, though. That game, there, like, there was multiple places where Shiny Pin could have been useful, and there was no places where Babushka really made a difference. Like, you're really no, not wrong about like, it, honestly. whatsoever. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't, know, I don't know. Like, I understand, like, Babushka is a little bit just... It feels more... It just feels like a little bit more safe, because it does, like... It allows you to get earlier charges around a lot of shit to to get to try and like guarantee actual hits, but you can get all those same hits without it. And then also shiny pin still makes up for it because even though you have to charge earlier in a lot of situations, like you get to come around like the the walls faster and so on and so forth. There's just like objectively more more value out of shiny pin, especially in the, at the end there. Whenever she had those two hooks, like she was just standing there watching them, she would have had so much more freedom with Shiny Pin being able to move around a lot quicker, especially because those two exit gates, she, she could see them as well. She definitely played like the safer way and like just tried to guarantee, tried to, you know, guarantee at least one of those people to, to die on hook or whatever, but there she she would have had a lot more freedom. I mean, even without Shiny Pin in that situation, she, she still could have done that. But uh, Shiny Pin definitely allows it uh, a lot more. And it's it's another thing with like, uh, how we were talking about earlier, like how they've played against each other so much and the depth that adds into, into you know how they're going to play against each other now or yeah. just in general with with how they know each other so well uh a lot of people are, aren't used to, to to the movement speed you get from shiny pin uh, against huntress like that's something that throws you off uh like like a lot of people have have that muscle memory and already like ingrained in them to how like how quickly she's going to make around things and so on and so forth it works with uh babushka as well but i feel like most people are probably a bit more comfortable playing against babushka huntress in uh in comp too so yeah you, yeah you, you know what dude i'm like <sighs> I, I want to see more things like that. Like, not even just Shiny Pin, just in general. Like, we were talking about it earlier with Tune, with, uh, Tune Carburetor, with Billy, too. Mm -hmm. I want to see more stuff like that, right? Like, I, again, I don't blame people for not doing it. Obviously, like, yeah. you want to do what you know works and what you know is strong. But I think it would be really interesting, especially, like, in my opinion, especially, like, the, like, maybe, like, the lower-seeded teams that maybe feel like they need to, like, bust something out. Like, because, like, okay, like, in my opinion, in any competitive game, if... If like if there's a really like good team going against a team that's like objectively like worse than them and you both just play the same like meta like expected way the good team's gonna win almost every time right like that's just Probably, how it goes yeah. right so like in my opinion in any competitive setting in that in that in that regard the the lower seeding team in my opinion should be trying to like mix things up do something interesting catch them off guard with some kind of like a weird yep. strategy that maybe they don't realize and i really really wish we would see that more in these types of settings again i don't blame them for not i really don't because yeah. i think there are things that are objectively strong it's like why wouldn't you run the strong things right but i think it would be neat to maybe like just try their luck with something right like like, like bust out like a tune carburetor or, you know on billy or bust out like shiny pin on on huntress and just see if you can get some like weird cheeky value out of it that they don't expect you know i'm sure there's other things for other killers that i i'm not even thinking of that maybe you can bust yeah. out that might like catch people off guard and surprise them you know um so yeah i don't know but again i don't play comp myself so like maybe maybe they yeah, have tried right. this kind of shit in strength and scrims and something and it just falls apart you know like yeah. i i'm sure they've tried it and it maybe just doesn't work like i'm sure there's probably some reason why they don't but as a spectator well, you know like i have tried shiny pin i have tried it in <laughs> in, in, in a comp setting friends oh, so true. i know what's good true true yeah that's true you, you got the science behind it that's a pretty good point yeah <laughs> yeah well we're going into the last game when uh it's another huntress so they need uh i need like basically a 1k with six stages would be one more than actually what, what, wouldn't it even be a 1k with two separate other hooks too would be good enough because the, the, the first yeah hook i mean they could they could spread it but they need at least like you know six uh, the easy math is like six hook stages or like t securing two kills basically yeah yeah, yeah. It's the easiest way to do it yeah yeah, yeah if they spread it around enough they they can get enough points to secure it and it looks like we're gonna actually have super air nova which is who i thought i know he plays a lot of huntress and he's probably he's pretty well known so 
Yep. Should be a uh, fun match here. Yep, yep, yep. I'm excited, man. I'm pumped. It's interesting. It's I don't know. Dude, that, I'm that, I'm that sad. Last game could have went like so different. Yeah, I agree. I'm sad that's the last game of the day already, man. I feel like True. it went by so fast. I'm excited for next week. It actually week. did. I feel like I just woke up. <laughs> I feel like I just well, to, woke be fair, up. to be fair, you did. You did I did just wake up, up but damn. <laughs> but damn. Oh, man. I don't know. I like it. I'm, uh, it sucks like a lot of these Hunters games are already getting out of the way in this first game. However, I, I, I would love to like there's still the option of uh, like there's still like a lot of a lot of pull three killers and, and pull two killers to pick later on. I'm 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 like I'm I'm interested. Like there's a lot of teams that haven't played Huntress. Maybe maybe we'll see see somebody pull it out at the end, but obviously if they're gonna have shit like nurse and stuff like that open then they're less likely to, but maybe we'll see some some nurses like especially after this conversation we've we've been having the entire tournament about like, you know, pulling out some of the earlier killers uh, or stronger killers early just to get other teams like out of the way, give yourself more of a chance. Uh knocking people down to loser's bracket especially like these teams that a lot of people already know are really 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 good and have a have a have a history of, of just be dominating tournaments yeah yeah I, i'm also curious to know when they're gonna bust out their like True. higher tier killers too right like when are exactly. they gonna feel like it's necessary right like i don't know i guess it depends on like what teams move on and how rough they think the competition is gonna be as far as i'm aware too uh i'll say this out loud and you know someone can correct me if i'm wrong but as far as i'm aware that whole like the whole like killer selection process like i'll, I'll even pull up the little overlay for it the whole killer selection process it might even say on this overlay i think it gets thrown out the window once you get to the grand finals though am i right i'm pretty sure once you get to the yeah. grand finals i think like yeah. Or maybe even just the finals, not even the grand finals. But I think once you get to the finals, it's just thrown out the window, and then you do like they have like a separate system for the finals. So this only goes the whole way up to like the semis, the 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 uh, semis. So I think there's they're they're not gonna have like a crazy amount of picks overall that they're gonna have to go through. I mean, if, if they end up going through the losers bracket, I think they end up having to pick like five. I think so. Six. At some point, two pull one pick should come in, right? At some point. It's more of just, like, when do you do it, right? Like, when do you... And I feel like if you're in the winner's bracket, too, you should do them, like, earlier, right? Because you, if you go through the whole winner's bracket, you don't... You don't... You might not, you know, you might not end up not even picking them if you don't do it early. Because you have yeah, less true. games if you stay in the, in, in the winner's bracket. So, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I guess we'll see. I, I'm curious to see. We still have a couple... Uh, we have, what, three more matches in the, in the, in the round of 16 that's going to be next week so we, they can still be busted out then and then after those three matches we'll have uh two of the oh shit what what matches are we doing next week actually we're doing <laughs> we're, we're I, I think we might be starting with the losers bracket or we might be going forward with the winners bracket i'm not 100 percent but i think we're starting the loser bracket no, no, no. Uh, we're, we're doing all of winners and then all of losers yeah after, oh, I was about okay. to say, after all the winners yeah. yeah okay 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 so wait how's that gonna work though because our how many games are we going to do next week? Because are people going to be able to pick their killer if they don't even know who they're going against? Until the... Right? I'm not sure What's if that? that'll work. You know what? We'll, we'll discuss this later. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. We'll talk about it later. It's fine. But yeah. So either way, I'm excited to see like where... Like to me, I don't know, man. I, I think I think I just might be a fucking turbo nerd. But to me, I, I think this kind of shit is so cool. Like how people decide like when to bust out like certain killers and like the strategy that goes behind everything and everything like to me i find that to be super fucking intriguing and i'm really curious to see like how they go about it and i'm also hoping that some people do some shit that, that really like surprises me and you know like throws me off like picking no, like picking artists a turbo <laughs> for it uh, true yeah i agree <laughs> yeah dude i, I want to see some artists but yeah, I, I think the 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 depth of that has is is rather interesting. I agree with you because mm -hmm. because it's a, like just it's an interesting system in general. Uh, uh yeah, no, I agree. Uh, uh, I'd like to see more. Uh, I guess I can't say more thought put into it. Obviously, they're putting thought into it uh, already, but that 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 definitely seems like something you could take advantage of. Uh, I think you've converted me. Yeah, I, I okay. I, I think I, I think here. I think I articulated it. I think the thing that I want to see is I want to see something crazy, like one team picking a low tier killer and then another team picking a high tier killer. That's what I want to see. I want to yeah. see one team be like, "Eh, we'll play plague," and then another killer be like, or or, 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 or then the other team be like, "No, we're playing fucking nurse." You know what I mean? Yeah, but and then it's like happens. shit. And then you still lose with like the stronger killer. Imagine how disheartening <laughs> that would be. Number one, you True. you lost with some like you lost in that matchup. 
And then on top of that, you can't even use that killer again. Yeah. Like, fuck. And that, 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 like, bro. God. See, uh, again, dude, like, like I, I guess it's just my mindset towards things, but I feel like if I knew I was going up, going up against, like, a, like, like, one of the best teams or one of the teams that you would expect to maybe win the whole thing, that's yeah. when I would want that killer, right? Like, I wouldn't True. want, like, what the fuck are you saving it for? You know? Like, that's True. what you're saving it for is that team, you know? So I agree with you. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, and, I, and that would also, like, doing that against those teams, like, Forcing people down onto losers, I feel like more people are more likely to use those uh, better killers and losers as well because that's when they're, you know, that's when yeah, they lose their out means a lot more, yeah. So yeah. maybe 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 we'll we'll naturally just see more of that period. Yeah, I, just due to how the the bracket system works. I I think in the losers bracket, I I think we're gonna see a lot more of that because you because you're right. Like when you lose in the loser bracket, you're just out of the tournament, right? Like you don't have another chance. Like at that point, again, it's like what are you saving it for? <laughs> you know what I mean? So exactly. I I think when we get to the losers bracket, we're probably gonna see a lot more. Uh, you know, high, higher tier killers. Hopefully, hopefully, anyway. And so, uh, just just to be clear, the, we got Aaron playing uh playing Huntress. Yep. Yep. It's awesome. gonna be super nova. Yep. It's another. It's another. Bro, all the p all these all the people on all these teams, bro. They 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 play against Huntress. They watch Huntresses. They 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 play Huntress like themselves. I, I swear, a majority of them probably like have a have a side Huntress that they just be playing sometimes. It's it's rather <laughs> crazy. It really, really is. Like this is the. the I'm a, I mean, both, I'm, both of these teams. I'm gonna say it. Huntress is the most fun killer to, to play and against. I'm, I'm gonna say it. I, I, I'm gonna say I it. With you. I'm really gonna say really it. Do. There's a reason people have experience. Well, sorry to, to, to disappoint you, but there's still no shiny pin. They still went with the old babushka. Oh, it's okay, okay. Brother Shay. You know, I, yeah, I'll, I'll be opening up the academy soon. And <laughs> all these players, you, you can get him for free. I promise. <laughs> oh, man. He finds a chase right away, though. Um. It looks like the crux split, the, the crux split isn't crazy, but I don't think it ever is on this map because it's not exactly like a good, like oh, I don't no. know. Ooh. Uh, he, I'm not even gonna say it because I'm sure if anybody else saw it, you know exactly what would have worked there because they would have made <laughs> yeah. it around that corner a lot faster. I was thinking the and same the, thing. And, and the charge time literally, it's like son, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. That was almost a boost got out value there though, but he didn't quite True. get it. So, but regardless, it still would have worked. It works the same way with uh, with, with shining pin. Oh, I, to make it around the wall faster. I think he released that hatchet too. I think he went from three to two. So yeah, he got dedicated. Yeah, that's unfortunate. He even loses the hatchet there. So that's actually like yeah. again, that's a big deal because they're well, what would they? As a survivor, I don't know if you would count that. I'd be like, was that two hatchets or was that three? But if they know that that consumed the hatchet, then he knows that there's only one more now. Ooh, this is important. He's gonna—he can be real patient yeah, with this. Yeah, 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 yep, yep, yep. Yep. That was that was very very good from Aaron. But even in both of those situations, she like the 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 hit on the window was definitely easier because of Babushka. But the only thing that like would have changed there, she would have been a little bit more patient and had to like partially guess which like how they were gonna dodge after the window maybe. Yep. Maybe. That was really good tracking to know he was in there. He saw the scratch marks and knew and, and figured he was probably camping the the pallet to. Uh, Stop the the base hook from coming in, which is like a mix of like tracking and game sense. Was really 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 fucking smart. Straight and 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 he gets the pallet down, so now he doesn't have to worry about it. And now he yep. can basement. So that was like that like looked like a really little play there, but that was actually fucking huge. Like that was really smart yeah. from him to know that they were setting up for that, and also smart of him to open that up to get the basement hook. Because yeah, I mean basement against Huntress. There's five gens left now. Five gens and someone in the basement. This is looking very similar to the match we had earlier, where the same thing happened, right? Um. It's looking kind of looking kind of scary now, right? I mean, they, they popped one gen, so I guess four gens left, but he doesn't need much to win this. Like, he really doesn't. He doesn't need a, a huge result here. Like, they need to... They're going to have to make some crazy shit happen. He does yeah, have... Play super he, uh, safe and just chill. Yeah, and he has deadlock, too, so... Jeez. This yep. is rough. This same, is rough. Same scenario. Deadlock is, like, literally... It's, it's literally, like... When, when you're in a situation like this where like you're like oh we, we have to just slam gens it's like instead of having to slam five gens it's like six and a half <laughs> it's yeah, fucking crazy this is, this is a big reason why it was banned in the last tournament right and yeah you can debate whether it's you know should be allowed on killers or not i say if you're going to allow it maybe probably don't allow it on the stronger killers which i think is what we're going to be seeing but thing is like the way i think of deadlock is like it, we used to see camaraderie used by survivor teams a lot, right? Because it saves so much time on the hook having that struggle bar pause mm -hmm. when someone gets within range of them. That wastes so much time for the killer and it's that much time that they have to work on gens. This is kind of like the same thing on the killer side. Look at how much time is being saved Jesus. by that gen being locked off and they can just stand here and just wait. I mean, yeah, it's, it's it just 
everything synergizes it's, so it, well. It, it's even better too because it's not like again you can only have one camaraderie, whereas this you can have it's every hook, right? There's no yeah. there, it's there's no stipulation to it. It's just every any, anytime someone's on a hook, this uh, you know the, you know this kicks in. Although I will say they are doing a good job of slamming out gens. I'm sure they're probably like ready for deadlock and they're probably trying to plan out like where, where the next gen is that they could run to and complete. So even though this guy is gonna die, they're getting a bit done and yeah, but they cannot have anyone else die is the problem they, they have to yeah. basically play perfect after this guy is done yeah yeah which is going to be really iffy it's going to be this real real iffy interesting although I don't know. wait am i seeing this correctly can two gens be blocked at the same time with deadlock that's kind of interesting i think that was what happened right there well you can see the little the little the little thing on the side that tells you what's going on here uh yeah Ooh. yeah killer's got no ed so this is going to be a little a little a little bit iffy uh, a little bit iffy here on how this plays out. He gets the he gets the hatchet hit on Ultra. Again, I mean, if they can manage to, have we seen where the totem is? If they can find Noed and then also get a gate open, I mean, oh no, dude, this is. I have to go for the save here. They don't have another choice. Yeah, I think he's gonna try to hook him close to Noed, which is really really smart. If he can, shit, there, yeah, that's, yeah, that's rough. He's close. He's close to Noed now. Like they basically need to get rid of Noed to be able to get the save, and still yeah. win. Like they need to be able to get this save and then get everybody out basically to win. And uh, yeah, he's he's hooked right beside Noed. And also, I mean, it's it's Huntress in general. Huntress with Okad yeah. in general is pretty like hard to save against. So, I mean, it's doable, but I mean, Cap plus Noed. Really? Uh, I don't know. It's it would take a. Take a miracle at this point, but it's doable. Yeah, you, I've you, seen you, crazy you, things happen. You'd have to have like one survivor take a hatchet hit, and then the other survivor come in and unhook. They and can't then, let him like, go struggle, but they cannot let him die. Yeah, if they, I believe if he goes struggle and they all get out, it's going to be a tie. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, because that, that, that would be I, the exact same result. Yeah, I don't. I mean, there's nothing they can do. She has no wood. There's yeah, no and no, it's literally right there. beside. It. That's the thing. If, the, yeah. if no one wasn't in play, I'd, I'd say like maybe there's a chance, and they're probably gonna try anyway. Like, like I don't think they know. Right? They don't think they I know th they has, she has no one. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they so don't know. Be, uh, yeah, that's I mean, it. This is like a school. Yeah, they have to try it though. Like, they don't have a choice. Like if they if they leave, it's GG anyway. So. True. Well, there you go, deity coming through. <laughs> no. I mean, I. <laughs> I feel like I want to make the argument that, like, well, nah, I'm not going to make the argument. No, uh, no I'm not going to make the argument. We can just, hey, just, you know, you don't have to agree with it now, but I'm, I'm curious what you're going to say. I, I still feel like if if in the first Hunter's game, like again, if like if 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 that if like they played around the hook like a little bit, I guess I, I guess quote unquote dirtier or whatever, yeah. you know, I feel like it it could have been a similar uh, a similar result to this, but also at the same time, I mean. Aaron also just played out of his mind. He played really, really well, and like he, the fact that he got that basement hook early, I feel like was enough to basically just, you know, that secures so much, right? Like that secures so much as far as points and pressure. So at this point, yeah, like wait, 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 what are we gonna do? I think the next hundred games have like went pretty well. Like I honestly could, could have like justified for any of these people that have played hundred so far to save hundred for later. To be honest, uh, I really, really do. Uh, uh I don't know. Yeah, and again, I mean, it just shows you the strength of Huntress on center basement map like Wrecker's Yard. I mean, yeah. everyone probably wondering, well, why would you ever run Agitation? Well, you get someone down in the basement and it's basically a confirmed death. So just uh, it, as a survivor team, you got to be, you know, aware of the fact that if you go down anywhere near the basement, she's going to take advantage of that. And it's exactly what we've been seeing so much in huntress matches i think i'm going to go to the drawing board to figure out uh, the best option for a huntress map in a tournament that's what i think i'm going to do <laughs> dude, clearly, dude, clearly dude, this dude. map is good but holy fucking shit dude dude do so literally takes is a basement hook do some I mean, research on it man make content yeah, I mean, out of it fuck it dude that, that, like, first, that first chase wasn't even particularly short or anything right like they got looped for a little bit and all it takes is getting out of position and zoning into the huntress's favor and Mm. One basement hook later, it's a 1v3, and there you go. Yeah, I, I feel like, I, again, I have to say how smart it was for him to, like, force that shack pallet down, too. Like, that was 
I, I you could almost maybe make the argument that Ace throwing the pallet maybe was a mistake too. He maybe should have just took the hit and ran away and like kept the pallet up maybe for like a teammate. I mean, I don't know. It's hard to say, but like him him knowing to basically go clear up that shack to then get the basement hook was also huge. Because if he didn't do that, then he wouldn't be able to get that hook. You know, he wouldn't want to throw the pallet and then body block the other doorway. So that was also a big deal too. Um, I don't know. Just overall, yeah. Just it, again, like the basement's just really really strong, and it's just it's hard to play around. You know, you get one basement hook, and it's just it's tough. You know, it is tough. Damn, people are really, really taking taking what you said and running with it. Where you said uh, hundreds is the most fun to play against. <laughs> yeah, dude, she, uh, she is, man. I, I'm I sorry, agree, I, I, I fucking I love going against Huntress. But anyway, oh, I, that's that's it for the first day, dude. That's all the matches Damn. we had scheduled today. That's crazy, dude. We flew through these. That's actually wild. Um, this actually. is this is a look at the bracket though, as far as like how the matches went, so you guys can see how the results went. Um, you know, and all, and all the seating and everything and what we have in store for uh, next week. So next Friday, we, we have a schedule. Again, I need to, <laughs> I need, I need to talk to Switch about it. I mean, we can do it right now on stream if you want, or we can do it off stream. But I don't know if we can do the winner's bracket. I don't know if that's possible. Uh, we uh, might... I plan on asking you for like potential killers. Like if you win, what is your killer against this team? Ah, uh, okay. That's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. If you do that, then that, that then, yeah, then, then I, I guess that works fine. Okay, so yeah, I think I think tomorrow we'll be finishing out the last three games out of the uh, round of not 16. Not tomorrow, no. Next Friday. Sorry, not tomorrow. You're right. Uh -huh. Woo, next Friday. <laughs> Woo, next Friday. <laughs> One week from today at 5 p.m. Eastern time, we'll be continuing the last three games out of the uh, best of 16, and then we'll be doing two of the matches in the semifinals. So... Or sorry, the quarterfinals. So that should be really exciting. Again, I'm really excited to like be moving into like the later rounds of the of the brackets because yeah. again, like seeing seeing people pop off and play so well, and then seeing how they play. Like, dude, like the the, the deity trauma game. Oh man, excited! I'm excited for that, dude. I'm real sure. pumped for that one. So I don't know, man. I'm excited for that. Uh, and I think that's I think that's all we really have for today, right? I believe that's all we have going on today. Oh well, I mean these games are good, but. I'm very excited to see uh, the games going forward. Hopefully we see some artists. We better see some more Huntress. If not, then I don't know what I'll do. I'll Maybe I'll actually be on time next week. That's what I'll do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, try, let's try to all wake up one time. I was surprised ah. it wasn't me, dude. I was like, you know, if anyone's going to wake up late, it'll probably be me. But, you know, look at you out oh. here proving me wrong. Oh. But anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching. I want to I wanna mention one more time that... Uh, uh, again, I'm going to be mentioning this a lot, and I'm sorry if it gets annoying, but if you guys donate during the live airing of the broadcast at any point, like at any Friday for the next five or six Fridays while this tournament's running, if you guys come in and if you want to donate money using my my uh, donation links, the money will go to the prize pool. I'm actually going to set up so that, so, so that the alerts will pop up, at least with like a, 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 a an alert, maybe like maybe not like a lot of sound or something, but I want at least an alert to pop up. A couple people did donate today, and I'll, and I'll thank you like maybe at the end. Um... But I, I, I'll, I'll fix that up. But any donations that come in during the actual tournaments will go straight to the prize pool. So if you guys are enjoying the show and you guys want to, like, support the players, um, um, you know, it, it goes a long way. Again, it's optional. You don't have to do it. But it is an option if you, if you guys would like. Uh, and big shout out to everybody that's, that's like running this behind the scenes. Again, there's a bunch of people running around doing a lot of shit behind the scenes. Like me and Ralph are literally just sitting here and fucking talking about games and not doing any fucking hard work whatsoever. Um, like even Justin is like, is like hanging out and playing with us, but even he's like running around and getting all the rules so he can answer all of our dumb fucking questions that we ask him all the goddamn time. <laughs> so like, and, and there's a lot of people behind the scenes, like, you know, like Swish and fucking... Uh, uh, Wolfie and Phobia and, and everyone, right? Phil, like there's so many people. Julia behind the scenes do, doing a lot, of, a lot, a lot of work to, to make this happen. So big shout out to those guys. This has been really, really fun. I love doing this, dude. I love hanging out and like nerding out and watching games with you guys. It's so fucking enjoyable. So thank you to everyone that's making this shit happen. It's super, super fun. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed. And we'll be back with it next week. Next Friday, the games will continue. 5 p.m. Eastern. 5 p.m. Don't miss it. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next Friday. And uh, we'll see you guys later. See ya. Take care. See ya. Goodbye. See ya.